Okay. Good evening, everyone. A warm welcome to you all. And uh, I do note that we have the member for Port Macquarie, Leslie Williams, uh, in chamber with us. So a big welcome to you, Leslie. Thank you for making the time to come along with us this evening. I'd like to advise uh, that Council is now recording its Council meetings and making them available on the internet. This recording will be made tonight and after some minor formatting, uh, the recording will be made available on Council's website in the coming days. As this is a new system, please be aware we may experience some teething problems tonight, so bear with us if this occurs. As this recording will be available as a public record, those in attendance, including councillors, staff and members of the public, should refrain from making any defamatory statements. I also note that signs indicate upon entry to the chambers your physical attendance at this meeting is your acceptance to the condition that your image or voice may be recorded and made available on the internet, as well as being retained in the archive of Council's recorded Council meetings. I would also like to remind everyone that in accordance with clause 15.22 of the Code of Meeting Practice, a person must not live stream or use an audio recorder, a video camera, mobile phone or any other device to make a recording of the proceedings of the meeting of the Council or a committee of the Council without the prior authorisation of the Council or the committee. In accordance with clause 15.23 of the Code of Meeting Practice, any person who contravenes or attempts to contravene clause 15.22 may be expelled from the meeting as provided for under section 10.2 of the Act. So now that we've read the rules and regulations, thank you again for all being here. And I'd like to also acknowledge that we're gathered on Birupai land. I do pay my respect to Birupai elders past, present and also those emerging and extend that respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander that may be in the room with us today. So I would also like to welcome and invite Pastor Mark Minton from the Coastside Church and the President of the Port Macquarie Ministers Association to come forward and present us with a beautiful local government pr prayer. Thank you so much, Mark. Oh, thank you very much. Well, uh, welcome to uh, work, everyone. I guess it's the first meeting of the year, so that's good. Uh, I did have it on my heart today to not just pray for the just the meeting, but also to pray for all of the people here that lead us, uh, for your families and, uh, and for your own health. So let's just open in prayer and include that with us. So pray with me if you'd like to. Lord, we thank you that you're always there to guide us and to help us and to give us wisdom if we ask. And God, today we're asking you for that, for each and every one of us. God, we thank you for the rain that we've received uh, just recently, Lord, to help us uh, go forward in that and to have that water. We also thank you for wisdom and we thank you for peace over our lives. God, I also pray for the, every counsellor and their families. God, I pray for their marriages and I pray for their health. God, I thank you that as they help us and lead uh, this community, God, that you'd be with them both in their, in their office and in the job that they do and also in their personal lives, that they can stand strong and make great decisions for our community. We give you all the thanks and praise for everything that you do for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Minton, and uh, bless you as well and safe travels home. Now we'll move to item number three, apologies. Mr GM, do we have any? No. no. Thank you. Item four, confirmation of minutes of the Ordinary Council minutes for the 11th of December 2019, also for the Extraordinary Council minutes of the 22nd of January 2020, and thirdly, the Confidential Committee of the Whole minutes for the 11th of December 2019. Could I have a mover for those, please? Thank you, Madam Deputy. Seconded by Councillor Hawkins. Thank you very much. All those in favour? See none against. Thank you. I declare the motion carried. Item number five, disclosures of interest. Councillors, do we have any of those this evening? Councillor Levito, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, I'd like to disclose four uh, disclosures of interest. The first relates to item 15.01, sale of Innes Gardens Memorial Park crematorium and lawn cemetery. I declare a non-pecuniary significant interest. I am the principal of the Port Macquarie law firm Levito Law and Property. The firm acts for the purchasing entity, the subject of the report before council. The firm holds specific instructions from the client as to the matter of the subject of the report before council. It's properly arguable that the client has a reasonable likelihood or expectation of appreciable financial gain or loss in the matter of the subject of the report before council. And for that reason, and as a consequence of my relationship with the client, I declare a non-pecuniary significant interest and will take no part in the consideration and voting with respect to this item and be out of sight of the meeting. 
Item 15.03 T1953, Design of Rainbow Beach Sporting Fields. I declare a non-pecuniary significant interest. I am the principal of the Port Macquarie Law Firm, Levito Law and Property. The firm acts for one of the tenderers. The subject of the report before Council. The firm holds no specific instructions from the client as to the matter. The subject of the report before Council. However, it's properly arguable that the client has a reasonable likelihood or expectation of appreciable financial gain or loss in the matter of the subject of this report before Council. And for that reason, and as a consequence of my relationship with the client, I declare a non-pecuniary significant interest and will take no part in the consideration and voting with respect to this item and be out of sight of the meeting. Item 15.05, RFQ 1922, Kenny Walk Construction Upgrade, and RFQ 1924, Kenny Walk Civil Works Upgrade. I declare a non-pecuniary significant interest on the principal of the Port Macquarie Law Firm, Levito Law and Property. The firm acts for a principal of one of the tenderers, the subject of the report before Council. The firm holds no specific instructions from the client as to the matter of the subject of the report before Council. However, it is properly arguable that the client has a reasonable likelihood or expectation of appreciable financial gain or loss in the matter of the subject of the report before Council. And for that reason, as a consequence of my relationship with the client, I declare a non-pecuniary significant interest and will take no part in the consideration and voting with respect to this item and be out of sight of the meeting. Item 15.07, uh, subject T, 1964 Coastal Walk Boardwalks, I declare a non-pecuniary significant interest. I'm the principal of the Port Macquarie Law Firm, Levito Law and Property. The firm acts for a principal of one of the tenderers, the subject of the report before Council. The firm holds no specific instructions from the client as to the matter of the subject of the report before Council. However, it's properly arguable the client has a reasonable likelihood or expectation of appreciable financial gain or loss in the matter of the subject of this report before Council. For that reason, as a consequence of my relationship with the client, I declare a non-pecuniary significant interest and will take no part in the consideration and voting with respect to this item and be out of sight of the meeting. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Levino. Councillor Hawkins. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would like to declare a um, non-pecuniary list and significant interest in two items. Um, the two items are 1303 and 1304. They are um, different items, but on the same subject matter. And as uh, that is the case, and um, the matter that I'm declaring is common to both, I've had advice from the government's office that I can combine them, so I'm going to do that. Uh, 1303, which is water <coughs> restriction update and water storage levels, and 1304 is water supply security update. Both my wife and I are directors, trustees, and beneficiaries of our own self-managed superannuation fund which owns shares in several ASX-listed public companies that are significant, significantly involved in water processing and water purification activities, both in Australia and overseas. We have no interest in any local business or activities in this area. As this is a non-pecuniary less than significant interest, I will remain in the room and will participate in both the consideration and voting of these two items. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Any other? Disclosures, thank you. Madam Deputy. Aye. Yes, regarding item 12.01, the notice of motion regarding Warhope RSL Club Seniors Housing, I'll de I'm declaring a non-pecuniary less than significant interest. Uh, I'm a director of Hastings Cooperative Limited, which uses for parking nearby land owned by council and mentioned in this report. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Any other councillors? Um, I have five disclosures of interest. Um, item number 11.01, .01, refund of application fees for the Port Macquarie Croquet Club. I have a non-pecuniary less than significant interest for the reasons that I am the patron of the Port Macquarie Croquet Club. Um, I will participate in the consideration and, and voting, remain in the room. Item number 15.02, uh, uh, T 1961, construction of Port Macquarie sewer rising main 71. I have a pecuniary interest for the reasons I hold interest in a company stable corp that provides quotations and services to one of the tenderers. Uh, I'll take no part in the consideration and voting and be out of sight of the meeting. Item number 15.04, T 1955, construction of schools to school shared pathway. I have a pecuniary interest the reasons I hold interest in a company stable corp that has provided in the past quotations for one of the tenderers. I will take no part in the consideration in voting and be out of sight of the meeting. Item number 15.05, RFQ 
RFQ 1922 Kenny Walk Construction Upgrade and RFQ 1924 Kenny Walk Civil Works Upgrade. I have a pecuniary interest I hold inter for the reasons that I hold interest in a company Stable Corp that provides services and quotations to listed tenderers. I shall take no part in the consideration in and voting and be out of sight of the meeting. And lastly, item number 15.07. T1964 Coastal Walk Boardwalks. I have a pecuniary interest for the reasons that I hold interest in a company, Stable Corp, that provides services and quotations to listed tenderers. I shall take no part in the consideration of voting and be out of sight of the meeting. Thank you very much. Um, we'll now move on to item number six, mayoral minutes. I see we have none. Item number seven, confidential correspondence for items number 10.07 and 10. 17. Do I have a mover? Thank you. And a seconder. Thank you very much. Councillor Dixon moved by Councillor Griffiths. Uh, all those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Moving on to item number eight, public forum matters not on the agenda. We've received five requests to speak in the public forum on matters which are not on the agenda from Mr Philip von Schoenberg. Uh, Mr David Curry, Mr Stuart Cooper, Ms Rachel Shepherd, and Mr Martin Parrish. Do I have a mover and also a seconder that request to speak in the public forum? So Not on the agenda will be acceded to. Moved by Councillor Dixon, thank you, and seconded by Councillor Alley. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Speakers tonight, you're reminded of your declaration to observe the Code of Conduct and the Code of Meeting Practice signed on the application to speak form and now in front of you at the lectern when you approach it. You have five minutes to speak at four minutes and 30 seconds. The buzzer will sound and you'll have 30 seconds to wrap up. I will be quite stringent with this for um, the uh, efforts of efficiency of this meeting. So I would like to invite Mr Philip von Schoenberg to the lectern. Thank you. Do we have Philip in the room with us? Okay, moving on. We'll have Mr. Dave Curry. I know he's in the room. He was one of the first here. Cooler <laughs> in here. Hello, Dave. How are you? Very well, thank you. Okay, um, Mayor Pinson, councillors, general manager, and council staff. The management of Lake Catawba Lake in Assessment System is a fiasco. Review or revive Lake Caddo formed in March last year seek for a long-term solution uh, to future-proof the lake. Our vision statement is to achieve a sustainable health and amenity of the lake system. Uh, our priorities are defined by our members and endorsed by world-leading scientists. Have councillors seen the, and approved the Council Option, option 3 flowchart? Opening estuarine system to the ocean for ecological purposes during current drought conditions. It is our belief, even though the extreme environmental factors remain, that the urgency to comply with the non no November 19 Council resolution has ceased and the lake opening triggers are now no longer met. Uh, this flowchart indicates that the lake is scheduled to be opened in accordance with these conditions in February 2021. We seek for council or councillors to address this tonight in response. Revive is continually updating the community on the status of Lake Caddoy and Innes. Um, this is because the community expects more than just a website. The whole LGA supports our, our Revive and for good reason, the jewel of the Hastings is an ecological collapse. According to protocol, the community first point of contact is the council. Revive was required to evidence council engagement before engaging with state government according to this protocol. When Revive formed, a councillor advised uh, that Lake Hadai Innes estuary system was not on the priority projects at list. Revive then made the submission to the council for 2019-2020 operational plan seeking funding to save our lake was declined for funding by the councillors. It is inconceivable that achieving the sustainable health and amenity of the Lake Caddoi in the system uh, was not a priority project uh, list for the LGA, particularly considering councillors' portfolios and the fact that we had a coast, estuarine and floodplain subcommittee which 
councillor's chair. One councillor portfolio is planning, environment and sustainability. How then is Lake Cadai in its current condition? Likewise, the Council of Portfolio for Communications, Governance and Community Relations. How is there no timeline currently around when Council might engage with the community on plans moving forward with the lake, etc.? Revive has been coming here to speak at the Council since March 2019. The community expectation our councillors are set by the New South Wales Office of Local Government. Their website states, if you are passionate about what happens in your local community, become a councillor. It is an exciting opportunity to make the difference and to represent the interests of residents. That's all residents. Having an updated and compliant REF for our natural resources is in the interest of all residents. Not one that is over 25 years out of date. This debacle is embarrassing. Having non-compliant REF is a failure which has made us our, and council a laughing stock. Conservation, preservation and protection of our natural resources needs to be a priority for this council. Our natural resources such as our lakes, beaches and rivers are one of the strongest reasons for people to visit the area and it's also one of the reasons why most of the residents are here. Revive is supported by one of the world's leading scientists in Colin Crichton. In 1983, Colin uh, Crichton predicted the current appalling condition of our lake. His study of our lake has been used as a datum by uh, other scientists in their, science, in their studies. Revive endorses the holistic approach by the stakeholders uh, to the lake system. This is absolutely true. What we don't endorse is a continual buck passing, inaction and failure while our marine life die daily. Council have non-compliant REF is the best example of that. I worked at Bankstown Council for 14 years. I was employed by, uh, to put in a quality system to allow this council to work better and smarter. This council was recognised internationally by obtaining quality, safety and environment standards. This council's key to success was due to a good control system, document control system. If you had a crystal ball back in the Revive, uh, when Revive first got here and start speaking about the uh, system, uh, the actions and each actions were implemented. Future of the lake system and its marine life might okay, have been Dave, a lot different. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop you there. A little bit left. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> no, I promised I was going to be harsh and I will. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> I, I appreciate your passion. I appreciate your commitment to Revive Lake Cadi. I thank Revive for the work they're doing and also all the other parts of the community that want all the same things. I guess my question to you is, um, you know, given what you know about the system and given the complexity towards the system, and believe me, I am frustrated as what you are. I really am. I have been trying to bust through bureaucracy now for a very, very long period of time. But um, we are where we are today. I can't move a mountain. I can't move this bureaucracy. What would your suggestion be, knowing what you know and the limited um, amount of push, I guess, Council has when all other stakeholders are involved? And I'm aware other stakeholders are involved and are not supporting Council's um, want to open the lake? Uh, basically, if you have a look at things, um, going back into August 2019, uh, Councillor DeVito and Inman uh, put forward a motion um, looking at um, important local projects, prioritising and planning and design. Uh, these were six projects, the first three for roads, the second two were pathways, and the last one was for the lake. Tourists don't come here to this area to admire our roads. They come here to look at what we've got. And we have such beautiful country here, we have lovely things, but we've got something down there at the present time which is virtually stinking. The prioritisation by Council in this motion of infrastructure, infrastructure over our natural resources speaks for itself. Another thing too, um, document control. Without good document control, you don't have a good system. Anyone coming into any organisation, like they did at Bankstown, they could go in and get a document 
and know that it is the most up-to-date document there. Having a look at a lot of the documentation which is in this place, there's a lot of gaps, you know, between when it was done, like in some of the things in 94, and now looked at this year. That's not on. It's got to be much better. You've got to have that, you know, in your back, background. Okay. So that's it. Thank you, Dave. I'll just ask the other councillors if there's any questions for you from them. No, I have a question to the general manager. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Uh, thank you to uh, the general manager. Um, there's a number of matters that were raised by um, Mr. Smith just then, and uh, Mr. Curry, sorry, just then, and uh, we've got another matter that uh, follows uh, with another speaker, and I'll be asking another question, different one then. But um, could you uh, address the matter of the uh, lack of an up-to-date REF and uh, it, it, that the significance of that, how it came about? And perhaps if you could uh, uh, outline uh, where discussions are up to mm. with that. Certainly through you, Madam Mayor. So the REF, and I take Dave's point about uh, um, up-to-date documentation, whether it be REFs or anything else, uh, the irony is that it was the most recent REF, mm. as outdated as it as it was. Sorry, Mr is. General Manager, can I interrupt and just ask you for the people who don't know what an REF is? A review of environmental factors is the key document. Thank you. We're in a jargon world here, but an REF is a review of environmental factors which uh, relates to nearly any project that we actually do. Um, so the REF, as we call it, is very old. However, it is what we had been relying on for many years, obviously, since the 90s, the mid-90s, to actually open the lake, um, good, bad or otherwise. At the most recent attempt, and I can't necessarily recall the dates unless uh, Acting Director Croft can, but when we did apply to open the lake again relatively recently, uh, last year, this is in 2019, um, the Crown did not approve that because the REF was out of date. Uh, that then started a whole process around, all right, well, what do we now need to do to get a new REF? To cut to the chase as to your, the, the second part of your question, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, where are things up to? So, uh, and I'm glad to see Leslie Williams in the room tonight. Leslie chaired a meeting here back uh, 31st of January um, with council uh, herself, um, representatives from Office of Environment and Heritage, Crown Lands. We had representatives uh, call in from Minister Shelley Hancock's office, that's the Minister for Local Government, and uh, Minister Melinda Pavey's office, as in Minister for Water, um, and council staff. And the whole purpose of that session two and a bit weeks ago was to push forward and try to find out what the barriers are to actually getting a new REF uh, for the lake and the opening of the lake. Noting that the, the historic openings of the lake have been at the high water mark as opposed to the low, which is something we're dealing with at the moment, ignoring for a moment the rain we've had in the last couple of weeks. Um, so at that meeting, in fact, I've only just this afternoon drafted a, a note that I will send to Leslie and councillors and the mayor, etc., tomorrow most probably, in relation just to an update on where we are from Friday two and a bit weeks ago. Um, the action out of that meeting was that council would seek advice from some of the people that were in the room, which is other state agencies, in relation to what needs to be done, what is the scope required for the review of environmental factors for the REF. We have had a year of 2019, being absolutely frank, a year of meetings with stakeholders around the room. We get lots of good nods, but not much uh, solid information. So what we did seek to do uh, was to get some clarity out of that meeting from January 31. Uh, so in this last two weeks, council officers have drafted a whole heap of information that we've sent to uh, the Department of uh, or the fisheries and biodiversity and conservation that sit within the government uh, to seek their feedback on what would they want to see in the REF so that we could get a scope drafted and someone appointed to draft the REF. Only in these last couple of days have we had those responses and one is reasonably lengthy and complex so we're actually just as we speak working through all of that. 
hence the update that we'll send everyone the next day or so just on where we're up to. Um, I will just say that I am not an RAF guru by any stretch, but I've had many conversations today and yesterday with Director Croft and his team in relation to the requirements that have come to us at this point from the biodiversity conservation team and the fisheries team. And, uh, and it's extensive, it's absolutely extensive. And I, I do accept that there's been a, um, a lot of discussion around why can't we just do an REF quickly and get it done and over with. In a perfect world, that's the way I operate. But the reality is it's a Crown waterway, it's not a council waterway, and we have to ensure that we follow the protocols and the requirements of the other stakeholders in this. So it is complex. We have done a lot of work in these last few weeks since that meeting that was chaired by Leslie Williams. Um, and we are moving forward with the advice from those parties. The steps next are for us to draft a scope, as I've just mentioned, out of those documents that we've got uh, and work a way forward through that. But I will be very frank and state that it is going to be very complex because the requirements that have just landed on our desks from the state departments are immense to be included in this REF. So we need to work through that and with Leslie and, uh, and understand how we can actually push through some of those requirements. Okay, thank you. Um, no, Councillor Ali, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, again, a question to the general manager. Um, I, I gather that the, uh, the REF uh, is, a, is a document that I guess needs to be approved administratively by the, by the staff here. What, what uh, proposition um, does the REF try to establish? And, you know, i.e. that, you know, the, I mean, it, it tries to measure the impact of... What, Everything, yeah. OK, so, so if, you could, if you could comment on that and also comment on... Um, I guess the other approvals process that would be required in, in terms of uh, having a licence granted to, to open the, the waterway? Thank you. That's such an easy question. So, um, through you, Madam Mayor, the... And I'm just going to read a snapshot of what we need to incorporate from the proposition point of view, I guess, as to what's required in, a, in an REF. Just bear with me. Aboriginal cultural heritage we must address. Biodiversity, meaning shorebirds, ecological communities, koala habitat. National parks estate. Um, impacts on specific values, but uh, including but not limited to breeding birds, coastal salt marsh, swamp oak, etc., etc. Prediction of habit and biodiversity loss or change in the nature reserve if we do open the lake under this circumstance. Cumulative impacts of sand accretion possible impacts of acid sulphate soil and a range of coastal processes. So there's an enormous range of things that we need to address. And I guess uh, one of the issues is um, we're being asked through this process to address unambiguously, is the word used, direct and indirect impacts for the entire estuarine system. Noting that it's not a council waterway, uh, this is going to be incredibly complex. The approval process, let's assume we get the scope good, all good, we go to market, we get someone to draft an REF for us and we're, we're reasonably comfortable with the document, it then goes to Crown Lands, who are effectively the approval to give us a licence to do X, Y and Z. They have an internal referral process themselves through other state government departments. So we would certainly lodge it with the Crown, is my understanding, and then they'll then do a bit like we do with a development assessment that comes in here, um, and off they go, development application, and off they go. Uh, and then, in theory, we get an approval at some point. Crown Lands, per se, as the office aren't an issue at all. They're very quick at turnaround, but it's the referrals they have to do to other parties within the government. <coughs> I don't know if that's answered your proposition question. To be honest. Well, um, I, I have a question for you, um, Mr General Manager. Because I was uh, in attendance with you at the meeting with um, the state member, Leslie Williams, and uh, the other stakeholders, it was indicated that the review of the environmental factors was to review the environmental factors on why we wanted to open the lake. And they were for the health of the marine life, um, you know, and 
obviously the amenity for mm. the community. Now, Crown, Crown has no desire to open the lake themselves. They said that they would do nothing if Council did nothing. Um, but given that this is in our local government area and given the importance of this, this, water, uh, this body of water to um, not only our community for its enjoyment, but for marine life, for environment, for commercial trade, mm. um, for tourism, um, it was indicated that there would be a one-week turnaround mm. once they'd received the, mm. the review of environmental factors. Correct. Can you explain to those here with us this evening where the goalposts got shifted from that meeting? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, and thank you. I, I don't know that they did. This is the reality of the process that is imposed upon us by the state. The Crown, let's assume an REF, regardless of whether it's for the lake or anything else, is comprehensive and it's absolutely unambiguous and everyone's really happy with it. When that lands at the Crown, they will very rightly turn that round very quickly. That's where the one that's, week would come from. That's right. No debate about that at all. And they've historically been reasonably quick with those sorts of things. Um, the reality is when you are requiring to do an opening for ecological purposes, which is exactly what Council resolved to do in November last year, um, the requirements from the state to do an REF on something that we haven't necessarily or done before at low water levels, etc., no one is sure of what the impacts, negative or otherwise, will be on the lagoon, if I can call it that, and the lake and estuary system. Therefore, we need to address all these other issues. We could, in theory, I wouldn't approve this as the general manager, but in theory, we could draft a quick and nasty REF tomorrow. Well, we couldn't, but it'd take a week or two. And submit it to the Crown and go, look, we think that's fabulous. It'll be knocked back by the referral parties, which will be fisheries, biodiversity and conservation within the government, and probably quite rightly so in some respects. OK, thank you. Councillor Hawkins. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, um, a question of the general manager. Sorry, we're giving you, we're giving you a hard time here. It's only six o'clock. What would the consequences be if council just went and opened the lake now, knowing what we know? What would the consequences likely be to council? Uh, naughty, naughty. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, there is all sorts of legislation that controls what we can and can't do, noting it is not in any regard under the control of council. So we, we would need a licence norm in the normal circumstance uh, from the Crown to do so for getting a high water mark and flooding, etc., where we do have emergency powers under the Local Government Act to go in and, and do that. Um, there are all sorts of environmental laws that we would be breaching, and there are personal liability issues attached to that for council officers involved as well. So that is why we wouldn't just be doing that. Thank you. Councillor Griffiths. No, just a quick question to the general manager. Can you explain the difference between the high tide and low tide and whether the low tide would be classified as emergency? Uh, high level? High level or low? low. Sorry, high yeah, level. well, to be frank, the low... Uh, I'm, I'm not an environmentalist and ecologist. I'll, I'll say that out fr up front. But through you, Madam Mayor, the reality is uh, there's no public infrastructure for getting environmental issues absolutely at the minute, but there's no public infrastructure or private property at risk in a low level uh, situation at the lake, as opposed to a high level when you get to 1.65, I think the figure is. Okay, so last quiz, um, quick question to go with that. Is that no, I didn't allow... Sorry, Councillor oh, Griffiths, I didn't allow... Madam Deputy, so I won't allow oh. you either. Um, are there any other questions? For staff? Yes. Um, but can I first off note... First off, note that I've contacted Mr. Von Schoenberg, oh, and his reply was, "I didn't receive a confirmation, so I assumed I wasn't speaking, so he won't be here this evening. So, no doubt he will come next, next time. time. We'll put you on yeah. mark. Yeah. Please give my apologies, of course. Um, uh, there are so many parts to this." Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about the high level and the low level. High level is at 1.6 metres, that's what it's set at. The opening strategy is set at that. 
Uh, it said at that point to be able, council was able to open that because it is at that level that we've realised that flooding of nearby residences, yeah. uh, properties, properties yeah. uh, uh, is, is, uh, is possible. Yeah. The low level opening uh, has never, we understand, been used. No. Uh, and so the REF that was done back in the mid-90s has just been sitting there. So we've been opening the lake at high, mm -hmm. at the high level f fairly regularly, Correct. never had cause to go back and open at the lower level. Um, and so I'm assuming we never got a, um, uh, advice from state agencies that we needed to renew the REF. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, through, through you, Madam Mayor, that's my understanding at this point, yeah. Okay, so the critical question is, you've mentioned um, personal liability. Mm -hmm. So if council uh, acts in good faith to produce an REF on direct and indirect effects through the whole of the system, Lake Innes, Lake Katoi, and we do our best regarding that, but nevertheless, there are still, if, the, if it's opened under that, there are still adverse impacts. Mm -hmm. Can you just go into a little bit about what the consequences might be, even if we acted in the good faith, mm -hmm. what the consequences might be for individuals <coughs> and their liability within the organisation? Yes, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, the good faith means zip, uh, to be honest, when it comes to the legislation that we're talking about, um, which is why when it comes to REFs in our organisation and any org organisation that does them, I would think, it's a very uh, specific field of expertise and we are very conscious when we are asking anybody internally at whatever level of the organisation that is to sign an REF what they're actually signing up to. Because it doesn't matter that we've done it through a council resolution that says, hey, let's do an RAF and open the lake, no problem. That does not do anything to protect the individual who ultimately signs an RAF. That's how the legislation works. Um, the liability is for an organisation, a million dollar fine. Um, for individuals, it's $250,000 fine and jail, and or jail. So we're not talking just a few slaps on the wrist here from whomever. So that's why it's a very serious issue about uh, firstly, in this instance, as a, as a Crown waterway, should Council really be uh, doing the REF on behalf of the Crown? And we note that the Crown aren't necessarily going to, so that's the situation we're in. But it, nothing, unfortunately, escapes from the, the liability issues that do sit there from an organisational point of view and an individual point of view. And I guess the issue is, with a low-level opening, as we're talking through this REF, um, no one knows truly what the direct and indirect uh, implications of that are. Um, we can do all the research and all the work and all the different studies that we may need to do, but at the end of the day, you know, we go and open it and three weeks later X, Y and Z has happened. That is un unknown, unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Vida. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Question for the General Manager. The REF we're preparing, does it cover both types of openings? And secondly, um, do we know whether they're going to want an REF every time we do something? Or have they given you an indication what the life of the REF will be? Yeah, through you, uh, Madam Mayor, um, the REF we're doing at the moment would counter most instances of needing to open the lake, I would suggest. I can't imagine there's any others that we haven't run across already. Um, you would normally, and I'll, I don't know if direct, Acting Director Croft's got a view on this, but normally an REF you'd want to review every five, every five years or so, I would have thought, in the grand scheme of events. Um, but there's no indication necessarily at this point for us as to how long that will uh, last. We wouldn't need to do one each time we need to open. If this REF covered all the issues that they were satisfied with, or they were satisfied with all the issues we've listed, um, and that is approved, then we would simply require a Crown licence and so on and so forth into the future to do an opening. That's the theory at this point. Okay, yeah. thank you. Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Right to you again, Mr General Manager. Could you give us an indication uh, of, from everything that's been said of a, of a cost to complete this activity? <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. Um, 
through you, Madam Mayor, a lot. Okay, um, we don't have that field yet, and we were only discussing it a couple of hours ago. Um, looking at the information that's just landed with us and the extraordinary detail we would need to go to, we are talking hundreds of thousands of dollars in studies here. And I accept Dave, uh, Mr Curry raised the issue of option three in the um, document we produced only a little while back, maybe earlier this year, in relation to the opening being in 2021, I think it was. Um, the reality is, if you go through this process, that could well be reality. Um, so uh, we don't know yet. We're trying to work out what the scope is so that we get that reasonably right. Um, at the value we think it's going to be, we would have to go to a formal tender under our legislation to actually appoint someone uh, because of the value of the work to produce the REF. Okay. Thank you. There's no further questions. I'll invite uh, Stuart Cooper up. You may have changed your um, discussion with us after all of that. Not well, really, no. <laughs> added a few things to it. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks, Peter. Good evening, Mayor Pinson, councillors, general manager and council officers. In July 2018, after a major rain event, council opened Lake Cadai. Port News ran an article on the 21st of January concerning this event. Port News stated that Council had opened the lake without Crown Land's approval using the 2007 Division 25 SEP legislation, Clause 129, part of which relates to flooding. Can Council advise why this clause, which also states, development for the purposes of waterway or foreshore management activities may be carried out by or on behalf of a public authority without consent on any land where waterway or foreshore management activities is defined as management or dredging to rehabilitate aquatic habitat or to maintain or restore environmental flows or tidal flows for ecological purposes. Yet this is not mentioned or used by Council when the other opening strategy triggers, aside from flooding, have been breached. Council also stated that they advised Crown Lands of the 2018 lake opening prior to it being implemented via the Coast and Estuary Floodplain Subcommittee. Yet this committee didn't meet until a month after the lake opening and the opening is not mentioned in the minutes of the meeting. For the past 12 months, Council have been under pressure to open Lake Cadai as it dried up and marine life died. Opening strategy triggers for less than 0.2 metres AHD, water quality, salinity greater than 40 parts per thousand have been breached over this period with no action from Council. Council seems to use the SEP legislation when it wants to. In November 2019, a mayoral motion was successful in approving to open the lake, but within 24 hours, this was on hold as Crown Lands rejected a licence application as the supporting documentation, the review of environmental factors or REF had not been updated since 1995, when it was first completed to support the initial opening strategy for the lake. Given the SEP legislation and the environmental disaster with the lake, why is this still required? In recent weeks, we have had another major rain event with the lake now full of fresh water. We can only hope that there was so much rain that it diluted any sulfuric acid that resulted from the fresh water mixing with the acid sulphate soils. Yet despite a complaint raised with Council, the last water quality test was the 7th of January for Lake Cadai at 47.9 parts per thousand and the 8th of January for Lake Innes at 143 parts per thousand salinity, and no comment on the acid sulphate soil impact. Dr Deb Geronimi has done an independent test on the weekend showing salinity at zero, which confirms the lake's freshwater status and also detected ammonia, which indicates marine life are dying. Not really surprising given they are saltwater marine life, which should have salinity levels closer to 35 parts per thousand, not zero. The lake is now brown from silt and fire residue runoff. It smells and is a breeding ground for mosquitoes, which also had articles in Port News recently after complaints by residents and concern about health issues from mosquito bites. Council response is silence, or we need to complete the REF currently estimated for sometime in 2022, based on council documentation, and then we apply for a licence. In 2018, we also had a as part of the lake opening, asbestos was identified. 
in building waste that had been dumped decades ago. It was below Bundella Avenue at the southern headland of the lagoon. Council advised in August 2018 that they were working with Crown Lands to have this remediated. Yet by January 2019, there has been no action and the three signs posted in the area, one had broken in pieces on the ground and the other two were small and propped up. In mid-January, Lake Caddo residents began talking about the asbestos for which there had been no action from Council. Within weeks of this talk, there was a notice in Port News advising the community that the asbestos at Bundela Avenue had now been included with the Larue Road revetment wall and stormwater project. The Larue Road project had been talked about for over 10 years. So after 18 months, its first step, Council are undertaking Aboriginal cultural heritage assessment to use in a possible Aboriginal heritage impact permit application for the project. Is this simply a delaying tactic? Lake Cadai has seen tourism numbers drop to almost nothing with resulting impact on businesses in the area. Even TripAdvisor for Lake Cadai reports how bad the lake is. Given the lack of action or concern by Council, is Lake Cadai the forgotten town or is this simply the norm for all parts of the LGA outside Port Macquarie? I just have one final question. The ref that was mentioned earlier... Um, no, and the I'm going to stop you there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. We're going to move forward because I've stopped Dave in his uh, discussion as well. Thank you very much for uh, that presentation. Yep. I really appreciate it, Stuart. Uh, do we have any questions specifically for Stuart? Thank you, Madam Deputy. My comment was how much of what the general manager said actually relates to the Coastal Management Act and what's required under that, which came out in uh, 2016, I think was approved in 2018. Thank you. We'll ask you. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'll ask you. Mr. General Manager. Uh, you... Any further questions for Stuart? No? Thank you. Thank you very much. You. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I can, I'll have to take that on notice. The information, the information I have on hand, thank you, I'm just a bit slower than you. The information I have on hand doesn't define that I can see at this point which part of which act it relates to. But assuming it's, the, it's exactly as Stuart has said, the Coastal Management Act of 16, because the information we've got is coming from the Biodiversity and Conservation Division, but I would need to clarify that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. A, a question to you first. Yes. I wonder if we could ask... Uh, I wonder if we... I've got a question for the General Manager shortly, but I'm wondering if we could ask um, uh, Mr Cooper if he could provide us a copy yeah, of please. what what, uh, what you spoke to so that we've got those details. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy, of course. Thank you. You're prepared to do that, Stuart. Provide a copy and copies will be sent to councillors. Thank you. Questions of staff? Yes, I can. Yes, I um, Mr General Manager, you'll take on board those questions mm. and uh, uh, have a couple of questions. My first one is, under our code of meeting practice, uh, you have the authority, not the councillors, to decide that a matter is significant mm. enough for you to bring forward a report to the next council meeting Correct. on that matter. Yep, indeed. Would you be willing to do the, uh, consider that uh, so that we can get all of this information out to the public mm. so we can all share it? So. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I've already been giving that consideration and whether uh, it's the March meeting or the April meeting, we will bring an update report back. Um, uh, shortly, as, as soon as we can, once we've got some more body to the information that we're actually dealing with right at the moment. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Director Croft, um, acting for, uh, acting Director Croft for uh, Director Watkins, if I could just ask you a question. Um, I hadn't given this any thought until now, but based on the fact that we have um, a mosquito infestation down there, and the fact that the lake is closed off to the ocean. We've had um, extensive rainfall in that area. Uh, the salinity is now zero, so we're having some fish, um, I guess, uh, 
Do, yeah, oh, I was looking for another word, but thank you. Sounds like, um, yeah, rot, I guess, in the waterway and ammonia is now coming out and mosquitoes are breeding. Um, do we not have a public health, um, uh, you know, situation happening down there where we're concerned about this, uh, especially with uh, Ross River fever, which, you know, is associated with mosquito bite? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. We, uh, our environmental health office uh, staff, do uh, mosquito testing with New South Wales Health at a number of locations across the LGA. I couldn't confirm, I can take it on notice if Lake Cat Eye is included in that, um, but that does include testing of the mosquitoes and um, analysis as to whether they're carrying any uh, disease. Um, so that, that routinely happens from December to April in any case in, in the LGA each year. Um, so we haven't received advice from health uh, via, any, uh, via that testing to date that that um, prevalence of uh, mosquito-borne disease uh, is, is evident. Okay, but could you take that on notice and get back to councillors as to when the last test date was in sure relation thing. to that? And um, if, if that is that we have excessive larvae and mosquitoes in that area, and given that there would be concerns to public health under the Local Government Act, are we able to open? Uh, I don't believe so, Madam Mayor. Okay. Thank you. It was worth a try. All right. Any further questions? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. It's really virtually a supplementary to your question uh, of Director Croft, so mm -hmm. uh, through the General Manager, Director Croft. Um, what does in conjunction with Department of Health mean? What does in conjunction mean? How does that actually work in reality? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I, I just understand it's a collaboration between the environmental health staff of Council and New South Wales Health sharing information. They have a program, a monitoring program, um, that has uh, yeah, set out when and where they do the testing and they share the information when they get the test results. They get sent down to the University of Sydney for, for testing and that information comes back to our our team as well, so it's just a collaboration. Supplementary, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, can either party initiate it? So it's totally appropriate that for council to initiate it, because I think we should be in this instance. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I understand that happens annually. So each year, December to April, this monitoring program um, occurs. Um, I think from this meeting, it's. Uh, safe to say we can go away and make sure that Lake Caddo is on that monitoring program and we can give some advice back to the councillors as if that's the case and if not perhaps include it in the program if for, for some reason it's not. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Madam Deputy. A uh, question to the general manager. Uh, this situation is just so frustrating for us and for the community, uh, the fact that we've got a whole estuarine system that is owned by and to a great extent managed by the state government and yet we've got the one element which is the opening of the lagoon that comes under our council's control and yet we can't act unless we get concurrence from the state government. Has consideration been given to handing responsibility for the opening of the lagoon back to the New South Wales Government? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I think about that every day, um, <laughs> to, be, <laughs> to be absolutely honest. Um, the, the interesting, through you, Madam Mayor, the interesting technicality is that th – sorry, there's no technicality about the fact it's a Crown waterway. There's no debate about that. Um, the technicality is that council's never been gazetted to be con in control of that part of the of the lake system, the lagoon, at all, as we understand. But as the mayor alluded to earlier, um, crown lands don't open icols or lakes. Um, therefore, it falls to, by default, in many respects, the local council to do those sorts of things. Uh, it's certainly an issue that uh, I think needs exploring, particularly. If we, when we come back with the more detailed information that we're just starting to get fed through now on what would be required in the REF, um, to be having that conversation with the state around, well, this is not something that council is necessarily capable of actually doing under our legislation, under our requirements, what can we do now? But that's for conversations down the track. If we consider that, yeah. that would be appreciated. 
Okay, if there's no further discussions, we'll move forward to Ms Rachel Shepherd, who is going to address Council. Good evening, Rachel. Excuse the laptop. Yes. Uh, I acknowledge the land that we meet on has been stewarded by the Burrapai people for millennia and acknowledge that the elders past, present and emerging hold much of the wisdom we need to keep walking together. Uh, members of our community have come to these meetings to bring climate change to your decision making uh, for the last six months. We've been polite, researched and solution focused in this vein after your last regular meeting was extended by over two hours uh, with our climate input. We made the decision that tonight we would condense our input considerably into this address and into an address on investments also. The climate emergency has made itself well known this summer with the fires, storms and water security threat looming and making our case better and more terribly than we ever could. But until Council has a systematic way to ensure that you consider climate change in decision making for us, uh, we have to come and say something as limited and imperfect as it may be. So, in regards to the anniversary celebrations with our sister city, um, I make the point that our community is in recovery from a nightmare bushfire season and facing critical water security concerns, both of which are driven by climate change. A hundred officials will certainly not take offence when they are informed of the disasters our community has faced and understand the inappropriateness of our leaders using ratepayers' money to attend celebrations at this difficult time. However, our relationship with Honda is valuable and cultural exchange is valuable. Our cl global community is an asset in the fight against climate change and so we can't waste the relationship we have uh, forged with Honda. Please propose to Honda officials that we reignite our relationship in a meaningful way by collaborating on the joint task of innovating climate mitigation and adaptation solutions so that the cultural exchange might be of explicit benefit to both of our community's safety and economies. In regards to the proposed discussion of climate change solutions um, by, by yourself, Mayor, this notice of a motion was quite brief and without any comments of background on the motion, it's difficult for residents such as myself to understand or have input into the decision that you're hoping for councillors to make. This undermines our opportunity to engage in the democratic process in the peaceful and considered way we've been undertaking. And so, as you know, I've, I've asked to please consider delaying the motion on climate change until the March meeting and please provide further information to us so that we have the opportunity to make our views known um, to you as our elected representatives. In regards to the water restrictions update and water storage levels, severe water restrictions stand to be a long-term feature of our community life, and this is because water security problems are a predicted outcome of climate change and will continue into the future and likely become worse. This is true even if reclaimed water is able to be used for drinking purposes, as alluded to by Mayor Peter Pinson in the extraordinary water meeting last month. These ongoing water restrictions stand to be disastrous for local businesses who have been accustomed to relatively unrestricted water use. Pool businesses, breweries, wineries, lawn care businesses, car washes, all of them stand to be significantly impacted. Council already accepts that climate change is a reality in various parts of the business operations. So I ask the council specifically reach out to businesses not to cope with just the current water restrictions, but to help them be aware of the climate predictions that council is already aware of so that businesses can make informed decisions about how to secure their own long-term viability. An example could be pool, uh, pool business, is, if they understood the long-term climate forecast, might sell water tanks to facilitate pool top-up or pool covers to reduce evaporative losses. In regards to the water supply security update, I thank the director for the range of innovative solutions proposed and I'm um, sorry I don't have time to properly acknowledge them. Water security is an issue over much of Australia because we're in a climate emergency. I note that the integrated water strategy already accepts the reality of climate change. However, the existing website uses best case scenario modelling and outdated figures to plan for our future water security. 
Using up-to-date figures is very difficult because several tipping points have been passed, which means that the rate of change is actually quite unpredictable and rapid. However, I still feel it's important to ask that councillors seek assurance from Di uh, Director Bil Bilsma that the water security planning um, will not rely on best case scenario modelling and will use the most up-to-date figures and that perhaps there's an explicit mechanism to allow the adoption of new climate change figures as they become um, available and continue changing. I also ask councillors request the GM to investigate changing the price of water to better reflect its value as an evidence-based way to drive changes in water consumption. I hope these issues that I've addressed reinforce the point that climate change should be considered across all your decision making. And to help you assess community energy and opinions around climate change, I ask you that please note and attend the two major community climate events happening in the next week. Thank you, well done. Right on the money. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rachel. As, as always, we appreciate um, your input and uh, the intelligence with which you present it. Um, I will ask you a question and it will be, uh, did you know, and I'll know you don't know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Did you know this evening um, I'll actually be moving an amendment in relation to water restrictions and just on uh, the impact that it'll have with our, our business and um, our economic development in that regard. I'd also like to let you know that um, uh, if it's supported, then we'll be able to relax back to level three. I'd also uh, like to inform you, because I don't think you'd be aware, that, um, that there has been a reduction uh, in water usage by 16% um, in comparison to this time last year um, by our community actually embracing um, the challenge uh, that we had before us. So, uh, you know, it, everyone is out there very aware, doing their part, just as you are as well, just as uh, as the Mayor I'm trying to do and the elected body of councillors here trying to do as well. So, again, thank you, and I'll ask the councillors if they have any sorry, questions. May I you. respond to your question? No, sorry, no. It, it's, it's not that type of um, interaction, but I'm happy to have that discussion with you at a later stage. I'm, I meant to respond to the question that you asked me. Oh, well, I was saying, did you know? Is it a yes or a no? No, and I, and I would have appreciated the opportunity to, um, to, to respond to the amendment that you just made me aware of. Oh, I apologise. I'm happy for you to do that. OK. Um, so am I to understand that the proposal is to uh, relax the water restrictions sooner? Is that what you were saying? The For the purposes of supporting businesses? Well, the amendment is to actually relax the water restrictions mm -hmm. come the uh, 1st of March. OK. So, so I, I would very much like to respond to that uh, because while I have... Um, our community and the small businesses are the cornerstone, or one of the cornerstones of our community, uh, I... So... Uh, I believe if you look to um, a later, um, the information provided in the water security update, what you see is um, three different risks described uh, to our community by the end of 2020 that end each of those different risks, each of those different sentences outlined, uh, end with something to the extent of our water supply being exhausted or unusable. And so for me, the prospect of water restrictions being relaxed rather than looking to um, proactive ways to engage our community to, um, to do things differently uh, potentially pose, uh, poses catastrophic um, problems for our community's drinking water supply. So I'd be very concerned about that amendment. Thank, thank you for sharing and I'm happy for you to make an appointment and you can come to uh, the office of the mayor and we can discuss that further. I'd love to take that. So, up. thank you. I look forward to that opportunity as well. Any further questions for Rachel from councillors? Madam Deputy. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, Ms Shepherd, uh, thank you as always for your contributions. Uh, there are a number of matters that can be taken forward. Uh, the question that um, I... Uh, I have two questions, actually, if that's possible. Um, uh, firstly, uh, I understand that you, uh, or do you understand, of course, that there, there could be amendments to um, 
motions later on and so therefore of course look to that response and also uh, you, you may be talking with uh, Madam Mayor or others of us and feel free, uh, you understand that you can feel free to bring up these matters and pursue them at a later time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's the first question. Uh, second one is um, uh, you mentioned two climate events at the end and so I wonder if you can just give us details of that please. Uh, yes, so I have flies, just one of each, so um, maybe, uh, and I can send I can send those through an email. That's fine. Uh, so one of them um, is an information session that's been organised by community members, uh, titled "Smoke, Heat, and Health in a Changing Climate." Uh, it's been organised in collaboration between Climate Change Australia and Doctors for the Environment uh, Australia. And the panel, um, the panel members and the speakers include Professor Chris Turney uh, of uh, U uh, University of New South Wales, who's a Professor of Climate Change and Earth Science. Uh, it also includes Dr Bryant Parsonage, who is a local psychiatrist, and Dr Sarah Mollard, who you'll be familiar with, is a local GP. Uh, and I think it's a really great opportunity for you to get a sense of uh, your community's interest, uh, but also you can see again how we are trying to engage our community genuinely uh, in, in this issue and have discussions and ask questions and we're not trying to be alarmist or anything like that. We're really trying to engage people and we hope that you can be there as a part of that also. Um, and the other one, probably less to your interests, um, but perhaps I would love if you were there, is actually um, Australia has a National Day of Climate Action occurring this Saturday. And uh, locally, there's a rally occurring on Town Green uh, at 12 noon, approximately one hour before the Beer and Cider Festival commences. Uh, and I'd uh, encourage you to come along and see some of the energy uh, rising from diverse elements of our community. Um, with their interest in climate action. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to give it to governance, to Michael, and that can be scanned in and <coughs> sent around to all the councillors. Thanks. If there's no further questions, yes, Councillor Hawkins. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, through you. Um, Rachel, thank you very much for your address, which is uh, <coughs> always interesting and uh, valuable. It's much appreciated. You, Early on in your uh, address, you referred to the climate change solutions, uh, notes of motion, and I didn't quite get the exact words because you did send to councillors a copy of what you were going to speak to, and obviously you had to crunch it up to make in the deadline, and mm -hmm. so there have been some changes. But you used the word undermines. I mean, mm -hmm. Can you just repeat that? Because I want to make sure that I understood it okay. and, your, and explain what you're meaning. Thanks. Uh, so the exact words I use, I think, uh, was uh, that, uh, so not having the comments and background in regards to the motion that was being put forward undermines our opportunity as residents uh, to engage in the democratic process in the peaceful and considered way that we've been undertaking. Okay, thank, thank you. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions for Rachel? No, thank you. Thanks so much, Rachel, if you'd thank like you. to take your seat again. <laughs> Any questions of staff? Madam Deputy. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, through the general manager, there are a number of matters raised there that we can, of course, take on board uh, in, uh, in each in its own way. Uh, but the one I wanted to uh, touch on was, uh, two, well, two actually, uh, both regarding to water security. One being uh, the notion that we, that council be vigilant in terms of keeping up to date with uh, the data and the best predictions. Mm. Uh, and so I would like to get a comment from the from yourself or the relevant director about uh, how we, how what the process we have, um, and then I have another question about the water pricing. Uh, thanks, Director Billsmore, to answer that. Through you, Mr General Manager, um, we use uh, modelling provided to us uh, through the CSIRO, and um, that's endorsed by the Department of Planning, um, Industry and Environment. And, and unfortunately, we, we need to ensure that we're using modelling that um, gains us concurrence from the department um, in the modelling that we're using. Thank you. Uh, 
I'll certainly be, I'll certainly have a further chat with you about that. And uh, secondly was the suggestion that council review its pricing for uh, drinking water uh, and uh, Mr. General Manager, uh, is there consideration for that? How often do we review our pricing and um, when will it happen? Next. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, there's nothing on the table at the moment in relation to reviewing that. Um, the time to do that is actually now, though. Um, we're right in the middle, as you know, of the budget development and operational plan development for 2020 2021. Uh, and in theory, that'll come to the March meeting for going on exhibition if Council uh, so chooses. Um, so now would be the time to be having a conversation about uh, what water charges may look like. Yeah. Or it waits till this time next year, effectively. Now we can Yes. Thank you. Yes? Councillor Griffiths. Yep, quick question to the director. Um, could you tell us when we last actually checked our water rates and prices and charges? Through you, Mr General Manager, um, we are also informed around our water pricing through the integrated water cycle management um, process as well. So, um, as you know, we're working with Public Works Authority um, on that process at the moment and we'll become informed through the, um, the relevant um, next sort of 12 to 18 months around any adjustments that should be uh, we should be considering based on, around our waters, bulk water scheme. Okay. okay, thank you. Any further questions of staff? No? All right, I'll invite then Martin Parrish to come up, who's been waiting patiently. Thank you. Hi, Martin. Welcome. Thank you for letting me take the floor. Um, I won't be as professional as the other speakers. Um, and just quickly, is the provision to show a one and a half minute video? Probably not? Okay. I don't want to waste time because it's ticking. Before I address the matter, I just want to say on behalf of Herons Creek community, thank you so much for the new bus shelter and also thank you for whoever has been slashing the grass um, on the side streets. The community is really happy. Now, as with, uh, now moving to a personal level, I didn't even know that I had Blake Cat-Eye group here. I just come along because of um, what we saw the other... Just, two days ago in Lake Cato as you walk around the edge about the mosquitoes. Um, so very quickly, I want to say that um, as we've had heavy rainfalls, um, there now seems to be an epidemic proportion of mosquito larvae on the edges of the lake. Um, uh, there's even been an article um, uh, gone out to all newspapers from Dr Cameron Webb, who's our New South Wales health uh, pathologist, I gather, uh, who's the expert when it comes to mosquitoes, and he's got huge websites on that and he's issued a, a warning and he's mentioned the two, uh, he's highlighted two major areas and one of them is Port Macquarie. Um, and addressing um, is there any traps, mosquito traps in, Port, um, in Lake Caddo, the last time I spoke to council there's nothing at Lake Caddo, it's gone missing. That was from a few years ago so that's what I know when I've addressed it. Going back in 2010-2011 I addressed council, it was a smaller group, it wasn't as many people as here, it was just the council itself, it was during the administration period and I talked about uh, the dangers of mosquitoes, um, uh, that, that we got front page in the Port News um, and it was the story about my wife because she, uh, when it comes to mosquito borne diseases she's probably had the worst that's ever been recorded. 10 years of Ross River and Barmer Forest and through the grace of God, she's through the worst of it. Um, anyway, we got front page, yet, yet it happened during the Ironman event, uh, the triathlon, and we got heavily criticised because we, they said we'll sensationalising the issue. You try telling someone who has in chronic pain 24 hours a day, living on um, the same type of tablets that people um, dying of cancer last three weeks or three months of um, that um, it, we're sensationalising it. But moving on, we have addressed it. They've, they've been in the papers before and we spoke to council then. Counts, uh, I should say, right now in Queensland, and that's what, what the video would have showed, that um, uh, councils, we're talking Gold Coast, we're talking Brisbane, we're talking Sunshine Coast, are spraying. They've been spraying for the last two weeks. It is costing councils millions. I don't know where they get that money from. But they're 
spraying right now because of the epidemic proportions. And I just think if we can put fluoridine in water and we get away with it, why can't we spray? I know there's health risks, but we, there's, a, there's, a, there's a case for it. Um, as I talked to council back in 2010, 2011, I was reminded by some of the most elderly people who live in the area who'd been living there for 50 years saying that these mosquito issues weren't an issue, what only become an issue when we started doing the water retention ponds when land development come. So I live there, I live on one of those new blocks that have been developed in the last 20 years. My block is also responsible for this. Uh, but this, the, this is pointing to some of the issues. Um, and I'd also say, and I say very clearly, and I can probably be shot down, that many of these problems is caused because the um, council stormwater drainage ponds are unkept. And I actually had a discussion recently, and I got told there was no funding when there was nothing in the lake, nothing in the ponds at all. It could have been cleaned up then and there. Um, moving on, um, the question I really came to ask is why is Port Macquarie so silent about this health warning? Who is actually responsible? Is it the Health Commission? Because the Health Commission tells me it's the local council. And I want to know um, who's responsible and if it's good enough for um, the Brisbane's uh, and, and all these other councils up north to do it, why, why is it not good enough for our council? And if the Mid-North Coast Council can use emergency powers, an emergency act to open the estuary down there during their flooded period, why isn't it good enough for our council to draw upon this emergency act? And lastly, that um, the most important thing to know is that these viruses aren't detected to six, eight weeks after the epidemic. So we won't know these things till about May. And it'll be too late by then. So thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Martin. Thank you. Don't go away. Don't go away in case there's questions. Uh, any questions for Martin? Uh, we no doubt will have questions for staff. Yes. I would just like to ask one to Martin. Yes. Um, Parish, I'm sorry, I, I missed what you said about if they can do it for flooding, why can't we? Yes, many, many. It was on the news uh, that the Menning Council, or Mid North, Mid North, Mid North Coast Council, enacted emergency powers that allowed them to open their estuary. They didn't need state government powers, they used their own. Why can't we do that? That's my I'll, question. I'll ask the general manager, I know the answer, yep. but I'll ask the general manager to respond to that. Thanks. Okay. Always nice to see you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Parrish. Can I um, first of all say um, I'm glad your wife is the, the other side of obviously a very long. Uh, long process understanding what Ross River Fever does. Uh, you mentioned the link in a video that you wanted to show Council. Is that something that you could share with us, please? Oh, it's um, yeah, it's it's just a news article, um, and it talks about um, the mosquito issue right now and what Brisbane's doing. And they're showing it just shows that they're um, using planes and they're air bombing all the estuaries. Okay, are you open to sharing that with the, with the government team? We can get that round to everybody. Yeah, on, thank you. I've got that. So, is that would you guys like to see that? I'll send it, yes, I'll do that. I'll send you a link. Okay, fantastic. No further questions for Martin? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so Very much. Nice. All the best. Okay, questions of staff? Questions of staff? Madam Deputy. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, to the General Manager, two questions. Number one, uh, response regarding uh, the mosquitoes. Um, We've touched on it before, but uh, if we could just uh, clarify Council's powers or not. Yeah, well, um, That's number one. Through you, Madam Mayor, as Acting Director Croft stated, we do it in concurrence with health, with New South Wales Health. Um, whilst we do have our own program from this sort of time of the year, um, that's something that we've already said we'll take off and out of this meeting and understand how we can enact it a little quicker. But we do need to do that with health. We're not the only authority that makes those sorts of decisions. Uh, second question, uh, there was a reference to the Manning uh, mm. and uh, uh, Mid-Coast Council, uh, sorry, mm. yes, Mid-Coast Council uh, making a decision based on flooding to open the Manning, whole different situation to uh, the lagoon, so could you just outline? Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, without knowing the full details of what Mid-Coast is up to, that is a 
emergency power they would have used, as we have in the past, to open the lake when it gets to a certain point from a flooding point of view. And of course, the Manning River is not an icon as the an intermittent closing and opening lake, like Lake Katai is, so they're quite different uh, issues in any regard. But it was from a flooding perspective, as I understand it. And to clarify, we're not in a flooding position regarding Lake Katai? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any further questions of staff? Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, through you, Mr General Manager, uh, could you just clarify one thing that, um, one note that Mr Parrish mentioned was about um, stormwater ponds and water drain off areas. Do we actually have a maintenance schedule? Mm -hmm. And if so, could you clarify what that is, please? Yeah, through you, uh, Madam Mayor, we do. Director Bilsmer, have you got any advice you want to throw this way? Uh, through you, Mr General Manager, our uh, stormwater uh, maintenance schedule is uh, risk-based, uh, obviously, through the inspections and uh, routine um, assessment of those uh, stormwater catchment areas. So, ultimately, some of that is um, advised to us through our through our customer service centre, as well as our our crews that are out patrolling each and every one of those stormwater catchment areas. <laughs> Um, thank you, Madam Mayor, through you, uh, Mr General Manager. So is this classed as a risk? Through you again, Mr General Manager, um, we would need to obviously assess that through the normal process if we were provided with the details and uh, the locations and happy to have, a, have an assessment of that site. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd just like to ask you, Mr General Manager, uh, Will you please log the two compliments from Martin Parish we received this evening? Already written down. For the bus shelter in the Maui. And Absolutely. thank you again for that, Martin. All right, we'll now move on. Item number nine. We have uh, matters on the agenda, the public forum. Could I have someone move that request to speak in the public forum be acceded to? Thank you, um, Councillor Griffiths, seconded by Councillor Hawkins. All those in favour? See none against. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Yeah, just before you move on, can I have, to have a word? I want to try and bring forward. Yeah, and we have the hand of working group in the crowd. There's no one speaking to it. But we could bring up item 04 after 1304. Oh, okay. All right. So I've just had a little discussion with the general manager, and we will bring forward, apart from items number. 10.16 and 12.1 and 13.3. We will also bring forward item number 13.4 and, sorry, 11.04 as well with Handa. So can I have someone move that uh, we have a suspension of standing orders? Thank you, Councillor Turner, seconded by Councillor Dixon. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. All right, so we will now move on to item number 10.16, investments for January 2020. Mr Mick Lyons. Good evening, Mick. Good evening. Welcome to you. Thank you. Um, Madam Mayor, councillors um, and council officers and general manager, I'm speaking in uh, favour of the recommendation in Agenda Item 1016, uh, Investments January 2020. At the December 2019 Council meeting, it was resolved that Council would ask each of the institutions with which it has investments to advise their position with respect to investment in fossil fuel projects, with a reply to Council on the 28th, by the 28th of January 2020. I congratulate Council on its prompt action on this resolution. Responses from um, five of the 10 banks are reported in attachment three of this item. The banks that, re that responded were NAB, ING, Bank of Queensland, Newcastle Permanent, and Bendigo and Adelaide Rural Bank. My interpretation or my reading of these responses is that NAB will continue with financing of coal-fired and thermal coal mining. 
ING plans to transition out of coal by 2025, but will continue to fund non-coal fossil fuels beyond then. Bank of Queensland does not fund mining projects and will have no exposure to fossil fuel extraction equipment by end of 2023. Newcastle Permanent states that it has no exposure to fossil fuels. And Bendigo and Adelaide Bank does not fund coal or coal seam gas projects, but has undertaken to provide further information on its other fossil fuel investments. Notably, there are no responses reported for Westpac St George or ICBC, the banks with the highest and second highest investments from Council. Based on analysis by market forces, our Council invests at least 50% of ratepayers' money in fossil fuel aligned banks. And depending on the feedback from all 10 banks, this figure could be as high as 70%. I therefore encourage Council to uh, pursue the other five banks and I look forward to Council's assessment of the responses from all the banks so that a strategy for divestment from fossil fuels can be formulated. I also look forward to any comments from the, uh, as a result of the Audit, Risk and Improvement Committee review relating to my um, address to Council in December, which included a divestment motion. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mick. Any questions for Mick? Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you very much for your address, the second one. Um, the the um, uh, deliberations of the Audit, Risk and Improvement Committee, as you are probably aware, are confidential. Cool. However, um, and I'm going to ask this in a form of a question, um, are you aware that the committee did meet last week and considered this matter? And um, are you aware that it agreed to uh, when the investment policy is to be reviewed in the near future, it's a few, a few, in the next few months, uh, that this matter will be considered um, in much greater detail? And um, I, lastly, sorry, it's more than one question, I admit, Mr General Manager, are you aware that Dependent on that, if there are, is, are revisions to the um, investment policy, it will come back to a briefing to councillors, will then come back to council and probably then go out on public exhibition. If that's the case, uh, that would give anyone such as yourself the opportunity to comment on that, review it and comment on it. Are you aware of all that? Uh, I wasn't aware of it, no, Thank you. <laughs> when I wrote this. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any further questions? <coughs> Thank you, Madam oh, Deputy. Sorry, sorry. No, for staff. For staff, yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Mick, thank if you'd you. like to go and sit down. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Madam Deputy, question of staff? Yes, through the General Manager to Director Olsen. Uh, we have indeed had five responses and, and uh, one of them quite vague. Uh, and another five that uh, still need to be chased up. So will your staff be trying to get elucidate uh, the replies from the remaining five? Through you, Mr General Manager, yes, uh, the staff will be chasing those up. Excellent. Any further questions of staff? No? Thank you. Well, we'll move on. Move move yes, we'll move on to the item. Thank yes, you. thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move that motion. Yes, I'm uh, happy as for you to do the, that. Uh, recommendation. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Turner. Thank you. If you'd like to speak to that, Councillor Hawkins. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, look, this is a pretty self-evident report, um, subject to the, the elaboration that I just gave at, at the review of the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee of the one aspect of it. But uh, Council's investments are, as the report says, but they are strong, they're, they're uh, um, in good condition and um, the community should be very satisfied with that. They are constantly reviewed by the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee uh, before, before they come to us, or actually at the same time as they come to us, and, um, and closely, closely scrutinised. So um, having said all that, I'd just like to suggest to my fellow councillors 
support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Councillor Turner, would you like to speak to this? Is there any other councillor that would like to speak to that? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would like to refer anyone interested in this matter. I support the motion. I would like to refer anyone interested in this matter uh, to the attachments to this council meeting, whereby the five responses are already there, the five responses we've received. Some of them are extremely enlightening in terms of how financial uh, agencies are considering this matter and how they are approaching this notion of uh, divestment over what period of time, for what reasons, uh, and certainly anyone who looked at these, uh, some of the more comprehensive of the reports that have come back uh, could not help but see that business is taking this extremely seriously, taking the uh, need to reduce emissions ex extremely seriously uh, in terms of um, both risk and benefit to themselves and the community. And um, I'm going to take this opportunity uh, to perhaps uh, issue a general suggestion to people in the community. If, you're, if you care about this matter, uh, then uh, it would probably be good for individuals to also be approaching uh, the banks uh, to, uh, and investment companies to ask them uh, their views uh, in order to uh, continue to put more pressure on these uh, institutions uh, to take uh, climate change seriously especially those ones who uh, didn't <coughs> reply to council. Thanks. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Do we have anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the motion? No? Would you like a right of reply? Can I speak to the motion? Please? Well, we have had two speakers to the motion already. Uh, no, not two. In no, favour? No, you're speaking against, are you? No, no, I'm speaking for one motion, but we haven't had two speakers against. You can only call it a vote if we have two for and two against. We've only had two for. You're, you're within your right then to... Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I hear what everyone says about the fossil fuel industry and I guess to be very boring, I looked on the internet the other night and I looked at the government websites and the Treasury websites and for the year ended uh, 30 June 2019, uh, the government spent $24.1 billion on Medicare. For the same period, they spent $38.7 billion on defence and the whole of the welfare budget for that year cost us $180 billion. I then went onto the Sydney Morning Herald website and discovered that the total tax and royalties paid by the mining industry in Australia for the year were $185 billion. I know this is very boring, but I just want to know, if we close the fossil fuel industry down, where are we going to find the $185 billion that effectively funds the nation's welfare bill? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I have to say that was anything but boring, Councillor Levito. It's very informative. Thank you. I'm glad you allowed me to speak. And I'm glad I allowed you to speak as well. <laughs> All right, that's enough. OK, would you like a right of reply, Councillor Hawkins? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, we're probably getting... Now's not the right time to get too involved in all this. We'll wait, I think, it's best when the investment uh, um, policy uh, itself is reviewed. and. Um, just one, one uh, I say cautionary note, that it's the primary responsibility, I believe, of council, and certainly all of us as councillors, our primary responsibility with the investments is a fiduciary responsibility to our community. We've got to make sure that the money's safe. We've got to make sure that the money gets a reasonable return on it. We do have other responsibilities, no question. But uh, this, this matter was discussed in some detail even in a preliminary way with the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee. It will come back and we'll look at it more closely and Councillor Levito, have your, have your time in the sun then. And, and we all need to listen because it's very important stuff. So uh, with that, thank you. That's the end of my right of reply. Thank you. Thank you, <coughs> Councillor Hawkins, for all of that. We'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Councillor Griffiths is against. I declare the motion carried. Thank you, councillors. All right, we'll move on now to item number 12.01, um, where we have uh, Malcolm Butler here with us this evening to speak. Good evening, Malcolm. Good 
floor is yours. Lady Mayor, um, councillors, general manager and staff, thank you very much for the opportunity to address you this afternoon. <coughs> uh, just a little bit of history. I've been vice president or president of the Warhope RSL now for 29 years, so I've got a fair idea what goes on over there. Uh, back in the, up until about 1965, uh, there was no car parking at all off street in Warhope, uh, as in just about every other country town. The reason for that is there was some families didn't have cars, there was one family cars and so forth. Uh, by then it became two family cars, the population exploded, and uh, there was no such thing as um, parking that you had to have. Uh, Warhope RSL recognised that there was a great shortage, so Diagonally opposite the RSL, there was an AFL service station. It closed down, and we wished to buy that for parking. Uh, I have a history of the war of RSL here up until 1974. It says in 1965 we approached that AFL service station to buy that parking. And January 1967, um, we applied to the war, as it was then the Hastings Shire Council, for them to purchase the uh, old super, sorry, the old um, service station as a car park. Uh, three months later, in March 67, they approved it, but the council didn't have any money. So they asked the War RSL if we'd pay it off, which we did, $4,000. We paid it off over four years, sorry, over 10 years. <coughs> For the next 20 years, that was the only off-street parking in Warhope. In Cameron Street, we had the War RSL, we had a picture theatre, just around the corner, we had a supermarket. They all shared that we took it as a community car park. That was the only car park in Warhope for two decades. Uh, around about 1998, we applied to build a, or we were applying to build a supermarket, an another supermarket in Warhope. But the current supermarket uh, decided at that stage they'd move around into Cameron Street and expand. Uh, I and everybody else just about a member of that supermarket, we decided that we would not compete against them, so we withdrew our plans. Uh, ever since then, uh, so in 2002, we expanded our RSL club. All these parking rules come in, we had to uh, extend our parking. So we pulled the picture theatre down, we turned it into parking, we bought several houses, turned it into parking. 2013, we tried to... Um, well, we've applied to build retirement housing, which is still not started, but it's getting very close. The um, parking for that was um, 20 car parks short. And we were told that we'd have to make a contribution. We've got enough car parking, but we've got to make a contribution of 20 car parks, which is $120,000. And going back to 2008, just before the council went into administration, uh, we applied for a ruling to have recognition of the car park in across the road, diagonally across where the Ampel service station was. Uh, there was a barrister ruling from the council that we had an interest in it, and we have correspondence that the council were going to pay us $125,000 plus GST. What happened was the council went into administration uh, we sent them an invoice that was received there. They were supposed to pay us 125000 We haven't got it. Now we're up for $120,000 for additional parking, uh, a parking contribution for parking somewhere else. What we would like to do is uh, no money to change hands. We're quite happy how things are, but to have their additional parking wiped for the $120,000, and we wipe the... Uh, case that we, should, we owed 125000 by the council for the car park for our entitlement, which was a barrister ruling by the council. You still have 30 seconds, Matt. Thank you. Uh, the, other, the other thing is, to, uh, next door to us, the state government where the RTA was, they have just put out a ruling that has applied for low-cost housing. There's going to be 12 units there with eight car parking places. The parking survey said there's ample parking in and around that uh, 
in the streets and in near car parks. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mal. I really appreciate it. Don't go away. Mal, don't go away. There could be questions for you. You're not off the hook yet. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, do we have any questions for Malcolm from... Yes. Thank you, uh, Thank you Councillor Malcolm, Leader. just a point of clarification. That last bit you were talking about, about the public housing, I might have misunderstood you. Would you just go through that? Uh, were you trying to make a comment that it seemed unfair that they didn't have to provide parking where you did, or were you uh, heading well, down that path? I was running out of time, so I had to hurry it up. Yeah. Uh, a couple of months ago, we received an application. Uh, it didn't come to council, I believe. It was the government thing for them to build low-cost housing. Uh, they applied to build 15 uh, units three storeys high. Uh, we objected because they said they had insufficient car parking and we can imagine them all using our car parks because these are low-cost families and so forth in it. Uh, they're the sort of people, a lot of them would probably be people that have a car jacked up in our car park. Uh, we support the building, but we reckon it's, it's too big and uh, we... Um, a pearl against it. Uh, just recently we have a answer back from them where they've reduced it to 12 uh, units, nearly all two bedrooms, a couple of one bedroom, uh, with eight car parks. And again, this is a government survey state that there's plenty of car parks in and around Warhope, which we agree with too, uh, providing they use ours. Thanks. I, I thought what you were going to say was it was uh, cheap of the state government to do these things without providing parking, but it's a problem we deal with every day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> any more? Uh, any other questions for Malcolm? Thank you, Madam Deputy. Uh, thank you, Mr um, uh, uh, I have some questions for staff afterwards, and it's a little bit uh, alarming to hear what you're saying about the uh, uh, low-income housing and the parking there. But nevertheless, um, I think that we need to revisit this matter in internal discussions and so therefore uh, would you be open to an invitation in the near future uh, to come and discuss these matters so that we can, we can try to uh, clarify finally what your options are going forward? Yes. Um, I, have, I have in the audience here Mr Wayne Saley. He and I attended heaps of meetings here before the 2008 He's no longer the CEO, but the new one, Graham Withers, is here. He and I, I'm in a lot of council minutes from a lot of your meetings. At any time at all, we're happy to come and talk. Thank you. OK, thank you. There's no further questions. You can sit down now, Malcolm. Thank you. Thank you. Ta. Any questions of staff? <laughs> questions of staff? Madam Deputy. Through you, Mr General Manager, to the Director of, uh, Acting Director of Development and Environment, uh, can you firstly, um, actually I'm just going to come straight to the general manager because this might be a bit sensitive. Um, Mr General Manager, uh, I understand that we got legal advice mm -hmm. about uh, how to deal with these two matters, the historic matters and the contributions. Could you outline what you understand is our situation? Look, I might need to throw to Director Olson but my, or, or Acting Director Croft, but my understanding is that we were advised to deal with them quite separately. But uh, Ms Olson, Director Olson. Yes, through you, Mr General Manager, that is in fact correct. That is the advice we received. Mm. Uh, never, nevertheless, Mr General Manager, I'm assuming that it would still be possible for us to have a frank and open conversation with the RSL about how we might move forward on this. Uh, certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question for you, Mr General Manager. Given that advice, uh, it's not binding on Council to go in that direction. So we're within our right um, to debate and discuss the upcoming uh, notice of motion that I prepare Correct. to move. So Correct. council you know, can resolve in another way. Uh, absolutely. Through Madam Mayor, it's, it's advice only and council can resolve as they choose, yes, as long as it's not an illegal resolution. Okay. Great. Thank you. Councillor Levito. Question for the general manager. Um, I understand the situation is as black and white as uh, the gentleman mentioned where 
There were negotiations back through 2006, 2007. A figure was arrived at, a tax invoice was submitted, an administrator was appointed, and that was the end of it. Are you able to tell us in simple terms why the tax invoice wasn't paid? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I'm not. I don't know if anyone else in the chamber can. Director Olson, have you got any clue? Uh, none of us were in uh, positions that would be able to answer that. We'd have to take it on notice, and I'm not sure that we'd actually come up with a response, to be honest. So supplementary, Madam Mayor? Certainly, um, Councillor Levetta. So, so on that basis, one simple way of looking at it is that we owe them the money. Mm. Uh, they may want to make a claim for interest in the meantime, but we owe them the money. We simply pay them the money in one hand, and on the other hand, they pay it back to Council by way of the uh, contribution. That would be open, subject to budgetary issues. That's one simple way of looking at it. Yeah, correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Levito. Any further questions of staff? No? Okay, in that case, we'll move on to item um, number 12. Where are we? 12.01. I will move the motion. And seconded by Councillor Griffiths. Thank you. I appreciate that. And it is uh, that Council note that the Warhope RSL Club repaid Council's loan to purchase the Branston Street car park site in 1967, being lots 4, 5 and 6 in DP 236079. Two, note the purpose for repaying the loan on behalf of Council was to provide additional parking space for Warhope RSL and the community at that time. Three, note the original agreement provided for Warhope RSL to have first right of refusal should Council wish to sell the car park site. Four, waive the payment of car parking contributions levied under Section 711 of the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act 1979 on DA 2018-562 for seniors housing at Lot 1 DP 390610, Lot 1 DP 782. 560, lots 10, 11, 12, 13, DP 861177, lots 3 and 4, DP 347796, lot 1, DP 151300, lot 1, DP 795534, lot 1, DP 1053812, and lot 1, DP 393967. The amount waived is 18 car parking spaces which is currently $6,434 per space under Council's Contribution Plan 1993 Part C, car parking totalling $115,812. In uh, point five, invite the Warhope RSL Club to lodge an application to modify DA 2018-652 uh, to delete reference to the payment of car parking contributions. And I say this um, because literally uh, the club back in the day paved paradise to put up parking lots to ensure that the community of Warhope back then had off-street parking. Now, I haven't got the memory um, like Mal Butler of 29 years worth of history in the Warhope RSL club. So I'm going to actually read from just some words that I've put together. Um, I was provided with um, a copy of a letter dated the 3rd of March 1967, which has been provided to all councillors. They have a hard copy on their desk. Um, it says, uh, Dear Mr Robinson, Council has considered your letter of the 18th of January and the offer of your club to meet the repayments of a loan of $4,000 to acquire land in Branston Street for a car park. I'm pleased to advise that Council has accepted the offer and resolved that should Council wish to dispose of the land in the future, your club would be given the opportunity to purchase the land at $4,000. Negotiations have revealed that the loan will be available for lenders for, um, from lenders for a period of 10 years at an interest rate of 5.75 per annum, with repayments by 20 half-yearly instalments of $265.77, covering principal and interest, it will now be necessary for Council to apply for the Governor's approval to the loan. This may take some weeks. Yours faithfully, and it was the uh, T Gibson, I believe, Shire Clerk. It's very difficult to read, but um, that is the document. And uh, 
Given that the car park was purchased by Hastings Council with funds provided by the Warhope RSL sub-branch club following its incorporation in 1972, a legal and binding agreement exists between both entities um, due to offer, pardon me, offer consideration and acceptance as at the letter of this 3rd of March 1967, with the benefit of the car park assigned to Warhope RSL as additional parking for the club and the community in general for the future. It appears this mutually beneficial arrangement has worked well in the past because this was the way it was back then. It was the shake of a man's hand and you had a deal. We did have a letter though. Here we are in 2020 and the future has well and truly arrived and due to the desire for some of our senior population to reside in the heart of the township of Warhope and the Warhope RSL are wanting to ensure that agreement is honoured for the benefit of our growing community. Through the development process, Warhope RSL Club Senior Housing Development have found that they are 18 car parks short for the development. The board of the Warhope RSL Club has a reasonable expectation that the shortfall of the 18 car parks can be more than compensated through the benefit of the Branston Street car park. Given that this is a senior housing development, the ability to walk to the RSL club and on level ground with footpaths into the main town area will no doubt see a reduction of use in cars. Public transport is also well utilised in Warhope with an excellent bus service and varied routes into Port Macquarie. I also acknowledge that this development has great economic advantages for the town of Warhope and I do request the support of the councillors in this instance. If I could um, ask, is anyone else wanting to speak on this matter? Uh, yes. Uh, I will move an amendment. Uh, sorry, it might be that I have to foreshadow a motion, please, Mr General Manager. Thank you, uh, Michael. Uh, Mr General Manager, if you can determine, I'm pretty sure it would be a foreshadowed motion, that uh, uh, the General Manager arrange uh, an urgent meeting with uh, the relevant parties uh, to uh, endeavour to resolve these matters. Yep, foreshadowed motion. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you, Madam Deputy. Councillor Levito. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Could I foreshadow a further motion, if I may, that the General Manager bring back to the March 2020 meeting of council a report updating council on the history of the Bransden Street Bransden sorry uh, uh, Bransden Street Warhope car park <coughs> issue including a settlement proposal to pay to the RSL, sorry, the Warhope RSL Club Limited the sum of $125,000 plus interest by reference to the CPI dash all groups Sydney plus GST calculated from 1 January 2008 to the date of payment, which payment date will be prior on or before 30 June 2020. Thank you, Councillor Levito. All right, so we'll go back to the motion and deal with it. Could I just clarify something with Councillor Levito? Please? Certainly. Um, what does CPI all group Sydney plus, I understand, plus GST? What is the uh, uh, certainly, Madam Mayor. It basically sets the uh, interest rate at the rate of inflation. Okay. So it will mean that the $125,000 that we will pay them in 2020 will be will represent $125,000 in 2020 dollars as it would have been back in 2008.
Okay, thank you. So we'll move back to the motion. Councillor Griffiths, do you wish to speak to this? Okay, any... Sorry, um, uh, Mr General Manager, do you have anything to add at this point in time? Sorry that... that... Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, if councillors are of a mind to want to discuss this further, we could present a briefing to council um, on the issue. Not sure that we'd get that in before the March council meeting, which is only two weeks from closure of reports. But um, I have a question uh, for Director, Acting Director Croft. Um, was there not a briefing presented to councillors on this matter? Thank you, Madam Mayor. There was a briefing to Council on this matter along with the development application. Um, I can't recall the date. It would have been... Could it have been February last year? It was, was, was about 12 to 18 months ago, around yes. that. I, I was away for that briefing, I recall, in February last year. Yes, that's right. We did have a briefing on it. So there has already been a briefing. Thank you. All right, so we're sitting with the motion. Is there any um, anyone wishing to oppose the motion or speak no. in opposition? I'll speak against it. Thank Thanks, you, Madam Councillor Mayor. Levine. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things. I, I am concerned as a lawyer, and I hear the advice from uh, uh, Director Olson that we have legal advice, um, and I, I appreciate exactly what you're trying to do, Madam Mayor, but I don't believe this is the legal or proper or transparent way to do it. I don't believe that we should be offsetting contributions payable for development under the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act and the Water Acts with past legal obligations. I think it's a bad look, it's dangerous, we couldn't end up before ICAC and, and for that reason I don't think it's the right way to do it. Having said that, I'm very mindful of the historical matter here and I think it's terrible that the Warhope RSL Club has been sort of uphill and down dale on this matter. I am aware that back in 2006 and 2007 a settlement was negotiated. Now, okay, Council lost its, uh, its uh, elected people when the administrator was appointed and it's gone into the ether and nothing's happened. Look, we've spoken about this long enough. Um, we need to resolve it. Uh, I appreciate that the club needs certainty as to what they're doing. Council needs to tie up this loose end. Um, if we're not careful, um, the club might, may not be as friendly and may not want to uh, settle on the figure that's been offered and, and, and want to do something else. That would be bad for council. Okay, it's $125,000 plus CPI plus GST. It might be $160,000 now. I don't know. Um, the general manager's eyes are probably rolling. Uh, Director Olsen's eyes are probably rolling about where we're going to find this money. But we're told, for example, tonight that for the REF for uh, Lake Caddo, it's going to cost us hundreds of thousands of dollars which we didn't know about three weeks or a month ago, but we've got the money. So why can't we find the money to pay these people what we owe them and what we agreed we owed them back in 2008? Thank you, Councillor Levito. Uh, I'm just, if no one else is going to speak against it, are you speaking against? Yes. yes thank uh, you, Councillor Hawkins. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, my, my heart is telling me uh, absolutely that we should do exactly what you've suggested, but my, my brain is telling me, no, we need to prepare this properly. We need, and Councillor Council Levito's suggestion is, I think, the appropriate path forward. And it's for that reason I'm actually opposed to the motion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Griffiths, would you like to speak to it? Yeah, I will just briefly. I think in the end, 18 car parks or 18 car parks, one in, one out, is there really going to be a difference in the transaction if it's a transaction that equals the same position, if you know what I'm saying? So I think I actually support what this motion suggests. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? Um, just, just to follow on from what uh, Councillor Griffiths just said, uh, it's uh, one in, one out. Well. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's much tidier if we uh, sort out the uh, past issue and uh, separately the uh, contributions that are due to be paid. And so therefore, 
uh, I don't uh, I don't support the way simple waiving of the car parking. If we're going to if we're going to head down this path, then we need to uh, resolve past issues as well. So I'm opposed to the motion. Well, thank you. Uh, any other councillors wishing to speak? Thank you, Councillor Ali. Uh, look, uh, just very briefly, um, I, uh, I think the approach by Councillor, or the foreshadowed approach by Councillor Levito uh, is a much better resol you know, resolution of the problem or a much better way to get to, to a final resolution, so I'll be supporting. I'll, so therefore I'll be opposing uh, your notice of motion and presumably when the foreshadowed motion comes up from Councillor Levito, I'll, I'll be supporting that. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I'll take up the right of reply, and uh, based on the uh, the debate and discussion that we're having over this, uh, Warhope RSL did not come to the chamber requesting anything more than to allow for the overflow of the 18 car spaces to be used or recognised as part of their DA. They did not come cap in hand asking for money with CPI increase um, or GST. That was not the spirit of the conversation. The spirit of the conversation was that back in the 60s, the RSL club had a community spirit, which it continues to have today. And that community spirit developed the only off-street car parking in the township of Warhope in the day. Things have changed, granted, yes. But I think from um, a community perspective, who as elected councillors, we represent our community, we are not here to disadvantage financially our entire community um, via um, the foreshadowed motion by uh, Councillor Levito. I understand what Councillor Levito is saying because he comes from it with the mind of a lawyer and um, tidying loose ends up. Uh, I, I, will ask the general manager, is this a matter that if we are just um, acknowledging the 18 car park shortfall and acknowledging that there is a historical agreement here, which is legal and binding, is this a mat really a matter for ICAC? I think not. I, I, I would not imagine ICAC would want to be investigating a matter where there is a historical paper trail involved. I'm talking about a development approval here where we are the masters of our own destiny in at local government and we have the ability through a resolution of council to ensure that the community spirit is upheld, the car park is still available to the RSL club, to the community and council financially is not disadvantaged through that. Uh, through you Madam Mayor, it's really not for me to say what ICAC would be interested in interested in or otherwise, but um, I, I fall back to that legal advice that says the cleanest way to deal with it from a transparency point of view would be as two separate transactions, which I think is what Councillor Levito's foreshadowed motion is speaking of. Uh, but I couldn't really comment on the ICAC interest or otherwise, other than they do encourage transparency, obviously. Well, it can't get much more transparent than recording our council meeting this evening and debating this in the chamber. But having said that, um, I'm not going to uh, uh, take any more time of, uh, of the good people that have come out here tonight. So I will put the motion to a vote then. All those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Um, so Councillor Griffiths and myself were in favour. Thank you. The motion has been lost. We'll now move to the foreshadowed motion of Count... Uh, sorry, Madam Deputy. Uh, firstly, can we roll down to... so that we can see Councillor Levito's foreshadowed motion. General Manager, bring back to the March meeting a report updating Council on the history of the Branson Street Warhope car park, including a settlement proposal. Uh, I am going to uh, change my foreshadowed motion uh, to be that the General Manager bring back to the March 2020 meeting of Council a report updating Council on the history of the Branston Street Warhope car park issue, 
including a settlement proposal uh, with the Warhope RSL Proprietary Limited. Full stop. Full stop. Uh, so, can we change that to Carpang? Yes, with the Warhope RSL Limited. And that may, question to you, Mr. General Manager, that may include uh, discussions as to exactly what that proposal, settlement proposal, uh, with the RSL, yeah. as to exactly what that settlement proposal uh, do, uh, constitutes. Now, that is for, again, a question, uh, that is for the March 2020 meeting. Uh, is this uh, pushing it to quickly, we probably need some more time to discuss. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, it is only two weeks today till council meetings close, and if we're trying to meet in the middle of all of that and then write reports, it's very tight. So I will change that to the April 2020 meeting, please. Thank you. If there's a seconder, I'll speak to it. Seconded by Councillor Ali, thank you. Um, may I ask a, a question in regards to that? Um, to uh, Acting Director Croft, in relation to um, this now motion, how how will that affect bringing back something like this to the April meeting? How will that affect the development moving forward for the RSL Club? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. It it won't. I mean, the, the club has the capacity to act on the development now. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Madam Deputy. Uh, thank you. Um, first off, I would like to um, uh, recognise uh, the, uh, the action of the Mayor in bringing it before us. Thank you. We need to get it resolved. Thank you. So that's good. Um, I'd also like to recognise the action uh, of Councillor Levito in making a very cut and dried specification as to how this might be resolved. I am reluctant to get down to the nitty-gritty of those specifications without having some further discussions. And so, and that includes with the, uh, with the RSL. I would hope that we would, be, we would meet with them. Uh, and uh, so that's why I'm suggesting that we uh, do it this way without actually specifying what the settlement proposal will be uh, and allowing uh, a little more time to the April 2020 meeting uh, for us to uh, actually come mutually with the RSL uh, to what the details of that might be. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Councillor Ali, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, any opposition to the motion? Thank you, Councillor Levito. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, I think we need a quick decision and a cut and dried decision because the club needs to know what they're doing. If we make a decision in March that we're prepared to do this with a figure, they know from a financial point of view when they'll have their money. If they need to fund the contributions that you're concerned about, Madam Mayor, they can move ahead with confidence in what they're doing. My concern is I don't know why we need to wait to April. Yes, I appreciate it's two weeks, but we know what the history of this thing is. It's black and white. It's $125,000 plus GST, plus interest. How are we going to fund it? Where are we going to get the money? Let's get it done. Let's get it finished. I'm just concerned it's another month, it's six weeks down the track. And, you know, we could go on forever about a settlement proposal. I just think it was clear. We had a decision back in 2007, 2008. So I'm opposing it for that reason. I think it's time to bite the bullet and get on with it. Thank you, Councillor Levito. I'm... Um I'm going to speak um, in favour of the motion, um, Madam Deputy, for the reasons being that whilst I appreciate what Councillor Levito is saying, and usually I'm a woman of uh, action and I like to see things resolved very quickly, in this regard we are assuming that uh, Warhope RSL Club will be interested in $125,000 GST and um, CPI increases. So for that reason, I think that um, we need to have that discussion with the RSL Club uh, to see their, their thoughts. And obviously, um, you know, solicitors are going to need to be involved in that discussion as well um, to try and broker any settlement proposal if that so happens. 
Um, so for that reason, I think that uh, that gives us ample time uh, to have that report come back in April, considering Director uh, Acting Director Croft has assured us that it has no impact on, on the development moving forward. So for that reason, you have my support, Madam Deputy. Anyone else wish to speak to this? Right of reply, Madam Deputy. Yeah. Oh, sorry, <coughs> Councillor Hawkins, I didn't see you over there. Um, I actually have a question of staff, of, of Acting Director Croft, if I may. Um, when you say they can proceed, my understanding is um, that to proceed, you have to pay the contributions assessed. Am I correct? And can you explain what that means specifically in this instance, in this context? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Yes, that is correct. So when I uh, probably didn't give a full uh, understanding of the situation, I had the capacity to proceed, but under the consent, there's a list of conditions they have to comply with, which would, would include paying the contributions. So they could resolve a, a, another uh, you know, settlement after that, if possibly, but they would have to pay the contributions to, to, to act on the consent. Okay, so that, well, that was not my understanding from the question that I asked you, but thank you for clarifying. So that means that there will be a, a, de a delay to the commencement then? Uh, if they don't pay the contributions, that's correct. So there could be an option potentially to pay the contributions and work out the settlement later so they could carry on. However, that's, again, it, the, the advice is to separate it from the uh, planning authority perspective. Okay, well, we'll I'll, 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 I will still continue to support because I'll, I'll roll the dice on this one. Thank you. So, question. Um, I'm sorry if I uh, failed to capture what was going on there. I thought you said earlier that they would be able to go ahead with their development, which is um, the DA for, tell me what, uh, through you, Madam Mayor. That, so I was probably in, uh, didn't provide a complete answer, if you like. They have the capacity to act on the consent now. There's a whole series of conditions that they need to comply with. One of them is paying the contributions. Consent for what? Seniors, Seniors housing. Seniors housing. One of those being to... What did you just say then? Car parking. Provide the car parking. Pay, pay, the, pay contribution. the contributions. Pay the contributions. OK, so is this... Through Mr. General Manager, this timing is this. Does this hold them up? The R, sorry, the RSL up in terms of what they can do with the uh, housing development. Uh, well, through you, Madam Mayor, that's a decision I can't answer. So that's something for the RSL. If they required that $125,000 or the offset for the contributions, then that may be a barrier to the moving forward. I couldn't answer that question. I'm sorry. Will they be held up in in doing their development with if they have not paid the contributions? Yes. Okay. Um. Thank you. A right of reply. Yep, I was waiting for it. I'm going to let this um, again. You you use the term roll of the dice. I'm going to let this this go through uh, to. Um, uh, to see what the what the support is around the table, um, but realising that, uh, bearing in mind what we've just heard, uh, it's likely that um, uh, Councillor Libido's uh, motion will get up. Thank you. In in that case, I will put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? No. <laughs> <laughs> you are kidding me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank you. Um, I'm the only mug that um, is voting for. <laughs> That's a technical term. And uh, the motion, uh, the for sorry, the motion has been lost. Unbelievable. Okay, so here we are, Castle Levito, seconder for. Those against, yes, of course. Yes, yeah, so, well, we, we. Hello, Brian, Blind Freddy could see that. All right, thank you very much. Um, I'm asking oh, for one. I, 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 I'm sorry. My mood just Peter Alley seconded it. Oh, no, the foreshadowed. Okay, thank you, Councillor Alley. Councillor Levito, floor's yours again. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just quickly, I think it became apparent in that discussion why I worded it this way. I think there's certainty for everybody, certainly for council moving forward, certainly for the, uh, the club moving forward. And I think it, 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 it gives a, a, uh, a good solution to a difficult problem. I think it solves the problem. We don't have to talk about car parking contributions and the, and, and the development approval. Uh, we can now look at how we can settle this. The club, bearing in mind the decision we reach in March, can then make decisions about those sorts of other issues themselves, independent. Okay, Councillor Ali, would you like to speak to this? Uh, enough has been said. Thank you. Okay, Councillor, I'm um, sorry, Madam Deputy. Um, thank you, and my apology, um, Madam Mayor, I did try to, to give you an indication of where I was heading with this. Um, in, in what was said to the uh, other for the other motion, uh, I support this because uh, of all the complications that have just been uh, just been brought out about uh, whether or not the club is able to proceed with their uh, housing development uh, unless this um, this solution is found. So yes, my apology. I didn't mean to leave you as a mug, councillor. Uh, Madam Mayor, and I wouldn't be calling you that, only you did, <laughs> um, but uh, I, I now support this as I thought that I gave strong indication of when I was speaking before. Um, thank you, Madam Deputy. Uh, yes, Councillor Hawkins. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> uh, actually, on the contrary to uh, the mug comment, I want to actually uh, thank you and congratulate you for bringing this forward because I think it is, as several have said, it's, it's appropriate. And um, I think Councillor Levito's, so, so you're actually going to lose twice, but I hope you actually get, you, you win the war in the end because I think this is the better solution to give the uh, Warhope RSL some certainty as soon as possible and we, we clean up everything in the right way. So I'm very happy to support this. And as I said, I wanted to thank you for actually bringing it forward. Um, thank you, Councillor Hawkins, and I do appreciate um, that from you both. I, I need to speak. I think I'm going to move an amendment. I think I'm going to move an amendment to this. For the reasons that, um, so the amendment will be this, and I'll explain myself in a moment. Um, the amendment will be that the general manager um, instigate urgent uh, discussions. Sorry, the general manager invite representatives of Warhope RSL Club. for the purpose of urgent discussions over the matter of a proposed future settlement. And report back to councillors via an urgent briefing as to the outcome of those discussions. Um, do I have do I have anyone to second that? I'll second for the purposes of discussion. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Um, the reason I moved that amendment is because um, none of us here in the room know what the mind is of um, the gentlemen that have come from the Warhope RSL Club. And for that matter, they also have a board. Um, I think that it's a little arrogant of us to suggest $125,000 is the figure plus the CPI plus the GST. I, I would like to be more... Um, gentle, womanly about it and, um, and have that discussion where both parties come to the table equal. And um, I would also ask the um, general manager in a matter like this if there is uh, discretion for you to 
make settlement um, after after consulting with councillors. Through you, Madam Mayor, it would need to come back to a resolution of council. Right. But we, we could have an extraordinary yeah. meeting. We could bring, uh, sorry, an extraordinary council meeting? Yes. Uh, one could. To bring it forward before April? Uh, yes. Yes. I think Councillor Vito's motion is what I was referring to for March, though, so it's still only a month away. Yeah. Yes. OK. Yeah. All right. Um, OK, so probably add to that. If you're inclined, Madam Deputy. Adding. Yes, adding um, that the general manager invite representatives are uh, one, invite rep yeah, one, that the general manager invite representatives of the Warhub RSL Club Limited for the purpose of urgent discussions over the matter of a proposed settle future settlement and report back to councillors via an urgent briefing as to the outcome of those discussions. Two, uh, that a report be provided for the March 2020 council meeting as to any proposed settlement. Are you are you okay with that? Okay, thank you. And that way we're we're a month off um, and I've said everything that I need to say, so I don't need to go over that again. Madam Deputy, would you like to speak to it further? So have you spoken to this, uh, this amendment? Yes, I believe I did, given that I, uh, no one here knows the mind of the board or the RSL club. And I think we need a, gen we need a gentleman, womanly, gentlewoman agreement to come to the table and have these discussions via the general manager and representatives of the RSL club. Uh, all right, I, am, I will support this amendment to uh, enable again, offer the opportunity to councillors, sorry, thank you, offer the opportunity to councillors uh, to um, take this way. And I absolutely agree with you that this is a more civilised approach. Uh, and so, therefore, I speak in favour of it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Um, any uh, speaking in opposition to this? Mm -hmm. Councillor Levito? Thank you. Madam, Madam Mayor? Yes. Thank you. I'll speak against it. We have on the books of Council already a settlement proposal of $125,000, which is why I think that solves that issue. The reality will be we're coming back to Council on the 20th of Mar in March 2020, which is only a month or so away. With and I think it's important that Mr Butler and crew understand that the agenda closes in two weeks. If the RSL club are unhappy about that, I suspect that within no time at all they'll be talking to the general manager. When the general manager comes back to the meeting in March, we'll know what's going on. If the club are happy with it, we're right, we can get it done, we can make the decision, the club knows what they're doing and they can do it. If they're unhappy about it, the general manager will say to us in March, oh, I know we said this, but they've come back and they want that, then we can go from there. So we're inviting the discussion. They will come, I'm sure. So I don't think we need to delay it any longer and be gentlewomanly about it or whatever. Let's just get it done. And I say to the club, and I say to Mr Butler and his crew, if they're unhappy about it, give Mr Swift McNair a ring tomorrow and we can go from there. Thank you, Councillor Levito. Any other further opposition to this? Any further speakers? OK, I'll have a right of reply then. Uh, the report could still be the same as a result of coming back to March, as, as a result of this amendment. Uh, it could be it could be far different as well, but at least we would know the position. I think you're actually personally um, putting um, words into other people's minds and mouths. So I would prefer um, that the general manager invite the discussion and bring the report back of that discussion for adoption um, by the council in March to the council meeting. Either way, there's an outcome, one way or the other, in March 2020 at the ordinary council meeting. OK, I'll put the motion to the vote then. Oh, sorry, the amendment to the vote. Thank you. Um, I'll put the amendment to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. 
Those against? Okay, the amendment's been lost. Thank you. We're back to Councillor Levino's foreshadow. No, it's a motion. It's a motion, motion. Yeah. sorry. It is too. All right. So we're back to the... The motion. Is there any further discussion on this? Okay. Well, I've... I've been beaten at my own game, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to actually um, support this because I want to see an outcome for Warhope RSL Club, um, and rightfully so, um, given that they had an agreement all those years. There'll be some closure for it, and uh, it'll be up to them as to whether they accept um, what's on the table, and that will be a matter for them and the general manager to discuss. So if there's no further discussion, I will put the motion to a vote. Oh. To at least get the opportunity Absolutely. to... Would you uh, like have... to say something? Just very briefly, I do seriously extend to uh, Mr Butler and the uh, RSL Club people uh, uh, an opportunity to very promptly make contact with Mr Swift McNair if there's any concern at all about the matter so that we can deal with the issue, hopefully to finality uh, at the March 2020 meeting. Please do that. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Councillor Levito. I will now put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. See none against. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. All right. We'll now move to item number 13.03, water restrictions update and water storage levels. And I apologise to Carmel if you're still with us. No, here she is. Thank you. Apologies for that. Carmel, welcome. Oh, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I'm a bit short from the other speakers. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. And I just clarify that I am speaking on items 13.03 and 13.04 because I believe that they are intrinsically linked. By way of an introduction, my name's Carmel Crow. Um, I'm a long-term professional in the water industry. Most recently, up until late last year, I was the director of Shoalhaven Water with Shoalhaven City Council. I'd been the director there for 12 years. I'm currently the national president of and chair of the board of the Australian Water Association. I'm here today to you as a resident of the Camden Haven with a great interest in council's management of its water business. There's three points that I'd like to present to you. Firstly, in regard to water restrictions. As you're aware, level four water restrictions are a very significant and unprecedented situation for this LGA. In order for these types of restrictions to be effective, council has to rely on the community spirit because, frankly, enforcement tools are not, are not a practical stick to use. So I really have been looking for a greater, from council, a greater degree of information to the community, and I would certainly like to see more information on a daily basis on council's website. Um, at the moment, you only have the dam levels. In the current report, the director has given daily demand levels, and I think there needs to be um, a much greater emphasis on the information provided to the community. My second point relates to the question of how we get, have got to this point, and my concern at the lack of transparency and progress on the longer term water supply strategy for this LGA. I've reviewed council, I've gone back and reviewed council's agendas and minutes since February 2015, when the council of the time accepted a tender for the preparation of the Integrated Water Cycle Management Plan. In June 2018, this council resolved to include the stormwater strategy in the IWCM and identified it as a key operational activity, but didn't receive any update on the progress of that strategy. In May 2019, this council considered a confidential matter, accepting a quotation from Public Works Advisory for a supplementary report. There was no public reporting of the progress of the IWCM or what were the outcomes of the work to date. The issue of sec water security was not raised in Open Council until September 2019, where there was a notice of motion requesting a report. Despite this, Council considered a report in February last year to accept a dividend payment from the water and sewer funds in which the best practice report stated that a gap analysis had been undertaken to review its strategy 
and completed in 2016. Again, there was no other information available to determine exactly what that meant. I understand very, very well the, the very broad and often complex issues that this council has to deal with. My comments are made with the utmost respect for the amount of work both staff and councillors have to deal with. As the local water utility, this council has a unique and significant set of responsibilities within the water and sewer business. The concern I have is whether or not this council has sufficient resources and the governance structure to comply with those responsibilities. The final point that I'd like to make is that I believe that this council could be and should be leaders in the use of recycled water. You've made such great initi initiatives in this space to date. The idea of supplementing the potable supply is a great vision and one that should par form part of the longer term IWCM, but this is not a magic button now. There is already a great deal of information on the technical processes required to achieve this outcome. But the key issue for this council, and this is my, my personal opinion, is that you actually need to work through the drinking water quality risk management framework that you must already have before you go down any further paths. One of the key elements of any risk management, and particularly the, the Australian Drink Water Guideline Management Framework, is a high level of commitment from both the executive and from the, the, the political leaders. And I believe that, and it's very difficult to summarise all these issues in five minutes, but there is a number of complex issues here that I believe Council needs to be far more transparent to the community about exactly what is going on, what has gone on, and also um, that there are a number of initiatives that Council can undertake moving forward. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much, Carmel. Um, oh, I'm absolutely enthralled with what you're saying and uh, I would certainly ask, would you consider um, coming in uh, to have a conversation with myself, the general manager and uh, councillors in regards to your further views on that because you're correct, five minutes isn't enough and it's certainly not my area of expertise and um, some of the decisions uh, of council are uh, long ago and I think for, for us with what we've been through um, with fires, droughts, now floods, the line has to be drawn in the sand and we have to move forward responsibly into how we um, assure our security of water is, um, is upheld for our community of today and the community of the future as well. So I'll be very happy to um, host you here in council and have a discussion about that if yep. you're agreeable. I would absolutely agree and I'm not, and I agree with you that, you that we are where we are, you can't go back and I wasn't trying to lay blame no. or simply pointing out the fact that there is, when you're looking for information, the community that are very interested and particularly with these type of water restrictions that are on now, um, you need the community to come with you and you yes. really need the support from the community yes. and without that sort of transparency then um, you lose that credibility. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And um, and the community has been, as I said earlier, I don't know if you were here when I had said it, the community have been absolutely fabulous during this time and people have really stepped up and we, we have managed to see a reduction in that usage. So um, I'm, I'm absolutely so grateful to our community for that. Um, is there any questions uh, of councillors for Carmel? off the back of that uh, presentation. It's a very serious topic, but um, I'm sorry, Carmel. Welcome back. <laughs> I hope that you're enjoying it. <laughs> Thank yes. you very much. Just on that context, I um, used to work for Hastings Council. I started out here as a, quite a young engineer, and one of the first jobs that I had was to um, supervise the consultants for the selection of the site of the dam, which is now Kawara Dam. Oh, and wow. And so you can see that um, I'm extremely interested in and the fact that those water and sewer assets, um, the planning for those assets are extremely long term. The assets are very long lives and that's why it's so, it is so important that these, the planning for those things are done 
in the best possible way. Of course, and I and I have some questions that I'd really like to ask you. Um, one of them being, if you were with Hastings Council, do you know anything about the Warhope RSL car park? <laughs> <laughs> Just joshing. We've been there. Don't want to upset Councillor Levito. Um, okay, so any questions of uh, Carmel? Yes, Councillor Hawkins. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for your address. That was really interesting. I got, and I just want to confirm with you, so my question is, have I, have I got this right or have I missed something? That's really the question. I got two clear messages. The one was transparency, transparency, transparency. Uh, and the other one was recycled water. They're the two big things. Is there a third, something I've missed? No, the transparency comes through both in terms of the water restriction and transparency. Okay. In terms of um, getting the community, I've, I've noticed as well that in some of your social media um, posts, there's, there's quite valid questions that get asked that don't seem to get responded to and there doesn't seem to be, to me, a, a great deal of engagement about the transparency, particularly given the fact that it is a very, you do have, it's a unique type of water supply. It's actually a very embarrassing situation to be in, to be having places where your yards have been flooded <coughs> and there is still the need to be on level four water restrictions and that's a really difficult concept to explain to the community unless you're doing it really almost on, a, on a, a daily basis and reinforcing those things. And certainly the point about recycled water, absolutely. And, it, and that would all come out in the, the planning in, for the IWCM. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? No. Okay, thank you very, very much, Carmel. If you'd like to take a seat and I'll ensure, yeah, thank you. And I'll ensure that we get in touch with you and make that um, and make that appointment to have that meeting. Thank you. Uh, any questions for staff? No. Uh, sorry. Um, I think that was a very important point that uh, Ms. Crow uh, raised about uh, responding in social media. And so, uh, Mr. General Manager, uh, have we got or will you develop? Uh, sufficient resources for us to be able to follow through uh, and make sure that, particularly on an important matter such as this, that uh, uh, that there is an adequate reply given to people. Uh, well, through you, Madam Mayor, that's a discussion councillors will need to have from a priority in a funding perspective, from a resource perspective. Yeah. Okay. No further questions of staff. No, thank you. All right, well, we'll um, bring the item forward then, item 13.03. Um, I'm... Um, Madam Deputy, you're aware I was about to move a motion to that. I did send it out to all councillors. Thank you for jumping the gun. I'd like to move the motion that I sent out to everybody. Thank you. Um, Madam Mayor, I understand that, and I'm not going to push the push the point here, but nevertheless, it is, it is uh, just because something gets sent through doesn't mean to say uh, that it gets priority. Will you let me finish? Just because it's sent through doesn't mean to say it gets priority, and anybody can actually move a motion at any moment in time. Absolutely, but um, with respect, Madam Deputy, you do have a habit of jumping up and... and um... I reject that, Madam Mayor, and stop trying to score points. I'm not, not trying to do anything of the matter. I'm just um, pointing out the fact that you have a habit of jumping up. From um, your opinion, Madam Mayor, can we just get on with the topic? Thank you. Thank you. I'm moving a motion. It is uh, that Council 1 note the update on water supply and total combined storage TCS since the impl implementation of Level 4 severe water restrictions on the 28th of January 2020. Two, move from level four to level three water restrictions from Sunday the 1st of March 2020 for residential use. Three, not implement level four severe water restrictions for commercial users from the 25th of February 2020 as previously resolved by council on the 22nd of January 2020, but move from level four to level three water restrictions from Sunday the 1st of March 2020 for commercial users. Continue to disable all public outdoor showers, fish cleaning tables and boat cleaning areas until the 1st of April 2020. And five, thank the community for their commitment to reducing our use 
during this difficult period of water restrictions. Could I have a seconder? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. All right, um, I'll, I'll speak to this as to why I've raised this is because um, we, we have had significant rainfall and our community is seeing councils around us uh, start to reduce their water restrictions. Um, yes, they do have different methods and some have catchments, some have bores, um, and, and that is what's going on. It, the, the community can't help but look to other areas and question what, what are we doing in our area. Um, the trigger is at 45%. We are close to that now and um, given the, the settlement of the river, we could be pumping within the next week. Uh, it will be high volume pumping and we'll be able to, um, I believe, reach uh, that figure uh, fairly quickly. The thing is, uh, the upper end of the trigger is 48%, which is the staff's recommendation and that's what's suggested. And while I respect that that's the staff, staff's recommendation, our community has done its utmost and we have seen a 16% reduction. And, and that is figures that's been provided to, to us through the staff. Um, everyone's done a stellar job and I think through the whole uh, situation of the fires, the droughts and now the floods, um, people have a, a greater appreciation for the, um, the value of water and how important it is to us that it is a finite commodity, not an infinite one. I, I don't think we, we need to um, be punitive with the way that we do our water restrictions. I, um, I understand that the um, Bureau of Meteorology are taking an each way bet on this one and saying there's a 50-50 chance um, that we could have rainfall or, or you know we might have a drier spell. I think that given uh, the situation as it stands, um, there's, a, there's a possibility to relax and we're talking level three water restrictions here. We've had businesses do um, re reduction plans for their use of water for business um, and they've put effort into that and that, that themselves I believe has been an educational process for them. The community's gone on an educational journey with us and, um, and I think having the public outdoor showers disabled and till the 1st of April, which is another month away, that will uh, provide council um, some comfort, knowing that we're not going to have wastage out there in our, um, in our public spaces. So for that reason, um, I'm, I'm putting this motion to uh, my fellow councillors and requesting that they consider this and, um, and also support it on behalf of our community. If anyone wishes to speak to the motion in opposition, or Councillor Griffiths, do you wish to speak in support of it? No. Okay, thank you. In opposition? Thank you, Councillor Turner. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm going to speak in opposition to it, but I'd also like to foreshadow the staff recommendation as a alternative motion. Thank you. All right. Oh, I hope that works now. Um, oh, sorry, I'll just repeat what I said. I'd just like to um, I speak against it by saying I'd, I'd like to support the staff recommendation, which is based on a lot of um, research and feedback from the staff and considered thought. And I think we should keep going along with that. I think you know they, are, they have far more expertise than we do. Um, but... I'd also like to add a dot point three to the foreshadowed motion that council uh, significantly increase the frequency and scope of its communication with our community in order to heighten awareness and transparency around its water usage. Frequency and scope of communication with our community in order to heighten awareness and transparency around water, its water usage. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Turner. All right, um, so we'll move back to the motion. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Oh, yes. Madam Deputy. I'll speak briefly against it. I uh, support the notion uh, that uh, we stay on level four water restrictions. Uh, the general manager has the, has the uh, delegated authority uh, to bring it down as soon as we reach the 48%. My concern is that we have to be very careful with our water. Uh, we've, we've had an amount of rain, which is fantastic, uh, but uh, we haven't had drought breaking rain. And our, we still have uh, a very serious year ahead of us uh, where there is no guarantee of uh, sufficient rain uh, to top us up in preparation for what may again be a difficult spring and summer coming up. Uh, I advocate caution here. Thank you, Madam Deputy Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, y yes, I'd also like to speak against it, but I'm going to concentrate on just one aspect of it, and that is uh, very consistent with what um, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor said. One year ago, on, sorry, on page 175, there's a, there's, a, there's a chart, which we've all seen, it's in the report, which showed that on the 13th of February 2019, so close as damn it a year ago, we had 75.6% capacity. That's what we're at. And yet, later in the year, and in the beginning of this year, we're in a dire situation that got us into level four, and we were also talking about emergency beyond that if, if it was warranted. So right now, we are at 41% or thereabouts. I mean, it, I don't think we've been able to extract the last few days because the, the, the water has been too turgid. So um, I'd, I'd, I'd love to actually lift these restrictions. My heart would, would, would love it to happen. You know, my garden, all the rest of it, less, 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 quite well watered at the moment. But logic says, and this is the staff report, is full of this logic. If we, 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 we actually, it's too uncertain. The Weather Bureau don't, don't know themselves. It could go this way, it could that way. In two weeks' time, you could be a genius, you know, and we've had another bucket. How do you bucket. know I'm not already? You <laughs> may well be. Yeah, I won't comment on that. We'll Thank let you. that one go through. But in two weeks' time, Councillor Turner and those who support the first trade motion, should it get up, should it get to that, could appear geniuses. We don't know. And I believe that the staff uh, recommendation, based on the facts, is correct. And so I uh, am not able to accept the motion as it's put for that, that reason and that reason alone, apart from all the rest. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hawkins. Councillor Alley. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, look, I, uh, where are we? Um, I uh, won't be supporting the motion and will instead favour the, uh, the foreshadowed motion from uh, Councillor Turner. Um, look, at, at this stage, uh, we need some level-headed certainty with regard to this. Um, it is not helpful to the community to be going in and out of, uh, of uh, level three back to level four, level three back to level four. Um, is to, to wait until we get to the level of 48% puts us in a, in a significantly better position than we would otherwise. I suspect we're probably only talking about one or two weeks difference between, I guess, what you're proposing, Madam Mayor, and, and what, what, I, what I hope will happen, uh, you know, if, if uh, uh, under the foreshadowed motion. So um, I think it's worthwhile... Uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, restricting ourselves for another couple of weeks there. Um, OK, thank you for that, Councillor Ali. Um, anyone else wish to speak to? No, I just want to ask you a quick question. Can you tell me why you split the dates in your motion? Uh, certainly. Uh, that was to give us a, another month for the outdoor showers. Uh, so uh, our... our uh, Pumping would increase, our dam levels would increase. That would just give us another month and if we kept it all, all the outdoor disabled. So, um, and that commercial and residential actually went first. So, and that showed the community commitment to council itself, you know, stepping up to the plate and reducing our, our own use. Um, 
But in saying that, I will I will use my right of reply. Um, yes, we could be we could be uh, the general manager could be using his discretion in two weeks, and I think that's um, highly probable. Um, you know, we will now, as a result of the resolution, be forcing our business community into level four water restrictions um, on the 25th of this month. So you talk about going in and out, in and out of level three and level four. Well, we haven't been in and out. We've been in and moved into the next level and then we will come back. But uh, now uh, the uncertainty begins for the business community um, because they're going to go into level four water restrictions. And uh, through this motion, that was one of the things I was hoping to avoid. Uh, level three, we must remember for residents, it's odds and evens days, and it's 10 minutes of uh, total water use. Um, but in saying that, I get a feel for the room and, uh, and uh, you know, accept that this motion probably won't be supported. So I'm not going to waste any more time on this. I'm going to put the motion to a vote. All those in favour? Thank you. Those against? Thank you. I declare the motion lost. We'll now move to Councillor Turner's foreshadow, which becomes the motion. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you. Councillor Ali, thank you. Councillor Turner, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, thank you Madam Mayor. Um, there's nothing much to say, really. I think it all, it's all fairly well identified in the report, but I also would really like to pay a lot of um, tribute to Ms Crow and her presentation. I think uh, it really highlighted some of the um, things we need to do a bit better, and um, we've had the discussion in the communications portfolio about um, ramping up some of the social media communications particularly around water, and I think that's what the community needs to do. And, and I think it's what I mentioned at the, uh, well, I know it's what I mentioned at the extraordinary meeting back in January, that we need to encourage our community, but also let them know when we need them to do more. And I think, as the Mayor said, I totally agree, the community's done a fantastic job, but I think we need to be um, letting them know that they've done a fantastic job in, in, you know, more frequently and letting them know what the situation is. And I. I do take the Mayor's point about certainty for business, but, uh, but significantly improving our communication around this will also make it easier for business to understand where Council's coming from and will make it, understand, make it easier for them to understand what they've got to do and how they fit into the overall big picture. So I think this, the staff's recommendation is sensible and it's part of the plan. They've managed the water, um, the, the, the crisis, I suppose, well over the summer and hopefully, you know, fingers crossed we're coming out of that, but I would like to, uh, you know, make sure that we do improve our communications. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Councillor Ali, would you like to speak to this? Any other councillors wish to speak to this? Councillor Levito, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll speak uh, for the motion. I think that uh, our community is looking for sensible leadership in this matter. Uh, most people I've spoken to absolutely accept that this isn't over yet. They absolutely loved the rain we had, but know that we've got many, many rivers to cross yet and many mountains to climb. I do not want to be in a position where we squander this. Uh, we may not be going back to level three in three weeks or two weeks. We may be continuing this on right through the winter to get to a stage where we've got good levels back in our dam, back to 100% um, as, you know, as soon as possible. But I, I don't think we should uh, um, be frivolous about this. I mean, OK, we got a bit of rain. One of the biggest problems, I would suspect, if you talk to water policy makers all through Australia and the world, is that when there's a crisis, everyone sticks together, everyone looks at how they can save water, what we can do. The minute it rains, they forget about it. Let's not fall into that trap tonight. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Levito. Any other comments on this? No? Thank you. I'll put the motion to the... Oh, right of reply, Councillor Turner. Thank you. Put the motion to the vote then, all those in favour? Thank you, those against? Thank you, that would be Councillor Griffiths and myself. Declare the motion carried, thank you very much. Um, we'll now move on to item number 1304. Thank you. 
and I believe um, you have a motion you'd like to move, Councillor Alley. Yes, I do. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. We'll just wait till it's on the screen and then I'll read it. Uh, move that Council note the information included in the Water Supply Security Update Report. Uh, number two, with regards to Project 2, identified in this report and pursuant to Section 55.3.1 of the Local Government Act 1993, endorse the direct engagement of the required suppliers, fabricators and installers uh, due to the water supply security risks outlined in this report, resulting in extenuating circumstances for the upgrade of the Warhope Water Treatment Plant with DuPont Australia Proprietary Limited and Membrane Systems Australia Proprietary Limited being the two main suppliers. Number three, with regard to point three, stage one identified in this report and pursuant to section 55.3a of the Local Government Act, note the direct engagement of a consultant through Local Government Procurement Professional Services Panel LGP 1208-3 to undertake the feasibility and investigation works for a seawater reverse osmosis desalination plant. With regards to recycled water, request the General Manager A, write to the New South Wales Minister for Water, uh, Honorary uh, Melinda Pavey MP and Minister for Health Honorary Brad Hazard MP asking for information on the New South Wales Government's policy direction relating to supplementing drinking water supplies with recycled water and B, write to the New South Wales Water Directorate requesting the latest research and, and information on supplementing drinking water supplies with recycled water and point five, request the General Manager to bring further water security uh, update reports to the May 2020 and August 2020 meetings of Council. Thank you, um, Councillor Ali. Do we have a seconder for that? Thank you. Councillor Hawkins, thank you. Can we just roll to the end when you're done there, Brian? Press the General Manager for the water supply security. Is that in here at all? No, it's... Water supply security updates to the May 2020 and August 2020. Okay, thank you. Are you wishing to propose an amendment? Yes? We have an amendment. Thank you from Councillor Griffiths. Um, I'd like to remove points two and three and amend point eight. Sorry, of the original motion? Yes. Original. Sorry. That's a bit confusing. Two and three. And point eight. Remove detailed design and approvals process with feasibility and investigation work. Yep, eight. So um, from second line, it'll be roughly which says um, detailed design and approvals process <coughs> and include feasibility and investigation work. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. Remove. Back, backspace, keep going. Back to detailed. So if you can just read. Yeah, um, feasibility and investigation work. If you could type that in there. And get rid of detailed. Yeah, and, and, and. And get rid of the word detailed in the same line at the beginning. And, and is um, in replacement of four, feasibility and investigation work. Is that what you're saying, Councillor Griffiths? Yes. 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 So. Investigation work and 
and what was after it's investigation fine, follows, as usual. and a decision on whether to yep. proceed to construction of the seawater with this. Question, Sorry, I just need to seek some clarification. So, yeah. through you, Madam Mayor, what, what are we actually stating? That requests the GM report back to a future council meeting outlining the outcomes of the feasibility investigation work and a decision on whether to proceed. I think the decision is council's. It's not for the general manager to bring. I'm, I'm a bit confused by that okay, wording. Can I explain it? Mm. Maybe you can reword point eight mm -hmm. or whatever that Correct is now. Um, what it comes from is... I was looking for an attachment, there is no attachment. So when I'm reading this report, um, I actually can't understand how we get from having engaged a specialist consultant to give us investigation work and feasibility of the proposal, and then in the same breath we're actually going out there saying, well, we're just going to go ahead and actually go ahead and do all the feasibility and design work straight away right, when we right. haven't actually had yet. Yeah. The information, even if we bring it back to the next meeting, to say, well, should we have taken the first step to get to the second step, when it also says here there'll be potential significant capital investment required. All right, so through you, Madam Mayor, perhaps it has to state after investigation work uh, for council to give consideration to whether mm. to proceed. Yes, rather to construction. Than, yeah, or to proceed, yes, With to construction. Design. Yeah. Well, um, or even to proceed, that'll do it. Yeah, to proceed. Yes, full stop. Full stop. Yep. And, and sorry, just for, for my Excuse understanding, me. what was the other? I need to. Did so you you've only got three points. You, you're only having three points. And, and sorry, I'm going to be pedantic again. Three, Madam Mayor. So on whether to proceed, it probably we need to state what, because otherwise this part of the resolution doesn't talk to anything. Um, with a seawater reverse osmosis. So just yep. a with. With construction, yeah, yeah instead of with, yeah, instead of to with. With uh. Yep. Yeah, just uh, rather than construction, yeah. Uh, no, just uh. with construction. Sorry, I'm trying to clarify. Council may want several stages before you just jump to construction. So uh, to, give, to give council consideration on whether to proceed with a seawater reverse osmosis. We'll, we'll do it for a staff resolution point of view and what we can implement. And we were still including point four, five, and six, mm -hmm. seven. They were still in there. Cool. So what about number one? Yes, one was Note there. the information. Yeah, it was take out points so two, two, two and three, three, basically, and modify eight, because I think the rest are still valid. Uh, so out two and three, yeah, no, yeah. No, which is just... Yeah. Doing the Sorry, um, Councillor Griffiths, Councillor Hawkins has a question. It might be helpful. Through, uh, through uh, you, a question to the General Manager. Um, certainly one of the reasons that I uh, was very happy to support the foreshadowed motion, uh, sorry, the original amendment, I should say, was that there are reports... The huh? The original motion, yeah. Original motion. We okay. understand. Reports in May and then in August and it, either of the, and presumably that, that would roll on into the future, but we don't know. So these kind of issues will come before council on multiple occasions, certainly those two occasions, which is in the term of this Correct. council. So that's, I, I think it might address the concerns, Councillor Griffiths, that you're trying to go into. It'll come up anyway, it's covered. That's my and, understanding. And, and truly, point of order, we're supposed to get the mover of the motion mm to have the opportunity Good. to speak to their motion before an amendment is brought forward. I am completely confused by mm. what has been brought up as an amendment. Thank you, Madam, Madam Deputy, for your input there. So we will go, we will go back to Councillor Ali, who has moved this original motion, and we might be able to flesh out Yes, uh, look, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The, uh, I'll, look, I'll speak to my original motion. Thank you. Um, there, there are a number of projects identified within the report. Um, there, there was a, the, the project number one related to the flocculation of the uh, water supply as a fil filtration mechanism as a, as a short-term measure. Um, and that is not recommend, and, and that was not recommended either in the staff recommendation or in or in my proposed 
uh, the motion that, uh, that I have before you. Um, with regards to uh, project number two, uh, which was the uh, upgrade of the Warhope water treatment plant. Again, uh, look, the, the motion that, that I bring before you uh, supports that we proceed with that upgrade. With regard to project three, the staff recommendation was to, uh, to do both the feasibility study and the detailed design. My motion is that we will do the feasibility study and bring a report back to council, which I which I would expect to you know will be updated on in the in the uh, in the May and August time frame as to the progress of that, and at that particular point in time we may choose to, to move on to a detailed design or we may choose not to. Um, uh, we, we look. I believe it's uh, appropriate that we we look at. We look seriously at the option of desalination. We want to put a toe in the water, not necessarily the whole foot, and certainly don't want to plunge into it yet. Um, uh, so, so by doing the feasibility study, at the end of that, we will know we will know whether whether it is feasible. We'll know the the, the broad parameters, and 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 uh, you know perhaps have have a much better idea as to uh, to how deep that particular water is. So, uh, so. Uh, that, that's basically the basis of the, uh, the, uh, the, the motion that I bring you. Um, uh, also, with regards to recycled water, again, I'm just picking up the words that came out of the staff recommendation, is to, is to make further inquiries with, uh, with uh, the relevant departments and the water di directorate to determine the best way forward with regard to that. So we, we work on the background with that as well. And again, um, Water security is a very important issue at the moment, something we need to take very, very seriously, and uh, um, you know, which is which is why I'm asking for an update report in both May and in August, three months apart. After that, we'll 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 uh, we'll, we'll tread the water and work out, uh, <laughs> you know, whether whether we want three monthly, six monthly, or, or annual reports after that. But basically, for the for the next six months, I believe it's appropriate that we get a report in three months and in six months. Thank you, Councillor Ali. All right, Councillor Hawkins. This will be very brief. What this does, it gets it, the the, the uh, whole thing into digestible chunks that make sense with some checkpoints. Two specific ones that staff can work to, it'll come back to council for the transparency that we, uh, and, and, and factual uh, uh, input that we heard so much about earlier on. So I, that's why I'm happy to um, support this motion. Okay, thank you. So we'll just go back to the amendment. Yeah, no. Can we, well, can we, can we get this can clear? Ask a, can I ask a question, please, please Peter Raleigh? Essentially, what you've got here is taking out those two points that I've actually made an amendment for. So essentially, we have the same thing. So I think I can withdraw my amendment. OK, great. Fantastic. Thank you. Excellent. Well done, <laughs> Councillor Griffiths. <laughs> All right. So we have had Councillor Ali, Councillor Hawkins speak to this. Do we have any uh, other councillors that wish to speak to this motion, Madam Deputy? really would like to ask a question to clarify uh, with uh, Director Bilsma, firstly. So we've got, um, we're noting the report. So um, this is, um, uh, with your approval, Madam Mayor, I just want to go through and clarify what it is that we're saying here. Thank you. Uh, so number one, we're simply noting the report. So can we roll back from? Uh, number two, we are to, uh, clause two, we are referring to uh, how we are going to go about, uh, so we're going to engage the required suppliers, fabricators and installers uh, to upgrade the Warhope treatment plant so that uh, it delivers megalitres 27. Through you, Mr. General Manager, uh, 21. 21. So um, a, a significantly increased volume of water is able to be filtered 
through the water treatment plan. I'll come back to a question with you. So you have something to add there? Uh, yes, through you, Mr General Manager. Currently six megalitres per... So six to 21, that's quite a significant change. Uh, then if we can go down to clause three. So clause three is talking about uh, the uh, seawater reverse osmosis desalination plant project. And we are going to directly engage a consultant through the procurement services panel to undertake just the feasibility and investigation works for the seawater reverse osmosis. I don't think you need to confirm that. That's quite clear. Uh, then four, we're going to make some inquiries uh, to the relevant MPs. If we can just go down a little bit there, Bron, for, for, to allow us to see four. So we're going to make some inquiries about um, uh, um, how we might use recycled water, perhaps directly to supplement drinking water. That's a big, big issue, but nevertheless, we're going to inquire. The purpose here simply is to inquire uh, as to their, their opinion. Again, through you, Mr General Manager, yes, to understand the pathway to um, progress that through the relevant departments and so forth. Thank you. And the final clause is so that we get an update on <coughs> the progress of the upgrade of the filtration at Warhope and a progress on just the uh, feasibility investigation for the osmosis <coughs> plant. So. Uh, Councillor Griffiths, I think you've indicated that this is pretty much saying what you were intending to say. Yep. Um, thank you. I think I've said enough. I don't need to... That was to clarify where we were going, but um, no. I certainly support it. Um, thank you so much, Madam Deputy. Could I just um, ask a question? Um, and you may have to refer it, but to you, Mr General Manager, as far as the reverse osmosis desalination plan to undertake feasibility and investigation works. Sounds to me like we're going to be spending some money here. Yes. Um, I do note that we're talking with detailed design and investiga investigation costs are in the order of three million. Um, so given that we're not looking at detailed design and we're just looking at the feasibility and the investigation costs, what sort of dollars are we talking uh, about here? Well, that's on page 187 of the report. Project three, stage one is $500,000. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Sorry, what page was that on? Uh, 187. Oh, okay. In the Just in the middle somewhere. Thank you. Ah, oh, sorry. You're right. Yeah, I missed that. All righty then, so we're talking half a million dollars. Okay. Thank you for that. Yes. Um, Councillor Griffiths. Just a question through you to the director. Um, could you tell me, please, whether this current proposal actually has the potential to actually service up the valley? In other words, how will is this going to cover the whole area, or are we actually talking sort of areas that are more specific? Can you sort of enlighten us on that, please? The diesel plant? No, just in general, there's solutions here that we're proposing and options, but how many options will we have that is going to service the whole valley? Is there anything in that in the line? down the path or not? Through you, Mr General Manager, the, um, the options or, or uh, projects proposed um, through the report um, do have a primary focus on our bulk supply scheme, mm -hmm. um, obviously with the current situation and ins ensuring water security for the bulk um, users of, of water in the local government area. However, their there is um, reference, you will note, to um, the exploration of potential uh, bores in mm -hmm. the area and what they may be able to yield and service other parts of, of the local government area as well. Mm. Um, I have a question off the back of uh, Councillor Griffith's question. So the desal plant is predominantly for the purposes of Port Macquarie? Again, through you, Mr General Manager, um, the desalination plant would look to supplement the Port bulk Macquarie. water supply. So you refer to bulk water supply, you talk about as in Port Macquarie? Yeah. The, the total, two dams. 
current current assum- reservoirs. Yeah, current assumptions are that that would need to be stored somewhere once um, going once the water has been through a desalination process. One of the storage points would be one of the existing dams. Which the entire LGA. Yeah. Right. Okay. Which, which are part of the bulk water supply. Okay. Thank you. All right. So where are we? Sorry, Sorry. just back. All right. Question. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Um, just a qu quick question of the general manager. Does this uh, resolution give you enough scope to apply for any grants that may be available for doing this kind of stuff in the current climate? Broadly, thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor. Whilst it doesn't state it, yes, it would. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, to the general manager, and you may have to refer to uh, Director Bilsma, why is there no uh, discussion about building a new dam up in the valleys? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, that, and I will throw to Director Bilsma in one moment, I'm sure, but uh, that will form part of our integrated water cycle management planning that's being done at the moment. We can't randomly talk to that without doing that body of work. So I think you'll find within the next 12 months there'll be some discussion around that through the IWCM. Correct? Through you, Mr General Manager. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Okay. Given um, off the back of what Councillor Turner has said, we're, we're fully aware that the uh, Deputy Premier, John Barillaro, uh, suggests that there is water, uh, there is money sure. for building new dams mm. for water, given the current drought that we've been through. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, absolutely we're aware of that, but there are people in this room vastly more experienced in water than I, and uh, we would we would start a process of many years, I would suggest, if we were even making a decision today on a new dam, so okay. that funding may not be available when we're ready. Yep, OK, then. Thank you very much. All right, any other councillors wishing to speak to this? Right of reply, Councillor Ali. Yes, uh, look, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, water, water security and our water supply, uh, we, we are inevitably talking about, uh, I guess, large sums of money involved in, in this. Uh, we often get criticised for having uh, a significant amount of money in our, in our reserves. Um, a lot of that is actually, as, as, as our report on investments will show, is actually in our, in our water fund. Um, so there is sufficient funds to, to start to address the, the long-term uh, issues. Um, having said that, this, the, I, I guess these projects in front of us are to some extent for the, the medium term. Um, five, five million dollars for project two is about broadening the pumping window. Uh, it's been reported in this meeting already that, uh, that we're currently not pumping because of the turbidity within the, uh, within the river at the moment, so we're unable to pump water. Uh, project 2 is about broadening that window so that, so that uh, we have much greater opportunity to be able to pump. Um, very, very important in terms of uh, getting to the position where we are able to lift water restrictions uh, at a sooner time after rain. Um, Project number three is desalination, uh, which is, uh, look, desalination is a way to get water when it doesn't rain, basically. Uh, we're, we're, ha having a coastal council means that we have this supply of seawater that's just off the coast. It's an opportunity that, uh, that we have because of that. Um, it's very expensive uh, to do project three, according to the report, uh, th $500,000 for the uh, feasibility, $3 million for the detailed design, and I'm not sure if the $90 million included those two numbers, but basically $90 million to do it. Um, we're not rushing into that. Um, our understanding is that the capital costs even of that are a small part of the costs because the costs just keep happening after that. So um, it's not something we want to rush into, but it's certainly something that we want to, we want to investigate clearly and carefully, bring back reports, have the discussions, discuss it with the community, and, uh, and that's what this motion is all about. Great. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Ali. I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. I'll now move to item number 11.04. And apologies that you have waited so long um, to bring this forward, Bruce. Patricia of the Honda Group, and I noticed that um, Councillor Turner has risen to 
um, provide his motion for us. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move a motion at 11.4. Let Council 1 note the January discussions with Hand Assister City Working Group and stakeholders regarding the value, cost and future direction of the Sister City relationship with Honda. Note that up to six Council delegates have been invited to Honda to attend the 30th anniversary celebrations of the Sister City relationship between Port Macquarie Hastings Council and Honda City Council, Japan, from the 17th to the 21st of April 2020. Three, grant approval for the Mayor, Peter Pinson, to travel to Honda, Japan, from 17th to the 21st of April 2020 to represent Council and attend the 30th anniversary Sister City Relationship events. Expenses related to this trip will be covered by Council. Point four, additionally grant approval for up to two other councillors to travel to Honda, Japan, from 17th to the 21st of April 2020 to represent Council and attend the 30th anniversary Sister City Relationship events with 50% of the expenses related to this trip to be covered by Council via the Councillor Conference budget and the balance to be self-funded by the councillors. Five, grant approval for Mr Bruce Hardy and Mrs Patricia Johnson to travel to Honda, Japan from 17th to 21st of April 2020 to represent Council and attend the 30th anniversary Sister City Relationship events. Expenses related to this trip are to be covered by Mr Hardy and Mrs Johnson. And point six, agree that the Mayor extend an invitation to the Mayor of Honda for a reciprocal visit to Port Macquarie also in 2020. Uh, thank you, Councillor Turner. Would you consider, just with that, um, thanking the Honda Working Group as well in your motion? Uh, by all means, Madam Mayor, yes. Um, absolutely. Just point seven. Uh, point seven, thank the, thank the um, long-standing work by the Honda Working Group. Yes. Honda Sister City Working Group. Thank you for that consideration. Uh, I'm happy to second it with a couple of small suggested changes, if that's all right, Ms. Uh, Councillor Turner. So if we go to uh, three, uh, Peter Pinson, to travel to visit Handa. Uh, Mr General Manager, I'm just being very pedantic here because you don't want to limit the travel to just the 17th to the 21st of April. Travelling to visit Handa Japan from 17th. So we're travelling at some time, but we're visiting Handa between the 17th and the 21st. And similarly, the same thing in four. So two other councillors to travel to visit Handa. And uh, Councillor Turner, I think you were. Sorry, Councillor Turner, I think you were suggesting we do three well, other councillors. Three other councillors. Three other councillors. Mm. Uh, I'd also like to suggest three other councillors, up to three other councillors, because uh, two councillors have already indicated their interest. If you would, if you would be willing to include that, Councillor Turner. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Look, I, I am. I'm just mindful that back when this um, was... You know, I, I, I've just been sort of reflecting on this. Back when this um, was first um, decided how it would be managed, having 50% per councillor was equivalent to sending one councillor. So rather than having only one other councillor able to attend, having them pay 50% each meant that two extra council, two councillors could go instead of one. So I'd, I'd probably prefer for the sake of budget pressures that we <coughs> bring it back to two. Sure. But yes, you can. can I note, Dep no. uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, that they're not named, so we can work that out. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have Madam Deputy, you've seconded that, yes. Uh, Councillor Turner, if you'd like to speak to this. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, you yourself were at the uh, Honda Working Group meeting earlier in, uh, earlier in the year, and, and a number of the councillors here were. And I think what we saw there was such an enthusiastic group of people that had such uh, glowing stories and um, of such benefit to our community about the relationship that we've had with Honda over the last 30 years. And I think um, it's, it's time that we um, actually did, you know, did our job as a, as a good um, 
could partner in this relationship and actually um, go over and and take up the kind invitation and invite them back. So I think it's very uh, a very worthwhile program that many, many people in our community have um, been touched by in really um, quite um, un unique way, unique but also, you know, understated ways. It's really, pe you know, it, it has its tentacles right through our community in different ways that we can't always um, put our finger on. So it's, um, I think it's a relationship that um, we should cultivate. Thank you. Well said, Councillor Turner. Um, Counts uh, sorry, Madam Deputy, would you like to speak to this? Nothing further to add in terms of speaking to the motion, but just to ask the general manager uh, if we need anything to specify about a significant gift. Um, we don't need the word significant in there, but we do need to cover uh, the fact that uh, a gift for the 30th anniversary uh, should be something fairly substantial. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I don't know that there's any need to resolve it. We would certainly intend to do so in any regard as we have each other time. Thank you. I just wish to bring it up so that we have it in mind. OK, thank you. Any further councillors wish to speak to this? Right of reply, Councillor Turner. Thank you. I'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you so much for waiting for so long. Um, safe travels home. You're probably looking forward to going home to a cup of tea now. All right. <laughs> Konnichiwa. All right. So we will now move back up to item number 10.01. Um, could I have someone move? Thank you, Madam Deputy. Seconded by Councillor Griffiths. Thank you. Would you like to speak to this, Madam no, Deputy? Councillor Griffiths, any councillor? Put the motion to the vote then, all those in favour? I see none against, declare the motion carried, thank you. Item number 10.02, um, thank you, I'm happy to move this. Thank you, seconded by Madam Deputy. Okay. Uh, anyone wishing to speak to this? I think it speaks for itself. Um, put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Uh, see none against. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. I note uh, Councillor Ali is out of the room at this time. We'll now move on to item number 10.03. I just want to make um, a change, an amendment to the motion which is um, that Council 1 note the allocations from the mayoral discretionary fund for the period 28th of November 2019 to the 5th of February 2020 inclusive. Number 2 note the expenditure was for a floral tribute for the funeral of the late Sylvia Arnett. And 3 note at the time of her passing Sylvia Arnett was the oldest resident of Port Macquarie aged 108 years missing her 109th birthday by 3 months. What a legend Sylvia Arnett was, and um, our condolences naturally go to her family. So could I have someone second that by Councillor Dixon? Thank you. And um, mm. I'd, I'd just like to say that um, I had the absolute remarkable opportunity t to meet Sylvia on her 108th birthday. I had never in my life met anyone that old before. I can imagine what it's like for little children when they meet someone of my age, like 50, and they go, wow, that person's so old. Um, Sylvia was just amazing for her age. And to miss it by three months for 109th, that's a little sad, but she obviously had a great life. Um, so I'll put that motion to the vote, unless uh, Councillor Dixon want to say something? Amazing, it is amazing. I think we all agree. Um, all those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Item number 10.04. Um, report on the 2019 National Local Roads and Transport Congress. Um, moved by Councillor Griffiths and seconded by Councillor Hawkins. Councillor Griffiths. Wow, actually it was more informative and better than I actually thought it was ever going to be, to be honest. I thought it was going to be quite boring. <laughs> but actually it was um, very future focused actually. Um, and one of the things that did come through was also related to local government was that 
66% of fatalities occur on local roads. They are also directing funding towards regional road areas as well, whether that's related to the fatalities, I don't know, but regardless, they're looking at management and maintenance practices. Um, they'll be doing an audit of infrastructure gaps as well. Future technology was quite interesting. It was very much the focus on where it's going and what's going to happen and how vehicles, transport and energy all interrelate. So with transport, they were actually talking about not using as much in the way of vehicles. It was more about ride sharing. In other words, a vehicle will be owned by multiple people or you know, you'll pay to actually have a percentage of a vehicle. So there was a lot of things that were brought way out there. They were talking about having parking that was automated so that you would actually save 60% in your parking spaces. So in other words, you just step out of your car and your car would place itself. Um, there was also the driverless vehicles, which they're already trialling. Um, also drones, which was actually very interesting. They're a long way forward on using drones. They were, I liked that part. It was very good. So instead of having people actually have to go to site and actually try to manually do jobs, the drones would get down to one millimetre accuracy where they could actually just identify whether it was a dam size, whether it was to do with, you know, say you were saying your depth, you would know exactly what the depth was on your dam or what you had as a pile of material. They also used it as safety purposes. So in other words, um, you know, just simple things like maintenance of buildings. So your drone would go over and actually do your inspections instead of have to climb ladders. So there was lots of things that were of benefit in that field. Um, there was also to do with um, vehicle management. So in other words, what would do was look at idle times on vehicles. So therefore, if your vehicles were idling for length, greater length of time, they're basically saying there was potential there to use less fuels. So in other words, another you know, good positive initiative. It was also to do with airport management and maintenance and safety. So there's lots of good things that are coming out from that. The other thing that I put in was the point two, but that was actually relating to equity. Part of what I think we need to be looking at is when we're talking about our energy strategies is how one thing offsets another, which is similar to what Councillor Vito said initially. If we're not talking about fossil fuels, it all comes down to affordability to pay for a service. If a service doesn't have enough people paying for that service, and that service potentially can rise. So in other words, if we, the actions that we take as part of our energy strategies or other strategies that connect together, how does that impact on our, our community? So in other words, if we're talking about saying, I don't know, for example, OK, everything's going to have, be an electric car, what happens to those people who are then disadvantaged, who can't afford to buy the electric car? Are they going to be the people left on a grid or a network or with fuel or whatever that energy source is? unable to actually pay. So that's really the point I was trying to make by point two. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Councillor Griffiths. Sounds like it was um, riveting. very interesting. Riveting, in your words. Um, it, Councillor Hawkins, would you like to add to that? Good report and useful information, and thank you. Excellent. Any other Comments from councillors? Thank you, Madam Deputy. Um, I have a uh, uh, question uh, to the general manager, but I would like to also speak a little bit to it and say, as I said to you earlier, that was a great report and a really good uh, presentation just now. And uh, yeah, they can be really exciting, can't they, those, uh, those kind of conferences? So glad you had a great time and you learnt stuff. Uh, Mr General Manager, Give future consideration to the benefits, equity and impacts of technology and infrastructure development on the community. Have you got any ideas about how you might develop this or is this going to be an evolving thing that we can expect some insight from you in future times? Through you, Madam Mayor, a deep insight now. Um, it's not something that we're going to be able to do overnight, obviously, but I would suggest that when we're drafting our regional infrastructure transport strategy, if I've got the name of that, integrated transport strategy, sorry, our regional integrated transport strategy, that things like this would be a part of the considerations, not only through the development of that strategy, but as outcomes over, over, over time, I guess, of that strategy. That's really the avenue I would suggest, unless Director bilson has got nothing else to add to that, but that the RITS, as we call it, the Regional Integrated Transport Strategy, is the avenue to address some of those issues. Yeah. And, and presumably, yeah. Mr Pass General issue. Manager, uh, this could also be an issue that's uh, uh, considered by the Port Macquarie Transport Network, CCC. Uh, well, through you, Madam Mayor, they will be a part of the Regional Integrated Transport Strategy uh, consultation and development in any regard, yes. 
Um, I just have a question um, to you, Mr General Manager, in regards to attendance of these sorts of uh, events as to why why staff aren't going along to it in our infrastructure division. I think um, it's fantastic, don't get me wrong. I think it's absolutely wonderful that a councillor attends, but um, I would definitely like to see a staff member or two attend these sorts of things because when we open our minds up and, and rub shoulders with different people outside of our networks, amazing things happen yeah. and, um, you know, yeah. we, we gain different knowledge. Oh, through you, Madam Mayor, there's several issues there. Um, staff are going to conferences quite regularly anyway. Uh, not necessarily this one. Um, timing is an issue. We had bushfires at this particular point in time, so that we were not focused on anything other than that. Um, so we and we have reasonably tightly constrained budgets as well. So we're very selective. Noting that I alone would probably get five or ten requests to attend a conference every week, as I'm sure everyone else in this room does. So it's very uh, we have to be very careful about which ones we target. And I do know, for instance, three of our water team were away not long ago at another one of these sorts of uh, sessions only a few weeks back. Good to know. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. And thank you again for the report, Councillor Griffiths. That was great. If nobody else wishes to speak to this, I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Um, so off the back of that, we have item number 10.05, uh, which I shall move. Um, it is the report on women in local government government leadership masterclass. Seconded, thank you, by Councillor Griffiths. It isn't as riveting as what your local roads conference was, and, and roads are a passion of mine, so I would have um, enjoyed that one too, I'm sure. But um, leading and learning how to lead to the best of my ability in this role as, uh, as mayor is, um, is something that uh, I choose to uh, broaden my horizons on and in order to do that I attend um, personal development opportunities and this was one of them. So it was great to see um, a lot of women in senior leadership um, in local government and uh, I was the only mayor there which was a little bit disappointing so but I did see that a lot of women were in directors roles and uh, you know, having two female directors, um, strong leadership roles in the organisation, it was good to see other directors actually going to these sorts of masterclasses. Um, and, you know, the flavour of the of the, the duration of the time there was uh, basically speaking about equity and the importance of equity in any organisation, whether you be male or female, and uh, the respect that's generated as a result of that equity. So um, that's something that um, I'm, I'm pleased to uh, foster as far as uh, leadership is concerned. And uh, I just put this for councillors to note the report. Thank Question you. Yes. Uh, question for the General Manager. Um, Mr General Manager, with these kinds of things, and I noted with Councillor Griffiths, um, the report on Councillor Griffiths, the original motion where Council granted approval wasn't attached, which is the normal customary yeah. thing. So I'm not sure why that wasn't there, but I couldn't find the original, an original motion. I don't recall one where the Mayor was granted approval to attend this. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, the mayor doesn't necessarily need approval. There's a there's separate funding, and a sign off that I can give to a, attend these things for the mayor. I have, I'm a bit vague on the policy name, but I could come back on that. I'm not sure about the question you just asked about Councillor Griffith's original motion, which did exist actually earlier last year. Supplementary question, Madam Mayor. The um the payment of expenses and for, and uh, what is it called? The payment of expenses. Policy. And provision of facilities to councillors' policy said it does, you know, it does apply to the mayor, mm. um, and that it needs to be nominated by council or self-nominate through resolution duly passed in an open session of a council meeting. If the mayor is the nominated councillor, if it can't get to a council meeting, then the deputy mayor and general manager may approve the attendance of the mayor. Yes. So that's what I was referring to, yes. Um, so that, re and I checked with the Deputy Mayor and she didn't have any knowledge of that. And But then it says, if approval is given under the above delegated authority, all councillors will be notified that the authority has been exercised. Look, I'll take that on notice and check with um, the Mayor's EA as to where we got to on that. I'd, I'd have to 
from well, the it, sentiment. And it also highlights the ones the Mayor self-reported back in September as well. So yep. there's quite, probably quite a few things that haven't been, been granted the approval resolution. by Council. Yeah. I'll, I'll take that on notice back through in mm. administration. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Um, sorry, Councillor Ali, if I could just ask a question to Councillor Turner off the back of that. Um, given that it is a leadership role um, and given that I'm the first woman to sit in this chair, uh, would you not think it's prudent that I, I avail myself of every opportunity to improve on my leadership? Um, well, that goes without saying, Madam Mayor, but that's not the point. The point is that Council has its own policies and procedures and as councillors, the community ab, ab, you know, entrusts us and ab, make, to actually make sure that they're followed. Yes. Oh, look, I totally agree. Would you have um, supported me attending these? personal development courses? Well, I think that it's on a case-by-case -case basis to be granted approval by council at the appropriate time. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ali. Oh, look, I just wanted to clarify uh, a, a point there, and that is... Uh, this one. I just wanted to clarify a point there that uh, on the council meeting on the 21st of August, <laughs> Uh, last year, we resolved that uh, councillor, that council grant approval to councillor, councillor Sharon Griffiths to attend the 2019 National Local Roads and Transport Congress. And I that. Yep. Yep. Thank you. All right. Is there any further discussion with this? No. I put the motion to the vote. Then, all those in favour. Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Item number 10.06. Um, could I have someone move? Thank you. Mo moved by Councillor Ali, seconded by Councillor Griffiths. Thank you. Any discussion for this, councillors? No. Thank you. Put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Declare the motion carried. Item 10.07, legal fees. Thank you, Madam Deputy, seconded by Councillor Griffiths. Madam Deputy, Councillor Griffiths, any councillors? Put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? See none against. Thank you. I declare the motion carried. Item 10.08. Someone to move the... Thank you. Councillor Griffiths. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Ali, thank you. Any discussion on this, please? Councillors? No? Thank you. I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? See none against. Declare the motion carried. Item 10... 10.09. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Seconded by Councillor Griffiths. No discussion. Councillors, put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Item 10.10. .10. Could I have uh, someone move? Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. Seconded by Councillor Ali. Thank you. I just noticed that um, Councillor Hawkins is just leaving the room for a moment. Any discussion on this? Thank you. No? Put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Item number 10.11. Could I have move. someone move that? Thank you, Councillor, uh, Madam Deputy, sorry. And seconded by Councillor Griffiths. Thank you. Is there any discussion on this, Councillors? Thank you. Put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? See none against. Declare the motion carried. Item number 10.12. Could I have someone move? Thank you. Councillors, could I, could I have someone move this? Thank you, Councillor Turner, and seconded by Councillor Alley. Councillor Turner, would you like to speak to this? Uh, no. Councillor Alley? Would any councillor like to speak to the recommendations? No? I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? See none against. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Item 10.13. Could I have someone move the recommendation? Can move. Councillor Dixon, thank you. Seconded by Madam Deputy. Councillor Dixon, would you like to speak to this? Yes, I would. I knew you would. Thank you. <laughs> Wake us all up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm going to push a really old barrow mm. here. 
I don't know, it's creaking for sure. It keeps coming back, and, and I think this question really needs to be delved into. Um, we we're talking about standards. Uh, so th through you, um, Mr. General Manager, sure, through to one of the directors. On page 93 of the report, 93, yeah, we talk about our customer call centre, and we talk about a set target of 75% of calls from our community to council being answered in the first um, being answered in the first 20 seconds of the call. Now, council are doing a great job at the moment, based on this report, at 93% being answered in that time in that so timeline. Can I just tell you one sure. thing? What report are you talking about? I think we're on a different report. This is the DG. This is digital. Am I on it? No, you're on the OP report. You're on the next item, I think. I will push my barrow on the next item. Good. Day. Thank you. I was wondering. Yeah. Thank you. All right, but it was it was oh, it now was you know worth watching. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thank you for moving it anyway, yeah. Councillor Dixon. <laughs> Would any councillors like to speak to this other than Councillor Dixon? No. no? Oh, I'll put the motion to the vote. Then all those in favour, see none against, declare the motion carried. Councillor Dixon, I know you want to move yeah. this. No, I, I don't want to move it. I'd like to move this. Thank you. <laughs> and I'd like to second it. Are you moving? No. I need a mover. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. And I'll second. Thank you. Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and let me guess, you're pushing a barrow. I am pushing a barrow, yes. Okay. A really old one, a very squeaky one. Um, so, on page 93 of the report... <laughs> It, uh, it states, and look, uh, let me just put this into perspective. First of all, council doing really well in the customer call centre here, ask, um, actually answering 93% of the calls in this reporting period um, to the set target of 75%. So they're answering calls within 20 seconds, within the first 20 seconds, the first call that comes through. I've asked this question on a number of occasions, and uh, maybe you, Mr. General Manager, one of your directors. The set target is 75%. In my mind, I'd like to firstly understand where that number comes from. I can tell you that that is not the standard out no, in the real world and that we are the biggest uh, customer service orientated business in this whole LGA and I think that standard is appalling. Mm. I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to dig deeper into this and I'd like to understand where that 75% uh, Director Sharp. Uh, through you, Mr General Manager. I'll have to dig right down into it. Uh, Councillor Dixon, however, I believe it's uh, currently adopted in our customer charter. Uh, the genesis of that, I'm not sure, uh, but has been around for some time. If I could, Madam Mayor, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, I absolutely agree. That is in the council adopted charter. That doesn't mean it's right. And, and I think one of the issues, and yes, you've been pushing that barrow for some time, we have actually just recently engaged our new group manager of uh, customer experience and communications. And, and I'm sure Director Sharp has already had many conversations with her in relation to how we lift the game and the benchmarks. <coughs> and one of the policies that we will be reviewing soon is that customer service policy, mm -hmm. which ironically I think is about 20 odd pages. Uh, so it, it in itself isn't particularly customer friendly. Mm -hmm. um, so the intent is certainly to look at ways to improve that service, even though you're right, there's an awful lot of good work being done. That benchmark is not real world at all. Um, and we do need to address it. Thank you, yeah. you Councillor Dixon. I, I would very much like to speak to uh, the delivery program and operational plan. Um, and yes, uh, Councillor Dixon, you're absolutely 100% correct. We are um, a, one of the biggest organisations here in the local government area. and. Um, Oh, look, just going through, I've got, you know, smiley faces and ticks and all sorts of highlights right throughout this. And the reason is because I went line by line by line and I looked at absolutely everything that we do. And even as the Mayor for such a short period of time coming up to my third year, I'm still absolutely amazed at what um, 
this organisation produces, actually. And yes, uh, we, we have work to do on in improving that. Um, what amazed me the most, though, was that we actually, um, you know what I'm going to say, we actually did a, completed a project that we didn't even start, which was absolutely fantastic. Genius. We are genius. I know, and I just thought that's amazing. So uh, what I wanted genius. to do is to have the opportunity for um, the likes of John Oxley, who's with us, and he, he pours over this sort of information. I just want to set the record straight. It is a typo. The Lake Cat Eye Foreshore Reserve Skate Park has not yet commenced. So everybody just hold your horses because it's coming. But I'll tell you what did, um, what did happen was a lot of wonderful uh, projects which are going to enhance the lives of people in our towns, villages and our, you know, bigger urban areas like Port Macquarie. And um, I think uh, congratulations must go to all the worker bees um, down the line that get the delivery on the ground because the decisions are made in here of the chamber and um, and it's pushed through but it's the, the guys and girls on the ground that actually make it happen. So I just wanted to congratulate everybody on what is um, a, what looks to be a really good result. So congratulations Mr GM. Councillor, oh, and that was a clap from, uh, for those in the audience watching us this evening, that was uh, John Oxley just clapping. Thank yes, you. That, thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> no, I, this is just going to add one thing briefly. In the context of the fires late in the year and the pressures on the staff, and also in the context that there were quite a lot of um, senior management vacancies in the latter part of the year, and yeah, almost all of them, I think, Mr General Manager, are now being filled, almost all of them, if not all of them. And in that context, I think it's actually, um, it's, it is a very good result. Uh, yes, there are gaps all over the place, and we all know that. And yes, we do have multi-year projects which create problems, and, and you know, there are budgeting challenges with that, and uh, we're all very well aware of those. But um, in, that, in, in the overall context, it actually is, is pretty good, even though it's got some hairs on a couple of things. So well done to the staff, actually. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Uh, would anyone else like to speak to this? No? I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Item number 1015, investments. Moved. Thank Second. you. Moved by Madam Deputy. Seconded by Councillor Hawkins. Thank you. Any councillors wishing to speak to this? Put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none again. Councillor Griffiths. Thank you. I'll just take that again. All those in favour? Councillor Griffiths? You're, you're not? No. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to... You're not opposing this one. Okay. Um, those against? <coughs> thank you. Councillor Griffiths is against. Thank you. Investments. But we don't know why. <laughs> thank you. I declare the motion carried. Item number 1017. Could I have someone move that? Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. You have a second. Thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Would you like to speak to this? No. Councillor Hawkins, would you like to speak to this? Um, I, I would, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go, so that's fine. Okay. No. Any other councillors? Put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. 1018, monthly budget review, January 2020. Thank you, Madam Deputy, seconded by Councillor Ali. I'll speak briefly to it. Uh, good to see that there's a small reduction in our deficit uh, and no doubt uh, staff are working towards that. Of course, uh, the previous item that we have, the quarterly budget review statement, uh, highlighted uh, how many areas <coughs> of our activities have been affected by the recent uh, events locally. Uh, we're down on water income, we're down on waste income, planning, etc. Uh, and uh, so all we can do really is just push forward on the on the projects that we're that we're doing. Uh, but yes, at least uh, we're down by about um, uh, two hundred thousand, I think, down on our down on our previous uh, deficit. Thank you, Madam Deputy Councillor Ali. Would any other councillor like to remark on this? 
Thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> now, I'm speaking uh, in, in, in favour of it, um, but I am noting once again, and this, this happens uh, regularly, that we're shifting um, 35 million out of this year into 28 of, I think it goes to next year, and 7.2 million of it goes into subsequent years. And we all know there'll be carryovers later on in, in addition to that, but we also know that there's carryovers from previous years that are included in that. And um, <clears throat> it's an ongoing budgeting problem. Uh, I think it's a budgeting problem as well as a doing problem um, of how we, how we budget for these large, complex, multi-year projects. And um, won't belabor the point more, but we, we've clearly got a lot of work to do to get this better. When I look at our whole budgeting process, where we are now and where we were seven years ago, uh, when I first was in this chamber as a councillor, it's really a lot, lot better. But those figures just demonstrate how much further we've still got to go. But it's an ongoing struggle. It's the, the system local government operates under as much as anything, and it's ridiculous. But we won't go to further that now. It's too late in the day. Thank you. I am for it. OK, thank you. <coughs> Councillor Hawkins, any further discussions? No? Put the motion to the vote. Hello. Put the motion to the vote. Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. All those in favour? <laughs> See none against. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. We'll move on to item number 10.19, development, activity and assessment. Could I have someone move? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dixon, seconded by Councillor Ali. <coughs> Councillor Dixon, would you like to speak to this? No, thank you, Selfie. Councillor Ali, and any councillors? No. No, I'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? See none against, declare the motion carried. Thank you. Item 1020, <coughs> grant applications. Could I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Ali, seconded by Councillor Griffiths. Councillor Ali, would you like to speak to this? Oh, uh, look, I'll, I'll just say that it's a, that it's a good report and uh, and um, I, I look forward to further instalments as we move as we move forward with this. Thank you, Councillor Ali. Question. Yes. Question. Question to the general manager. Uh, we've got this ongoing problem. Uh, mm. Sorry, I didn't note the page of the um, BCR. Uh, yeah, benefit cost ratio. Benefit cost ratio. That's it. Mm. Uh, and I note that they've they've decided to do a review of the uh, growing Correct. local economies uh, and hopefully the BC uh, rates because we, we just lose out every time. Yeah. So through is Madam, there yeah. any representation that could be made? Oh, look, through you, Madam Mayor, um, I, I would suggest that I would be surprised if growing local economies has any more money on offer for some time to come, number one. Number two, the BCR will not... Uh, well, I think the government's focus has changed somewhat. That's yeah. probably more to the point, I guess. But the benefit cost ratio issues will remain, I would suggest, with the growing local economies because it's all about um, benefit of, of the investment the government wants to make. Um, but we, are, we advocate on a very regular basis across every forum that we're in around benefit cost ratios in relation to other funding and the half a billion dollars that was announced as part of the state election last year for local roads and bridges have, in theory, we haven't quite yet seen the documentation, um, lessened the requirements for BCRs. Right, good. So we'll wait and see how that plays okay, out. Okay. Yeah. Right yeah, absolutely. Okay, fantastic. Well, if there's no further discussion, councillors, I'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? <coughs> Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Item 10.21. I have a an amendment to make, just a small one. Um, it's to insert a new four, new number four, which will move all the other numbers down, naturally, which is uh, note the recent funding announcement from member for Cowper, Pat Conahan of a grant of 416667 for further bushfire recovery assistance by the National Bushfire Recovery Agency. Happy to second that. Thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Um, 
I would just, off the back of, uh, if I could speak to that, just off the back of that, um, I guess this report demonstrates, um, following what we've just discussed about grant applications and reporting, um, we have, you would agree, Mr General Manager, received some good funding in relation to uh, the recent bushfire event that we've been through. Sadly, um, you know, we've had to experience um, a, some chaos, a level of chaos in our community to have received those funds, but we are grateful for them and I'm sure yourself and the staff um, will make decisions um, for putting that to good use, especially that million dollars. So, Councillor Hawkins. A question, uh, Madam Mayor, I'd share with yourself if I may. Mm. I've just realised that point seven, um, sorry, which is now point eight, reads um, basically update table reports at May and September. And um, I'm wondering if it should be May and August, because August, I think, is the last no, council last meeting, meeting oh, of yeah, this yep. term of council. We'll up. Yep. So, if we uh, could make that change. Yeah. Thank you. And would you like to speak to this in any further detail? Um, it will be very brief. I mean, it's terrific. Uh, we're getting um, you know, money coming from federal money, state money. Uh, we've also got our own programs and, and, and things. I'm just, um, I'm gonna be fascinated to see how all this is actually put together by the staff, because we're gonna to have to, um, some of these things have very, constrained um, deadlines where we have to do things and we have to actually not only do things, we have to submit request approvals to do some of these things, how we want to spend the money. We then have to integrate that into our operational plan and the operational plan is actually due to come before us and go out on exhibition following March. So actually, although I'm speaking with support, there's probably a question in this to the general manager, which is how the hell are you going to do all that? Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, um, I've no idea. Um, the reality is, just going back to the item a couple of, a couple of items ago, around our works program anyway, um, and yeah, it's fire, flood, storm uh, we've had, it's a challenge. And whilst it's very good to get lots of money, <coughs> this, this funding, and, and I'm not criticising the fact we've got it, but it will impact our ability to deliver what's already in the program for this year and what's actually already planned for 2021, which we get to, well, councils have been working with us on. So I, um, there are implications. It's it's all good to have. There's no debate, and some of the projects will be fabulously good, but it does impact on everything else because just because we got funding doesn't mean we found more people, um, and it's just a prioritisation shuffle. Although I will just state that part of what many councils are doing with that million dollars, and we certainly will as well. Um, is engage someone specifically to monitor and manage the myriad of product, projects that are going to come through from that. And if I could just, um, as a point of clarification, um, I accept the Mayor has made comment from Pat Conigan there about the 416,000. Um, I think it was Dr David Gillespie who was first cab off the rank, no disrespect to Pat, but in relation to the million dollar grant, uh, and the announcement was made by David and his office quite early in the piece, uh, noting that it was his seat of uh, line that effectively got most impacted by the fires mm. in the hinterland. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure whether you wanted to give consideration to uh, mentioning David in absolutely. the... Absolutely. Yes, absolutely I do. We'll make that um, change, Bronwyn, if you don't mind, to the million dollars. Um, if we could just go back... Yes. So note the receipt in January. Of one million dollar federal grant. A one million dollar federal grant announced. Yes. By uh, member, member for line. line. Yeah. Dr. Dr. David. David Gillespie. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Jeffrey. Yep. For the purpose of supporting, we we need love to be given to them all. Indeed. Is there a name attached to two hundred fifty thousand? Not yet. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I believe, Speaking Councillor Griffiths, you wish to speak to this? Yes. Um, I did a disaster resilience and recovery program a few years back. And one of the essential things they said was that while the disaster's on and they're all busy scurrying around trying to get themselves collected and all the rest of it, they're 
people are generally quite okay, but what happens after that is apparently communities start falling apart. And so what happens as part of this recovery process is people and community need to be reunited and brought back together under a common goal. So essentially they determine what it is they're going to do, which even in the case of the floods in Queensland, all they did was collect all the relics and bits and pieces from the floods and actually just create a sculpture from it. So it doesn't necessarily have to be something complicated. It could be something quite simple. Mm, that's great, Audrey. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. Um, is there any further... Yes. Um, just, I suppose, to questions to you or the general manager. The announcement by um, the member for Cowper, is that money that we can actually bank or is that... Um, are you, are you confident that that money is actually money? Through, through you, Madam Mayor. So just, yes, I'll get to that. Going back to the million dollars. So when they made that announcement uh, in January, early maybe, um, we had the money within a week in our bank account. The $416,000, so sorry, I'll go back. I, I can't quite recall the number of councils that were given a million dollars through that process originally. Um, there was another $18 million, though, at that time, early Jan, that was to be allocated to uh, LGAs in most need from a bushfire sense. Um, so that 416 grand that uh, Pat Conigan's announced is the second phase, if you like, of that sort of 18 million that was left over from that original tranche. Um, I don't think there's any doubt whatsoever that that money is actually there, and I'd be surprised if we don't actually have that in the next couple of weeks sitting in our Excellent. accounts. Yeah. Unlike no disrespect to the 250 grand from the state, but we actually have to apply for that and go through a few other hoops, as we often do, uh, as opposed to the 1.4 million, which is cash ready to go. Yeah. Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. <coughs> this is probably, a <coughs> it's another question for the general manager, it's probably a supplementary one, because I, I, I note um, certainly the million, and in one way or another, it's all these grants uh, with greater or lesser specificity talk about community resilience right. and you know in the case of the million dollars we got the money quite a while ago so there'll be an expectation you know right oh, bang bang start spending it but actually what is i've been thinking what is community resilience because what's community resilience in that community mm -hmm. might be different in that community and it might be different as councillor griffiths said you know what's required Correct. now and then resilience implies longer term um how how are you how are you suggesting we go about that? I mean, obviously there's a lot of consultation, but what's yeah. the council process to address that so that we're actually, in the end of the day, spending that money when, mm. wisely? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, a lot of the funding that's coming through, and it's not just these ones we're talking about, but there's a myriad of other funding floating around, is talking about <coughs> community resilience and, and mental health and those sorts of issues. And Councillor Griffiths is absolutely right, and we have witnessed exactly what you're talking about in the recovery meetings that we are seeing, uh, that we are holding. Uh, from when we started in November to now, there is definitely a change in the peoples, and that's, that's to be expected. Hence why we have Lifeline and other mental health people with us whenever we go and visit uh, the, the impacted communities. So in its very um, basic term in, in, in Swift McNair speak, I think community resilience is about how, the, how a community not only deals with the adverse events that they're going through, but how they recover from it. Mm. And that's, that's really what we are thinking through internally here. And most of the grants that we're speaking about here um, can be used for community resilience things. And Councillor Griffiths was absolutely right. We've, got, we've had conversations with lots of pockets of the community that have been impacted. Um, and there were several meetings this week and last week in their own communities about what would they like to see. And some of those things might just be us funding through this money, a weekly barbecue that they have at the local community hall. That's them getting together. There are some bigger, greater issues that we will deal with. Uh, we've already had some requests from Longflat and Beechwood and Belangri, I think, that um, we need some equipment locally, some things, some radios, some whatever. That's all fine, and we'll work through all of that. I think the bigger issue again is, and, and uh, this gentleman was in the crowd for a little while this evening, our new regional disaster preparedness officer that, that the Office of Emergency Management, it's all a mouthful, has placed in this region uh, will work very closely with these smaller communities because you're right, every community is different and what Upper Pattenborough might need will be different to what Belangria needs and is going to be different to what someone else needs. So um, he will work through a work program that we're working with him on 
as to what that might actually look like. And that's more about giving those communities comfort that they're actually able to prepare for a disaster. It doesn't make the resilience or the getting over the disasters any easier, but you can be better prepared and more comfortable that you've got a plan and an action. And we had a debrief just last night, uh, yesterday evening, uh, Director Bilzer and I, and others with the residents of the North Shore or a couple of residents from the North Shore following the mini tornado that was only two weeks ago. And again, part of that conversation was around what do we do better next time and how are they feeling about their evacuation points and all those sorts of things. So that's broadly what we're doing. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Mm. Councillor Turner. A uh, question um, through the General Manager to Director Sharp. Director Sharp, I noticed you got a little agitated when we changed the date from September to August. Was there a reason for that? <laughs> I didn't notice that. <laughs> through you, Madam Mayor, I was trying to communicate with the General Manager and he reacts to agitation. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, August is fine. August is fine. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Turner. Um, if I could just say off the back, oh sorry, Madam Deputy, but just off the back briefly of uh, what the general manager has shared with us all tonight, I, I was speaking on Saturday to members of Lifeline, and uh, they said their 13, 14, 15 number. Um, They've, they've got a subsequent number now um, off the back of that because people were saying, I, I, look, I, I want to talk to someone but I'm not suicidal and they're, they're thinking that this number has to do with suicide but they just want to talk through some of the feelings um, that they have. So um, I was really pleased to hear that some, um, some grant funding has come to Lifeline in order to have this new number so people can can actually contact them. So that's a wonderful thing in itself. Sorry, Madam Deputy, you wanted to say something? I just want to take this opportunity to recognise the amazing dedication of the general manager and his team, but you've been leading it, Craig, uh, in making sure that we do make contact with all of these communities. Uh, and try to get the information to them as best as possible. Uh, but uh, the fact that you've gone out, you've made it so that we go out to each of these small <coughs> communities and contact them directly on more than one occasion. Uh, and uh, so, yes, I, I would like to recognise your commitment to it and, by inference, the commitment of your team uh, to that. And, I'm, uh, look, um, I don't know what other councils are doing, uh, but uh, it's certainly your method of, of approaching this and, and indeed your commitment to the bushfire recovery meetings, which must have been a drag over these months, having to attend every week, uh, often in other places. Uh, but I, th I felt that it was necessary to just recognise that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, absolutely. If there is no further discussion on this, I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? See none against, declare the motion carried. Thank you. Item number 1022. Could I have someone move this? Thank you. Sure. Moved by Madam Deputy, seconded by Councillor Turner. Is there any discussion on this, Councillors? I have a question for the General Manager. Yes. Uh, Realising that they've uh, rejected our very reasonable notice to them that we can't do this within time, mm. uh, might it be prudent? Uh, for council to lodge uh, with uh, the department of uh, DPIE uh, by the deadline, which is uh, 1st of July. Uh, again, just an outline of what we're planning to do. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I guess we probably could. We've not really discussed that, have we? Or have we, Jeffrey? I don't want you agitated. Uh. Through you, Mr. <laughs> General Manager, um, the intention councillors is that uh, we write back to the department uh, following tonight's agenda item I had in my last correspondence with the department uh, when they were ushering me to indicate how we would meet their deadline. Um, I had indicated that we have a council resolution. I wouldn't be responding until uh, council further considered it. So I'll definitely be putting uh, whatever is resolved this evening back to the department um, and suggesting uh, just that and we'll take it from there. Yes. 
Uh, so I'm not going to change the resolution, but what I am going to suggest that we just take on board as a possibility that by the 1st of July, something goes in, I, I admit that you're going to be following up on this, but that something goes in to DPIE mm -hmm. uh, that uh, states where we're up to and where we're going, just so that we've got something that's been submitted by the deadline. Um, I'm sorry, um, Madam Deputy, I'm just looking, I recall reading about the opportunity to do just that and then review. Can you help me with that? They're not the exact words, but um, Director Sharp, there's... Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, certainly the report talks of our um, proposed process in line with the community strategic planning engagement that we're going to be doing and talking to the community, uh, drawing on information from our community plans already undertaken and uh, indeed from some of the conversations we're having around the bushfire recovery, as it turns out. So um, in reality, a majority or a lot of the engagement will have occurred uh, by or during the first six months um, of this calendar year or by the end of the financial year. So in terms of um, addressing Councillor Inderman's suggestion there, I think we'd be in a position in late June to certainly correspond with the department and say this is how far we are through the process, um, which you know, won't be a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. All right, any further discussion? Councillor Levito. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Look, I just wanted to make a comment about this report, which goes a bit beyond it, but um, one of the most troubling trends that I've observed in my time on council is this ridiculous situation where state government in particular just continues to load council up with more and more and more requirements and studies and things. And, you know, we're seeing examples of it every day. I mean, we saw t today the <coughs> shocking case of the late cat eye debacle and someone called it a, a fiasco and it is. And uh, unfortunately people are blaming council for that, but it is a shocking disaster of major proportions. And that report that Melissa Watkins put up last month or whatever with the three different strategies on the back and taking 22 months to, you know, to do something that everybody wants to do is just ridiculous. I mean, I saw it in the time that I've been working with the biocertification of the airport. The number of times that Sydney or someone, some state government bureaucrat came up with some idea to do something which resulted in massive delays, massive expense and just continually slowing everything down. Um, you know, I've, I've also seen it for example, on uh, 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 other things and some of the other projects that we've been involved in where, um, for example, they bring in the coastal SEP without any, any thought at all of the impact that would have on everyday life in regional areas and it's just your bad luck. you just got to go out and sort it out and just keep going. Um, look at the cock up we had with plans that were attached to the, uh, the uh, vegetation management. I understand we're sh shortly to have a SEP come out about koalas, which again, the maps are totally cocked up. And what will happen is they won't say, oh, sorry, we mucked that up. We'll take them all back, fix it up and do it. They'll say, you do the study, you do it, and we'll go from there. I'm reminded very much of two things. Um, the first is the famous definition of insanity. Do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And the second thing is the comment by that famous American philosopher, Forrest Gump, who said that stupid is as stupid does. I'm encouraged by the fact that we are, for the first time, I think, in my time on council, saying to this mob, sorry, we're not going to make it. We need to do it more often. And we need to be fronting these people and saying to them, this is ridiculous. There was an interesting article uh, about a month ago about the explosion of regulation throughout every state, liberal, labour, national, whatever it was. And it's just staggering. Now, it's OK when you're at the top level or you're a highly paid bureaucrat in Sydney or Brisbane or Canberra, but it is absolutely ridiculous the impact it's having on us and the impact it's having on the community. And look at the fury of the Lake Cat Eye people. Here we have something, we're all trying to find a solution, all trying to get an answer, and all these government bureaucrats are sitting there and they're passing that parcel, hoping like hell the music doesn't stop while they've got it. So you keep the music going, you know, you play the full eight minutes of American Pie or you, you do something else, so that parcel just keeps going around and around, no decision gets made. So, I mean, this is encouraging, but I suspect we've got a debacle coming 
and this is only going to get worse, and I think that in future, this is exactly what we should do. Sorry, we haven't got time to do that. We'll do it when we get around to it, and let's see what they do about it. I suspect they'll do nothing. Thank you, Councillor Levito. Any further comments of councillors? No, I'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? See none against, declare the motion carried. Item number 1101, Ref refund of uh, application fees moved. Thank you. A seconder, thank you. Seconded by Councillor Griffiths. Any discussion about this? Good on them for putting in a recycled water storage tank. I say all those in favour? See none against, declare the motion carried. Thank you. Item number 11.02, that is my notice of motion, um, which is uh, that the general manager be requested to report to council in March 2020 regarding the process cost and proposed wording to conduct a poll in conjunction with the September 2020 local government election that provides for the community to indicate whether they would like council to continue to add fluoride to the water supply or otherwise. Thank you. Madam Deputy Mayor has some amendments. Yes, thank you. Um, so, uh, this is not necessarily, yes, this is not necessarily going to be taken in. I have to, um, and I'll second that. Um, so I'm seconding the motion and I'm asking for this amendment. So it might need to be that this, and um, you've got that all there. So the change is, changes uh, um, to include, to uh, change the wording slightly in clause one, whether or not people would like council to continue to add. Um, and uh, so we can take off the or otherwise at the end of that, that point. And adding the the chemical name, so as hydrofluorosilicic acid, leaving that there to mm -hmm. the water supply. And secondly, um, so that should be received in clause two without a D on the end. Receive from councillors any other suggestions, possible follow up questions, and include those in the report referred to in item one above. If you're happy, as we discussed. Mm. Uh, yes, I, I am, but would it read better if it said um, receive any other suggestions from councillors sure. from just to make sure. it a little bit more yeah. um, yeah, grammar? From yes. Or possible yeah. questions? Yep, yep, I'm happy. Oh, you missed the boat on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy to include that. Are, are okay. You're right. totally done with that? Yep. Okay, great. And the reason for this, I'll speak to that now, um, and it does say in, in the comments, was that uh, since um, my election, I have uh, met with many different people, but predominantly um, the Citizens Against Fluoride movement in Port Macquarie, and uh, there is a... Um, a huge concern about the addition of fluoride or hydrofluorosilic acid that that is uh, that is added to our water supply in relation to health um, <coughs> concerns, not just for people of certain uh, senior years, but also for children. Um, I've done a lot of reading just to try and get my head around. Um, the balance of the concern and argument. Um, for me, being a person of my age, my, my dental health does not require fluoride. I say no to fluoride when I go to the dentist and, um, and I worry about my grandson ingesting fluoride as well as he's growing up. Given what I've read and what I, I feel, is the position I've taken. But that doesn't mean that my position is correct and it doesn't mean that the people who think fluoride is um, the A-all and end-all is, is wrong either. 
It just means that um, our community should have its say. And I am constantly, through communication, saying we want you to have your say. Tell us how you want our, our future to be in this wonderful region, you know. Get involved in engagement processes. Come to pop-ups. You know, email us. Go on websites. Facebook us. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so we're constantly sending out a message to say, tell us, tell us, tell us. And if we are to be genuine in that um, approach, then I think we have an opportunity in the 2020, in September 2020 elections, to do that for our community um, and just to gauge what it is uh, that they truly feel about that. Off the back of that, that is a whole nother um, debate. Would you agree, Madam Deputy? That's um, so. Basically, all this motion is is just about giving our community the opportunity to have its say. So, um, you know, I'd ask other councillors to have an open mind in relation to that and, and support it. Madam Deputy. I'll just reserve a right to speak until, okay. until we hear from some others. Okay, Councillor Ali. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. I've got a question for, or a couple of questions for the General Manager. Um, if, uh, if, if we proceed with this and, you know, you bring back a report in the March meeting and, yep. and Council then resolves that we will have a poll on, on, uh, along those lines, uh, the poll will occur in September. Yep. Uh, at the declaration of that poll, if there's an overwhelming number of people who would like us to cease the fluoridation of our water supply, will you be directing the staff immediately to do that or will you have to wait for a council resolution to do that? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, sadly I won't have delegation to do any of that. Uh, it would need to come to a council resolution and understand that a poll result is not binding on the council in any regard. Okay. And I believe the comments do say that. In your, in your document. Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, in terms of a council resolution, given that the Fluoridation Act requires a water supply authority uh, to continue to fluoridate um, uh, you know, until the minister directs otherwise, mm. I think is kind of roughly right. the words or, the, or the, certainly the intent of, the, intent of that legislation, um, uh, would council be able to resolve to cease fluoridation uh, without the Minister's approval? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, it's a technical question and a legal question. When Council could resolve, in theory, could resolve not to. The reality of whether we'd be allowed to not to, if that makes sense, mm. uh, is the question from the Minister's perspective and the health and so on and so forth. Okay. If, if I can ask a further question. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Look, is there any indication that uh, the Minister, uh, either under the, the current Liberal National Party um, uh, regime, no, <laughs> um, or, 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 under, or under an alternate Labor government at some stage in the future, is there any indication uh, that they would allow us to cease fluoridation? Oh, through you, Madam Mayor, and I'd throw to experts in the room, I would doubt very much whether they would give us permission to cease fluoridating at this point, but I don't know if Directors Sharp and Billsma have a different view, but I, I think it would be a... Um, we'd be pushing Councillor Dixon's barrow, I think, to try and get that uh, approved. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. OK. That's my, my personal view of where the government yes. probably is on that. Uh, through you, Mr General Manager, um, both sides of government previously, Councillor Ali, have supported fluoridation. Yeah. Back you. to the Fluoridation Act of uh, whenever it is, the 1950s. So yeah, I can't remember. I, I would consider it highly unlikely. Yes. Um, I'd like to speak against the motion, Madam Mayor. Um, sure. Look, uh, this... Strike. Look, I, I cannot support a motion that would have a poll with this sort of question because it would, as far as I can see, it would reasonably accurately measure the number of people within our community who we, who we would be disappointing. Uh, because um, I, I don't believe there is any chance that, that, uh, that, that, that the state government will allow us to cease fluoridation. And I don't believe that an incoming council is likely to, uh, 
to, to pass a resolution that would put us in breach of the uh, Fluoridation Act. So it's, 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 we might as well ask them, Holden versus Ford. Um, it's, it's not something that we can implement. All we are doing is measuring how many people we are going to disappoint. It's, I, 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 see, I see no point in it. Um, can I just ask a question on that, Councillor Ali? That's, that's your personal opinion. Uh, it is my personal opinion. Okay. That's 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 my role as a councillor to express no, no, my no. opinion I just on, to know on, was, on the floor of council. Did, did yes. that come from any any facts or figures, or was it just your opinion you were sharing? Um. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Excuse me, um, councillor Ali. Ex uh, sorry, councillor. Levino, um, thank you. It, 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 com it comes from my it comes from my experience of of, uh, of 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 looking at politics, at looking at both sides of the political spectrum on this particular issue. Both sides of politics have have for a long time supported fluoridation. Um, the health department has for a long time supported fluoridation. There's no indication that this will change. Mm. So so it's 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 based on. Um, it's, it's certainly based on a lot of historic precedent, and it is, uh, you know, and, and, and in that regard, it's an informed opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Councillor Alley. Councillor Hawkins. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to speak against it, and um, this is my personal opinion. Thank you for sharing. Uh, and the reason I'm going to speak against it is because I think every one of us around this table that votes, that's excluding the staff, the eight councillors that vote actually have a fiduciary, fiduciary responsibility to our ratepayers. And if Councillor Ali is right in his opinion, um, I happen to think that he, that he is, but it actually doesn't matter. We have a responsibility to actually spend, invest our ratepayers' funds responsibly. And I, when we're looking at something here where we are, uh, it's going to cost money, 66 odd thousand dollars. Uh, for, for one question, it's going to cost money to find out something that we can't act upon. So it, to my mind, it's actually a waste of money. The only potentially good thing from it is that we would have some hard data as to, as Councillor Ali has said, as to how many people we're going to frustrate. So I think it's a waste of money and because I think it's a waste of money, I would be opposing it. Thank you. And I hope other councillors accept that point of view. Okay, thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Is there any other discussion? Councillor Turner. I, I'm going to speak against the motion as well, Madam Mayor. I think, um, I think a poll is a very outdated way of trying to f seek feedback from, from our community. I think we've come a long way in terms of community engagement. And I actually think, you know, probably a Port News poll would probably be just as reliable. Um, because a poll is not a compulsory thing for people to, to fill out when they when they vote, so you know there's no there's no one forcing anyone to actually answer the questions, and there's no no one actually forcing them to do it truthfully and honestly, and and it uh, I just think it's a, a complete waste of time in 2020 to um, to think about um, using a very outdated method of trying to gather feedback from our community to do something about which we have no control. So I, I just think it's just a waste of everyone's time and resources. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Is there any other councillors that would like to speak to this? Thank Thanks. you, Councillor Levino. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I'll speak against the motion as well. I guess my concern is that the focus should be on getting the best councillors to do the best job on a broad range of issues. My concern about divisive issues at polls in elections is that that will become the issue. And a number of people will be elected on that issue alone when there's more important, I mean, important's probably a bad word, but there are bigger, more relevant issues to local government. I very much agree with Councillor Ali about um, setting ourselves up for failure here. Uh, you know, we already spend a lot of time at council explaining to people in very patient detail why we can't help them. And uh, that will just be another matter. So uh, that's my view. Thank you, Councillor Levito. Madam Deputy. So I'm going to speak in support of uh, the motion for the reason that I am 
very familiar with the evidence surrounding hydrofluorosilicic acid and particularly the growing evidence of uh, uh, adverse health effects. Uh, I can't in all conscience uh, vote against uh, this proposal. However, that said, oh, and I'm also aware that um, uh, MP Leslie Williams um, encouraged councils, uh, council to conduct a poll prior to the last election. Uh, it certainly is a valid, unlike Councillor Turner, I believe that it is a valid way to uh, gauge people's opinion. To say that a, um, a, a more random poll would be just as good is, is wrong. Uh, we went uh, to, in the 2000, uh, sorry, the 1999 elections, uh, we went to the community for the council election for two referendum questions and for four poll questions. And there was something like 74% of people responded to the poll question. And uh, there was considerable agreement on those uh, poll questions, plural. Uh, there was considerable agreement. I, I definitely understand that there are better ways, uh, like compulsory registration and everybody uh, having their say that way. But it is one way to get, to get an answer from people. Um, I think that um, uh, Councillor Ali's uh, notion about measuring uh, for people who will be disappointed is probably the most accurate comment. Uh, and so therefore, as, I've said to, as I said to councillors before this vote, before this issue came up, I'm not going to die in a ditch over this matter, but nevertheless, I am very well aware of the growing evidence of adverse health effects to people, and so therefore I will take every opportunity uh, to um, discourage uh, this, uh, this practice, um, which, by the way, um, the evidence shows that uh, the effect on teeth is a benefit of less than one tooth surface per person per lifetime. And there is nevertheless uh, growing evidence of adverse health effects. Uh, so I think it's, I'm just following my own conscience in this and um, I thank you for bringing it up. Thank you. Congratulations. Can I quickly speak to it? Um, no, I do support sorry. the intent of where this fluoridation motion goes to. In other words, essentially, if we could raise enough awareness or enough people that would support basically banning fluoridation within the water, essentially we would actually save ourselves money anyway. So if we could actually apply pressure on the state government and we actually could actually prove something that the community isn't in favour for it, it at least gives us some ammunition or potential to actually change this position. The reason why I'm not in favour of fluoride is essentially if you're going to provide a dosage, how do you evaluate what that dosage looks like per well, child, per well every individual? You can't yeah. really equate what that might look like. That's one of the main reasons why I don't agree with fluoridation because you can't gauge the level of dosage. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Thank you. Any further comments from councillors before I have my right of reply? Um, I'm going to actually stand up and make my right of reply because it's symbolic. Because by standing up, I'm standing up for this community, for the people who will be disappointed um, not to have the opportunity to have a poll and have their say about how they feel about um, fluoride. And our community has changed a lot since that poll was undertaken and will probably be quite shocked if this is to go ahead at just what they really do think about it. Um, what harm is there in asking our community, except for the investment of the dollars to do so, to ask them what it is that they think? And um, I don't agree with anyone that says that this is not doable because, of course, it's doable. We're the masters of our own destiny and of our own region. And we could be actually standing up as a, as a council with some backbone to actually say to the health department, um, this is not right for our community and let us prove it to you. Here's your voters who actually have something to say about this. Now, I have a, a fabulous relationship with our federal and state members, but we don't always see eye to eye on everything. 
you'll be surprised to know. And this is one of these um, matters that we don't see eye to eye on. I have a strong view on this. I didn't form it overnight. I've formed it over the last few years. I've researched this before I was even elected to see where I actually stood on it because I'd never had to think about this before. And it's amazing what a role of leadership actually does for a person when they have to actually think about what their responsibility is to the community. So I'm here to advocate and serve our community. And by, doing, by offering them something like this and then standing up to the government who makes us put this poison in the water, and might I add, overdose our dam because we do have a concentration happening within our dam, as we are advised, then I think that it's the least we can do and the least we can offer for our community. So I ask anyone who is thinking about voting against this to please, on behalf of the community, just reconsider and let them have a voice at the local government election. And finally, if your concern is that this becomes an election um, conversation, then shame on you because that's quite shallow. Thank you. Thank you. Order, Councillor Levito. Um, all right. Thank you. I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. Those against? Thank you. I'll use my casting vote and I will declare the motion is carried. I need a motion to extend the meeting. Yes, thank you. So we'll just get through this first. So the motion has been carried. Thank you, councillors, for supporting that. And if I could have someone move that we continue um, the meeting considering it's now 10 past 10. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Griffiths, seconded by Councillor Hawkins. All those in favour? Thank you. Declare that motion carried too. All right, we'll move on now to 11.03. Could I have someone move the... Thank you, Councillor Turner. Councillor Hawkins seconds it. Would you like to speak to this, Councillor Turner? Councillor Hawkins? No, Thank you. Anyone? Well, I'll try to reply, I will. I just want to encourage anyone who, um, if you know anyone who you think may be a good um, member of the <coughs> cultural steering group, to get in touch. Let them know that an EOI is going out, and um, you know the, the the most diverse, engaged group of people we can get, the better the better off we are. So. I'd encourage you to share amongst people that you know who might be might be uh, really good for that group. Thank you, Councillor Turner. I'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Right. Sorry, just bear with me. Item 1301. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor um, Turner. Thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Councillor Turner, would you like to speak to this? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think I think it's a really strange situation where we've got um, council as the um, reserve trust manager for a lot of Crown land and the Crown hasn't responded to Council's request, as far as I'm aware. So it'd be really interesting to find out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, could I just ask a question of you, Councillor Turner? Would you um, be inclined to have a point two to just note the full resolution of Council back in on the 16th of May 2018 to include that in your notice of motion? Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Can we just include that? Thanks. And sorry, Councillor Hawkins, I should yeah, ask no, you sure. to thank you. If we could just include that for. In that case, Madam Mayor, probably it's best if that goes first and then the uh, question to the general manager goes second. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Councillor Hawkins, would you like to speak to this? No, I think it's so OK, thank you. I might speak when the report comes back. Sounds good. All right then. Um, any other councillors wishing to speak on this? 
I'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. Declare the motion carried. All right. <laughs> Item number 13.02. Just a, um, a question. I should have asked it, and it's probably a point of order first, but of the general manager. There's actually no date in that requesting you to come back. That's right. Yes. A bit like Crown Lands. Anyway, it's gone. <laughs> it's, it's gone, I think. The, um, the, the intent when I sent it to Bromwell was the question for next meeting. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's not a problem. Right. Okay. Sorry, Madam Mayor. No, no, it's okay. That's fine. Awesome. So we'll, we'll move on to item number 13.02. So I'm moving um, a motion that Council requests the General Manager report to the April 2020 Ordinary Council meeting advising of the total spend by Council on climate change or sustainability solutions. And seconded by Councillor Griffiths. Thank you. Um, look, I've asked this question and it's, it doesn't have to get deep and heavy. But, um, sorry, and I've lost some paperwork that I wanted to put with it. No, that's not it. Um, that's okay. I'll, I'll prattle on. Look, Council um, has been um, welcoming various members of the community uh, into the Council meetings, and they've been speaking on matters of real interest in relation to their viewpoints and thoughts on um, climate change. And also, you know, how they view uh, how the world's going to be in the next 12 years. And for some people, we're not going to have one, you know, the world's going to end in 12 years. Um, I somehow remember Y2K was going to have all the computers blow up too at the change of a year into the year 2000, that didn't happen. I would like to think that as human beings, we are, you know, waking up to the fact that we do have a responsibility to care for the environment and the land that we're living on. And um, I certainly consider myself one of those people and as others around me are as well. But it comes at a cost um, to our community. And if we, if we raise the cost of uh, uh, providing more or going over and above what is expected of us, then where do we draw the line as far as things that are totally out of our control? The use of fossil fuels is out of our control. That's not a, not a council. The, the, the services that we, that we provide to our community are the everyday things that help, um, you know, our people to move about, enjoy where they live, um, and, you know, enjoy the environment that they've moved to. I think that if we start delving into these um, hardcore uh, objectives, it's going to come at an enormous cost to our community. And what are we going to let go of, as far as service delivery is concerned, to appease um, some, some of the people who have these, these real serious concerns? Um, whether they be real or imagined, um, fear-based or not, what delivery will we need to let go of? And how will the general population feel about it? So it isn't about whether climate change is, is real or not. Um, you know, yes, we're seeing um, our climate is changing and as a result of that, there are consequences. But there are also consequences to becoming clean and as green as we possibly can, as quick as we possibly can. And what I've realised through these, these months of, um, of uh, our community coming in and talking to us about this, that like everything, you can't please all of the people all of the time. And for some people it'll be far too much and for others it'll be far too little. And I just want to, you know, try and find the balance somewhere and yet provide um, responsible ways of of providing energy sources and dealing with our environment and reducing our carbon footprint. So um, I just would like the general manager to bring a, an idea of what we're already spending on these initiatives. So we have a starting point 
just a starting point. So we say, well, this is what it costs our community so far. Where are we going to go from here? Because it, you, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And if you don't know, how can you know what else to do? So that's merely um, the, the whole one little sentence, one little paragraph behind all of that is just to give us a starting point to, to go somewhere with this. Can I ask a, can I ask a question, yeah. uh, Madam Mayor, through yep. you, it's a question of the General Manager. Um, how are you going to go, go about answering that question? Because it's a pretty broad question. Uh, it's a, it's, my question is serious because I don't know where the start and end of all that is. I'm interested in the General Manager's view. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, it is a, it's a challenging request. There's no debate. Um, because at the core of what we do broadly in any regard is sustainable or sustainability. So there's probably not a lot we do that's not considered in some manner sustainable. There are plenty of, plenty of practices I'm sure we can work on. Um, I guess my starting point is probably going back to the report that might have come to Council in December of last year around sustainability um, activities we, were, we are doing or have done. Uh, rather than reinventing a wheel, that is probably where I would start. Um, and that would be, um, there you are, yes, that would be a starting point, I think. It's, it's still going to be a challenge to pull the data, I think, in regards to when did we start, whatever that is, uh, how are we moving forward with it, etc. Um, but look, that's, that's where I would start. It's, 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 it's a body of work, there's no debate. Yeah. Um, can I, if, if I might? Sorry. Can I have the floor? Okay. Yes. Uh, could I ask a, a, a sorry, a um, further question mm -hmm. residing from that? Um, you use then, Mr. General Manager, in replying you interchangeably sustainability and climate sustainability. I assume that was an error. You're only talking about cli this talks about climate sustainability, not. Financial sustainability or other financial. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, it's climate. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't mean to use anything interchangeably, and I didn't think I'd use the word climate. But it's it's you're right. It's about climate change and sustainability, as opposed to financial and uh, all the other things that we do. do. Yeah, and if I might, I, and I recognise your foreshadow, um, I was hunting around for this document or this yes. information, yes. and um, you know we talk about. Uh, the membership of the City Powers Partnership, of which um, we're involved in, and um, our biodiversity strategy. Well, there was a cost to the biodiversity strategy. So what was that? You know, there's a cost to our sustainability initiatives, and we've got links to all of these sorts of things. Nat natural, but I don't know what the costs are. Natural resources management, environmental reports, newsletter strategies, health and... So maybe that's a little bit too broad, but um, health and safety initiatives, trees water, sewerage, land use strategies. I mean, these all ebb and flow back to, um, you know, the concerns part of the community are having in relation to climate change and, and there comes a cost to it. And they're, and they're things that we can actually put a dollar figure on because, um, you know, our energy strategy especially. And, and, if, and I might just add, Madam Mayor, that some of that that you just talked about is, is mandated as well. So it's not just the fact that Council wants to, or this council resolved to do X, Y, and Z. We need to have land use planning. We need to have biodiversity strategies, etc. So yep. we'll, we'll try to capture that in some manner. Mm. Yeah. Madam Deputy. I have a foreshadowed motion. The yes, uh, that Council one note that sustainability is a core value for Council and a consideration in most of Council's decisions. Two, request the general manager to consider including a sustainability statement when relevant in future reports. And three, request the general manager to give consideration to incorporating in any future reports which include actions relating to a changing climate, a brief statement of estimated cost savings and or benefits from the proposed actions. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Hawkins. Uh, question um, through you, Madam Mayor, to um, Madam Deputy Mayor. Should the word climate be in front of sustainability? B bouncing off what I just... So it becomes, note that climate sustainability? 
No. No. Okay. No. Okay. No problem. May I just uh, remind everyone that our core uh, objective is a sustainable and high quality of life for all. Oh. Mm. It's about financial sustainability, economic sustainability, environmental, etc. Thank you. So I'll speak against the motion. Thank you. So can we just roll, yeah, make sure that, because we, we're going to discuss the motion first. Um, uh, the general manager just raised an important point about um, many of the things that we do that come under the heading of sustainability are actually um, required uh, for us to do. Um, uh, things to do uh, as broad as the cycleways that we and footpaths that we construct our sewerage um, to make sure that our community is not uh, disease ridden, our stormwater to make sure that we're safe, biodiversity, yes, um, regarding uh, environmental protection. Um, all of these things, including like water and etc. Um, all of these things, financial, environmental, economic, social sustainability, right down to the financial <laughs> statements that we write, the decisions that we make, all of these things relate to sustainability. And so therefore, I can't, um, I can't see that word written there and asking for council to, uh, for the general manager to actually cost those because it could be a week's work for a person in here and still we might not get to the to the end of it. The issue is climate action or matters relating to climate change. I think that's the, that's the crux of where um, the mayor is trying to head. And so in terms of climate actions, what we've done so far um, as I understand it, is relates to uh, flooding. And so we do that for insurance purposes, we do that for legal liability purposes, we do it to keep um, the community safe, uh, and uh, so we back de development back from incursion, incursion of water, waters in all sorts of manners. Um, we've been doing that for three decades, two and a half decades, Council's been going down that path and in fact we are required to take account of flooding. That's a climate, that's a climate related matter. We recently decided to do some heat communications, heat wave communications, um, but we're doing it in a cheap manner, um, an inexpensive manner, by simply tapping into the Department of Health and their comms regarding heat. So there's not a big expense there. That's our next climate related matter that we've done. The third really uh, significant climate related matter that we're dealing with is our energy strategy. And um, that's where the crux of all of this, I suppose, comes to in that that's a prime example of where if you have a notion of the total spend by council on these matters only gives you about a quarter of the picture because as well as a spend, there's also savings, there's benefits uh, that short and long term that come to the community. So I'm suggesting to councillors that rather than go back and try to ask the general manager to dig into a potentially bottomless pit that has no measurement around it uh, in the past, that we look forward and that we acknowledge that sustainability is critical to what we do. We ask the general manager to consider including a sustainability statement and also uh, consider including a, um, a climate related uh, statement in relevant reports just as we were asked at the end of last year and we decided at that time that we would move forward with it. So I'd, I'd rather, rather than just going back and trying to measure what we've done uh, because it's all intertwined regarding sustainability and the climate matters are very clearly three, only three, um, and but that we start looking at costing going forward. Thank you.
Thank you, Madam uh, Thank Chair. you, Madam Mayor. I'm speaking against the motion because I, I intend to support the uh, foreshadowed motion. I mean, two things, two major things we've been talking about tonight that haven't even been mentioned. Our water supply, which we're having to look at in terms of an emergency solution for future future proofing our water supply, which everyone, including Australia's chief scientist and a, a lot of people uh, who who have a lot of knowledge in that area, uh, attributing our you know climate change to a drier future for us all. So water water supply issues will be something that council needs to actually invest more in rather than less. The other thing is bushfires. The amount of resources that's chewed up recently and the Governor of the Reserve Bank again, Australia's chief scientist again, have linked uh, climate change to worsening bush, bushfire situation and, dry, and drying of continents. So if council doesn't do it, it's already impacted on, on our, um, the economy for our businesses. Um, and, and we, there's no, we don't even have a, anywhere close to a measurement of how much that's impacted. And we've probably got off lightly compared to a lot of other areas in, other, in New South Wales. So we could be standing here with a vastly different story, but we've managed to you know, have about 80 to 90 per cent um, of our business rather than 100 per cent. But still, it's the cost if we don't do anything to, to, for our businesses and our, our economy in the future. And it's the, uh, the cost of doing things now that we have to just do to just keep things going. So it, it, I don't know where you draw the line in, in putting a report like that together. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Councillor Turner. Councillor Alley. Yes, uh, look again. Uh, uh, like uh, Councillor Turner and Councillor <laughs> Inderman, I, uh, I won't be uh, supporting the motion. And again, I'll, I'll be supporting the, the foreshadowed motion. Um, the, uh, and I'm speaking against the, the motion. Thank you. Um, the, I, I, when I read this, I got very nervous about the fact that we're talking about total spend without talking about benefit, without talking about risk mitigation, without talking about the costs of not mitigating, without talking about the cost, you know, adaption measures or the costs of not adapting. Um, so. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm in, uh, in, in uh, Madam Mayor's opening uh, address on this, she, she talked about, you know, getting some balance in the debate. I don't know how you get balance in the debate unless you, you look at all of these measures, not, not just spending. So um, I'm much more comfortable with the foreshadowed motion and I'll have an opportunity to speak at that if that becomes the, uh, the, the, the motion. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Ali, and I'll, I will remind my husband of getting balance by not just spending. <laughs> He'll be pleased to hear something like that come from me. Thank you, Councillor Griffiths. Uh, yes, I'd actually support the motion. I think what's happening with the foreshadowed motion is that it's actually preceding the first one. The second one is saying, OK, we're going to do this moving forward. It's essentially a reporting system. It's not actually looking at what change you want to do. The first one is suggesting that we have a look at what we're currently doing and whether we actually modify what we're doing. So we're doing gas capture, as far as I know, as part of energy strategies or whatever that is. <laughs> but I've not heard anything of an energy strategies, and there could be other things in the background we're not aware of that could come through as part of that reporting for the next motion. And then as that one's presented, you can then consider your foreshadowed motion as a follow-on. Um, thank you, Councillor Griffiths. Is there any further uh, councillors wanting to speak in opposition to this? Okay. Well, I'll just have the right of reply. This, the spirit in which this was written was just basically um, trying to understand from my own perspective because I receive a lot of uh, correspondence into the office in relation to people's concerns about climate change and, um, you know, I... I get asked quite often, what are you specifically doing about it? Um, as one one individual of part of a very big organisation. And, um, you know, and I don't have a handle on climate change myself at the moment. So, and, you know, I listen to Rachel Shepherd um, come in and, and she's very articulate and uh, obviously an intelligent woman and um, she has a position. But um, I... I feel like she doesn't understand totally the position 
of the organisation either and, and what it takes for her needs or wants to be, and, and those like her in that position, her needs and wants to be um, accommodated for. I, I felt that by raising this notice of motion that, um, uh, you know, that there could be some information gleaned from it that we could provide to the community and say, Council is investing X amount of dollars into your well-being. We are doing things. Um, and I don't think we're, we're that far removed from um, the foreshadowed motion because I agree with all of those things as well. Um, you know, I'm not going to die in a ditch either. I heard you say it earlier tonight, Madam Deputy. I, uh, you know, I'm not welded on to this notice of motion. It was uh, consideration of uh, where do we go from here? How do, how do we explain or how do I explain? explain to some of our community about, you know, the initiatives that are being undertaken on their behalf. So, yeah, that's pretty much my my position on that. So, thank you. I'll put the I'll put the motion to the vote. Um, and we'll go from there. All those in favor? Oh, sorry. <laughs> those against? Thank you. So, the the motion's been lost. We now have the motion. Someone seconded by Councillor Ali. Thank you. Question? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. A question of the General Manager. Um, point three of the motion requests the General Manager to give consideration to incorporating any future reports which include actions relating to changing climate, a brief statement of estimated cost savings and or benefits from the proposed actions. So I recall that we discussed this um, actually when uh, Rachel Shepherd addressed us previously late last year, I can't remember which one, when it was actually going to, uh, in the same way we have financial implications and what uh, and, and um, environmental implications, uh, various implications at, at the end of reports. And my recollection is that you agreed to review that and it was going to come back, I think, through the portfolio and then to a council briefing before council. So it substantially addresses that. Do you have the same recollection, or am I? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, slightly different recollection, but I think the gist is the same. And I think we are going to cover that off in a briefing with you all in the middle of March. In actual fact, that's what I thought. Yeah. So. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, through you, Madam Mayor. And the reason give consideration works is we don't know quite what it would look like. And it could be different across a whole heap of things, yeah. Question mm -hmm. to the general manager. Yes. Um, this is general manager, you just mentioned a briefing in March. What are we talking about there? Uh, there's a briefing requested by councillor some time ago, <laughs> I can't remember when, uh, in relation to meeting efficiency and so on. And there's oh, a yes, briefing yes. Yep. then that we'll talk to the template for the reports that we all do. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So, Thank you. Yes, thank you. Sustainability has been on Council's agenda for a long time uh, and we've been working um, towards that, that value in various ways. But we've, got, um, we've taken the, um, uh, the quite significant step recently of deciding to consider whether or not we have a sustainability officer, and to consider whether or not we, um, uh, we develop a sustainability strategy. Finally, um, endeavouring to bring this, this big elephant um, with all sorts of parts to it that really is integral to what we're doing and try to put it down into, into writing. So we've got those two things coming up along the way, being considered in the, uh, in the upcoming budget. But we've also got the matter of, um, and Mr General Manager, confirm if it's correct, I believe that the April report that was resolved regarding climate change, the meaning of and what climate change is about, was going to be brought, you were intending to bring it forward to March, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, through you Madam Mayor, we are intending to bring it to March, so it aligns with the operational plan going on public exhibition, yes. Yep. Um, so, uh, just to continue my speaking in favour of this motion, um, so we've got 
Um, Madam Mayor, when you when people talk about you know whether or not what it is and and trying to trying to bring it down to some kind of very clear statement about climate and climate change and what we might be doing, we've got that first step is hopefully going to happen in. Uh, the first mm. formal step is hopefully going to happen at the March meeting, mm. whereby we get a report that comes back to Council, developed by our staff, uh, to say this is what climate change is all about, um, or a change in climate, because climate change is so emotive to people, but everybody seems to be able to acknowledge that there is that the climate is changing, so maybe we should be using those terms, and I think I might have even, yes, I included that there, to um, changing climate in item three. Uh, so there is both adaptation and mitigation. Uh, that'll be considered in that report, I have no doubt. And uh, this third point then uh, gives us the opportunity to progressively accumulate that information that you wanted to get with your motion to satisfy people's inquiries. But rather than going back, because that's going to be really quite hard and a lot of staff work, we just move forward with it instead. I recommend I recommend this motion to my uh, colleagues. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Sorry. It's been a long night. That was not your right of reply, was it? No. Thank you. It was just I your was address. The debate. Okay. The debate. It sounded like you were closing it, but yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Ali. Um, yes. Uh, con very conscious of the the long night. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, but the uh, look, I um, I'm I'm quite happy with this resolution. I thank uh, thank uh, Madam Deputy Mayor for uh, for um, uh, su su suggesting this uh, this motion. Um, the uh, it, it, it does capture the fact that, you know, that for instance, things like the energy strategy, a lot of measures under the energy strategy are actually cost-saving measures. They're worth, you know, if, even if you don't believe, you know, even if you believe that climate change is a load of hogswash, um, a lot of items within the energy strategy can be supported on the fact that, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're reducing costs. So, um, you know... So, 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 so I'm very happy with the fact that we're going to capture the benefits there. I'm also very conscious of the fact that um, I guess a lot of the a lot of the statements will be they're, they're qualitative, qualitative statements rather than quantitative statements. And uh, and having a, uh, an annotation in each report, you know, where where we can talk about the sorts of benefits without necessarily having without necessarily being able to put a, a reasonable dollar figure on it, you know, does, does paint a, a, a much better picture than just a, a dollar-based type thing. So I'm, I'm very happy with this particular uh, motion and uh, encourage my fellow councillors to support it. OK, thank you, uh, Councillor Ali. Is there any other comments by councillors with this? Madam Deputy, would you no, like your you. right of reply? No. All right, then, thank you. Um, I will then put the motion to the vote then. There's been some um, good debate and if anything came out of my, my motion, uh, it was good debate. It's good to have that in the chamber. It makes people change their way of thinking, doesn't it? I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. I see none against. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Item number 13.05, Beach to Beach Progress Update. Moved by Councillor Griffiths, seconded by Councillor Dixon. Thank you. Would you like to speak to this? No, I'm good. Councillor Dixon? No, I'm, good. No, I'm going to speak to it because um, we did it. Yep. Um, I'm going to speak to this and um, I'm going to say uh, to Director Bilsma um, and your staff, especially Cameron Hawkins, um, you know, Everybody has grasped the importance of this to the uh, community down there. And um, Beach to Beach is uh, obviously a really special project. It's got some unique challenges. We're aware of that. But I just wanted to um, congratulate you and your staff on the work that's being done in that area. So if we're not going to have any debate on this, I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? 
See none against, declare the motion carried. Item 1306. Could I have someone move, please? Moved by Councillor Griffiths, seconded by Councillor Hawkins. Thank you. Is there any debate on this, councillors? No? Put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? See none against, declare the motion carried. There are nil items to be dealt with by exception. That's 14. So confidential matters. Um, now, um, we're just going to do this a bit differently because when we come back, John, um, if you want to hang around, and sorry, sir, up the back, if you want to hang around and, and the media, uh, you can come back into the room and Michael from Governance will read the results. Very interesting meeting. I wasn't bored for a minute. Excellent. <laughs> so we entertained you. Fantastic. All right. So <laughs> you were agitated. Thank you. Um, all right, so we're now going to move into confidential matters and I have I need a mover and a seconder for that to happen. Moved by Councillor Griffiths, seconded by Councillor Dixon. Um, all those in favour? Now, what we've moved is uh, that the confidential items listed in the Committee of the Whole Agenda be considered. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the results of the confidential items that were just considered by Council. Uh, item 1501, sale of Innes Gardens Memorial Park Crematorium and Lawn Cemetery. It was resolved that Council 1 note the resolution made at the Ordinary Council meeting held on 21 August 2019 in respect of item 15.01, Innes Gardens Memorial Park Crematorium and Lawn Cemetery, negotiations with interested parties. Two, for the reasons set out in the sale of Innes Gardens Memorial Park Crematorium and Lawn Cemetery report as an alternative to entering into a contract of sale with Walker Funeral Group Proprietary Limited, as specified in the 21 August 2019 resolution, delegate authority to the General Manager to negotiate and enter into contracts for sale of Innes Gardens Memorial Park Crematorium and Lawn Cemetery with related business entities that are wholly owned by either Walker Funeral Group Proprietary Limited or the persons or entities that wholly own Walker Funeral Group Proprietary Limited. Three, maintain the confidentiality of the documents and considerations in respect of this confidential report. And four, affix the seal of council to the necessary documents. The item was carried 6-1. With, Council, or with Mayor Pinson voting in the negative, and it's also noted that Councillor Levito declared an interest and was out of the room during consideration of that matter. Item 1503, T1953, design of Rainbow Beach sporting fields. It was resolved by Council that Council 1, pursuant to section 553A of the Local Government Act 1993, note the acceptance of the quote from King and Campbell Proprietary Limited for $269,000 $600 exclusive of GST for T1953 design of Rainbow Beach sporting fields obtained through Local Government Procurement Professional Services Panel LGP 1208-3. <clears throat> Two, pursuant to section 553A of the Local Government Act 1993, note the acceptance of the schedule of <coughs> rates from King and Campbell Proprietary Limited for T1953 design of Rainbow Beach sporting fields obtained through Local Government Procurement Professional Services panel LGP 1208-3, 3 affix the seal of council to the necessary documents and 4 maintain the confidentiality of the documents and considerations in respect of tender T1953. That resolution was carried unanimously and again was noted Councillor Levito declared an interest and was outside of the room during consideration of that matter. Item 1505 RFQ 1922 Kenny Walk construction upgrade and RFQ 1924, Kenny Walk Civil Works Upgrade. Council resolved that Council 1 note that public quotations were called for RFQ 1922, Kenny Walk Construction Upgrade, and RFQ 1924, Kenny Walk, Kenny Walk Civil Works Upgrade, and no submissions were received. Two, pursuant to section 53.3i of the Local Government Act 1993, and due to extenuating circumstances, resolved to not invite open tenders due to the unavailability of competitive tenders, noting that an open process, has been pr process had been previously conducted with no submissions being received. Three, pursuant to section 1783E of the Local Government General Regulation 2005, enter into negotiations with a view of entering into a contract in relation to the subject matter of the combined scopes of the quotations previously advertised with the following companies. A. 
Air Construction, B Green Construction and Management, C JNC Civil, D Mars Marden Civil, E Mid North Coast Contractors and F Coastal Works. Point four, pursuant to section 377 of the Local Government Act 1993, delegate the General Manager the authority to accept a tender for the supply and delivery of the Kenny Walk upgrade project. Five, request the General Manager present a further report to a future meeting of Council on the outcome of the negotiations for the combined package of works for Kenny Walk construction upgrade and Kenny Walk civil works upgrade. Six, maintain the confidentiality of the documents and considerations in respect of RFQ 1922 and RFQ 1924. Uh, the item was carried unanimously and it is noted councillors, uh, sorry, councillors Levito and uh, Mayor Pinson were both absent from the meeting due to conflicts of, conflicts of interest on that item. Item 1507, T1964 Coastal Walk Boardwalks. It was resolved that council accept the tender <coughs> from Air Constructions Proprietary Limited for $268,322, exclusive of GST, for the design, supply and construction of Charlie Upton Boardwalk and the Doctors Boardwalk. Two, accept the schedule of rates from Air Constructions Proprietary Limited for the design, supply and construction of Charlie Upton Boardwalk and the Doctors Boardwalk. Three, affix the seal of council to the necessary document. Four, maintain the confidentiality of the documents and consideration in respect of the tender T1964. Again, this item was carried unanimously and uh, councillors Levito and Mayor Pinson were outside the room due to conflicts of interest in that matter. Item 1506, T1958 Broadwater Canal Lighthouse and Gangway Repairs <clears throat> was resolved by council that Council 1 accept the tender from Burden Proprietary Limited for $227,525 exclusive of GST for the Broadwater Canal Lighthouse and Gangway Repairs. 2 accept the schedule of rates from Burden Proprietary Limited for the Broadwater Canal Lighthouse and Gangway Repairs. 3 affix the seal of Council to the necessary document. 4 maintain the confidentiality of the documents and considerations in respect of tender T1956. The item was carried unanimously. Item 15.8, stakeholder negotiations, site selection for water supply security project. It was resolved by council that council one, note the information contained within the confidential, confidential stakeholder negotiations, site selection for water supply security project report. And two, endorse council staff to directly engage with the required key stakeholders in relation to the preferred location for a seawater reverse osmosis desalination plant to enable finalisation of the, of the site selection process. The item was carried 6-2 with councillors Griffiths and Pinson voting against the item. Item 1502, T1961, construction of the Port Macquarie sewer rising main 71. It was resolved by council that council one, accept the alternate tender offer two from TCM Civil Proprietary Limited for the lump sum of $1,364,000 exclusive of GST for the construction of Port Macquarie sewer rising main 71. Two, affix the seal of council to the necessary document. Three, maintain the confidentiality of the documents and consideration in respect of tender T1961. The item was carried unanimously with Mayor Pinson declaring an interest and in being absent from the room during consideration of that matter. And finally, item 1504, T1955, construction of schools to schools shared pathways. It was resolved by council that council one, note the engagement of Coffs Harbour City Council, trading as coastal works under the existing memorandum of understanding for $809,083 for the construction of schools to schools shared pathway. Two, affix the seal of council to the necessary documents. Three, maintain the confidentiality of the documents and considerations in respect of tender T1955. Uh, the item was carried unanimously with uh, Mayor Pinson absent from the meeting due to a conflict of interest. Thank you. Um, thank you.